Uh, we're going to be doing a EMEA watch party for, or VOD party rather, watch their tournament that happened. It actually just concluded a couple hours ago. Probably like three hours ago. So we get to kind of watch it back and skip all the commercials, skip all the analysis and get straight into it. But uh, the answer your question, what make, when is it okay to call yourself good at TFT? It entirely depends on uh, your criteria. If you're going based off of general player based stuff, you can probably say something like, diamond because of percentile percentile the diamond and masters but uh if you want to compare yourself to some of the best players around like uh you know like top streamers and competitors and players a lot of people say not until you get to like challenger actually i should go top left i should go top left give me a sec guys top left and then turn off this text So it's entirely up to you. The big, the big thing that you should take away above everything else is don't let someone else define when you think you're good at TFT. Because if you do, it's a really easy way for yourself to be unhappy because everyone's going to be comparing you to like people who are better or higher ranked and like have better performances. Oh, you're not as good as this person. It's like, okay. So whenever you feel happy and proud of yourself, is the answer whenever you feel happy and proud of yourself okay sorry i'm just uh rearranging my chat stuff okay let's go ahead and listen into uh the casters two and three and four are extra special and overall just the best this is impetuous panda he is the host of the emea show for don't talk if you don't know you guys watched the episode yesterday? Yesterday's episode was was kind of a banger. I like that one. What up, Bokar? Being good is one thing, but being elite requires more free time. Yeah, you're not wrong. It's like it's like a combination of time and effort and uh, talent. It's not like just one thing, right? Most people think... Oh my god. Oh my god. Hold on a second. Do you guys see this? This is a list of co-streamers in EMEA. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. They have 18 co-streamers. Spain. Hold on, let me see. Time to see how American I am. Spain. Poland. Uh, Czech Republic. Uh, Italy. Germany. Turkey. Russia. Greece. Romania. Uh-oh. France, 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 Poland, UK. Wait, no, this is Italy. Wait, what is this then? Oh, Portugal? Spain? I don't know. What? Red with a circle in the center? Is that like Tunisia and Germany? Hungary, that's what it was. Oh, okay. Well, I don't pass. I don't pass everything. I don't pass everything. It's hungry. It's hungry. Portugal's like a different flag altogether, right? There's no, it's not, not, it's not like stripes and stuff like that. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. We streaking now. <laughs> that wasn't at least sorry. I, I almost passed. I almost passed. I almost passed. Danimal, thank you for the three. Also, you got both chats open, the YouTube and the Twitch chat. Danimal's chatting in both. Oh, they got Kenobi. He's a player. Ah, they got players on the brain, the main broadcast now. Augers. Wait, this guy's username is just Babe? Okay, this this is like Portugal, right? This is like Portugal. I think so. I remember like I remember like they have like a kind of a unique uh flag. Hungary. That one's uh that one eludes me. I I think I always mess that one up. I'm popping in from vacation in Colombia. Say, hola, chat, and streamer, sir. What up, Scotty? Scotty, when are you going to collect your last badge? I'm Portuguese. I would know. I, I'll take your word for it. I'll take your word for it. I'll take your word for it. All right. definitely <clears throat> Okay, so uh, what portal was this again? I missed it. I know you were watching just to I didn't pay out. I didn't pay out. Okay. 
go ahead and watch this at uh 1.25 just a tiny bit faster just a tiny bit faster so for people for people who don't know gsc is the equivalent of their big cup uh so hard steel cup for us is like gsc for them he said they have a three-day tournament Ooh, pentakill olaf that's pretty good and i want to see uh if eu's got the tech I want to see if uh, EU's got the tech, you know, if they, so apparently EU likes to reroll, but how much do they like to reroll, you know? Can't really hear them. Can you turn off video sound? I kind of like hearing it a little bit in the background because it feels like it feels like they set the atmosphere, right? Like if it's a really exciting moment. Oh no, I kind of like it. You want to mute the video sound entirely. I think I kind of like it though. They are completely dominating. If you can get a four or even six mushers, if you get a headliner, it's so so powerful. But we see. Okay, so we got uh silvers here. Tiny Titans team building, cutting corners. Tiny Titans first pick. Wow. Well, Enzo's kind of a greedy player, right? So he probably likes to play the hard steel kind of setups. As was mentioned in the pre-show, we've had those gold drop changes, so we are seeing a more consistent start overall for our players. Of course, the yellow one in the middle was Belgium. Okay, got it. Kevin, you got day one. Oh my gosh, unlucky. That's so sad. Is a lot of surfing reroll? I don't know. I don't know. I actually, the only thing I saw was people posting whether or not they did make it to regionals or not. I didn't actually see like results of uh, comps and stuff like that. Dude, I love this graphic. Gold spent, number of EXP rolls and units. This is so good. Gold in next round, 13. What? It can tell you how much gold you're going to have next round? Wait, does that even make sense? 13 gold? I guess it's like total amount of gold he has if he sells everything. There's no way you go from 0 to 13. Yeah, he has 4. Okay, I mean, that, that's a really interesting graphic. What is Belgium? The land of amazing chocolate. I'm trying to decide if Soji is just trolling today or if he got Curse of Wang from beating to 1500. I almost think he got day one. I feel like uh, Soju is not really trying. Not really trying. I feel like he gave up on regionals. But I don't think he actually is. I just think he's like mad. I think he's mad at like the game state. That's it. I think he wants... To, I think he's just not having fun with TFT right now. Like he, like he is having fun, but he's not having... He, there's a lot of things that like bother him. Which I think is kind of relatable. I know the country, but what are we talking about? Oh, I was talking about the the flag because at the very beginning, I tried to guess the flags based on like who's in the lobby. I really appreciate your coaching. Thank you. Tomorrow we're gonna have a we're gonna have a really good coach stream, I think. Also, uh, today I spent like a little bit of time setting up for uh, regionals and the world's coach stream. And we got like a bunch of new equipment. I got like, I can show you guys real quick. But like, uh, we finished programming this entire thing, like this entire soundboard with all our microphones. Got like uh, a new switcher as well, which uh, it's pretty fancy. It's like a, it's like a camera input device. It has like a bajillion buttons. You see all these buttons. So we're like programming it, trying to figure out. Setting up another PC, setting up our three cameras. You can tell my background's starting to change a little bit. Man, because, uh, I'm getting more dogged again. We got a bunch more production stuff coming in the pipe. So it's going to be a lot better. Leo, thank you for the 10 months, man. Thank you very much. The subs go a long way because, uh, we, as you know, we find out we are missing a couple of things. Like I need, I need another capture device, a capture card device, because um, I had a capture card in the tower of my previous PC, but that uh, that we didn't get one for this current tower, so I have to kind of figure out another capture uh, situation. So a couple like leftover things. So appreciate the subs, guys. That kind of stuff always goes a long way. Never uh, needed. Not, not even if you guys didn't sub, I would still do it, but it's very much appreciated. 
Okay, this guy, scientistic. Olaf into disco. You know, I played a disco game today. I played a disco game today, and I had like an insane board, and I bled out to a third. I was uh, I was so disappointed. I got to nine. I rolled like all this gold. At one point, I had Ziggs too, but I sold my Ziggs too to try to chase TF3 because I had eight TFs. Because I was like, okay, well, I'm not winning with Ziggs two, TF2, Sona 2, everything like that. I had the entire works, and I was still losing, and I was like, damn. Let me see if I can uh, show you show you my board. He's not going to play Disco because he has even Trout Slam. L look at this board. I played Sona 2, TF, Blitzcrank, Alawi 2. I had Aegis of the Legion, which is really good. I had a Ziggs 2, but like I had eight copies of TF and I was on my last life and I was losing anyways with Ziggs 2. But this was Ziggs 2. And I sold Ziggs 2 with one Ziggs to try to roll for TF3. And I was losing. I was like, what? My augments are even bad. Cybernetic 3 and Cybernetic 1, like, stacking it. It can't be that bad. I was like, man, if this can't top 2, then nothing will for Disco. Like, come on, man. I had Disco first and second today. I was surprised. I mean, I think I think it's good early mid. Late game, it just you really struggle against the hard steel board. You cannot beat like a, a souped hard steel jazz board. I even tried to split my positioning, right? Like I had disco, so I split my um TF and my like Sona and stuff, and stuff like that. So that way Ezra doesn't AoE it down. It doesn't matter. They just have so much stuff. They have like they just they, they have like five carries. And then you have like Twisted Fate and Ziggs and so on. And it's like, it just doesn't, it just doesn't do enough, I think. Which comp do you believe is the most OP this patch? Heartsteel. Heartsteel. I, uh, I filmed a, I filmed a video for you guys, like, uh, my tier list. Uh, I'm, it's a different, it's like a complete tier list. And it's a tier list aimed for people who are like, you know, 200, 300 matches LP and below. Because I looked at, like, I, I saw Disso film his tier list. And I'm like, damn, that's actually really close to mine. So I'm like, well, I can't just, like, do the exact same thing as Disso because it feels like I'm just copying his homework. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to put every viable comp I think is in the metagame. And it's a lot. There's, like, um, it's like 20-something comps. Let me go ahead and pull it up real quick. I can show you guys the, the preview image. This is the preview image of uh, the tier list that I, I filmed. Ezreal slash like this is like level nine five cost stuff, and then there's like reroll 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 like Kale Senna, and then just like I go through all this, so I do all of these comps. Most tier lists are going to include like half of these comps because they don't want they don't want to talk about like Yasuo, they don't want to talk about like like Lux, they don't really want to talk about like Garen, but like. <laughs> I mean, okay, to be fair, I didn't even really do Garen. I just said avoid it. But um, I did actually end up putting it in because I don't know anybody who's like really found success with Garen reroll. If you have, you're a genius uh, because I I'm too dumb for that comp. I uh, uploaded a tuber of it, but that was because like I was memeing, you know, with Wednesday. We wear gold tier at 3 2. <clears throat> Bruisers. This is the Olaf player. Oh no, so this was uh, Olaf at Pentakill. Okay, so this is uh, Ezreal, 80 flex. Keepers. So we have one disco player commit. Keepers still makes disco really good. Silver Spoon. Switching gears. I like that one a lot. I think switching gears is actually a pretty, pretty solid augment now. The data also implies that the better you are as a player, like if you're a diamond player, switching gears is good. If you are a masters player, switching gears is like very good. If you're a GM to challenger, it's like an excellent silver augment. It just keeps climbing higher and higher the, the higher rank you are. So it implies that the more you are like aware and able to play around it, uh, the more value you're gonna be able to get out of it. And switching gears becomes very good. Now, I don't know if that means playing around it heavily like, does that mean that when you play switching gears, you're trying to lose rounds? Or is it like you just don't mind losing rounds and you just play your strongest board and sometimes you win, sometimes you lose? That part, I'm not entirely clear yet. I'm not I'm not 100% sure. Because I've seen people do both and find success with both. I've seen people who are like, okay, like this round, 
like stage two, I'm just gonna like try to throw a little bit, like miss position. And I have other people like, eh, it's fine, just like win lose doesn't matter. How come heart steel isn't as good in the stats as the streamers say it is? Because it's too popular. It's it's so overplayed. It's so overplayed that uh that that the it's just, it's just hard to describe it. Also, a lot of the streamers are specifically playing at Challenger. Let's go ahead and actually look at it real quick. So I'm at a TFT. Heartsteel, Ezreal, Zed. And this is very valid criticism. Val valid, valid criticism. 4.56. 1.16. But if you remove Diamond, what happens to it? If you remove Diamond, what happens to it? Four points. Oh, it gets it gets the higher pick rates. Oh wow! What happens if you remove masters? Oh, it just keeps it just keeps going higher and higher in pick rate <laughs> and lower and lower in average placement. At challenger, it averages four points. Okay, these stats are fake. But the but the one thing you will see is that it just goes higher and higher in pick rate the the higher rank you go. That's so interesting actually. It's because it's winning so many lobbies. This one. It's winning so many lobbies. The pick rate is so high, and there's so many people that go eighth with it. And uh, the reality is, is because everyone wants to play it and try to go for a win. But uh, it could be one of those things where, like, people are saying that it's so good that you should play it from all these kinds of spots. But if people stop playing it as much, then the stats of it are going to improve dramatically because then, like, if there's only two or three Hearthseal players, then all of them could top four. But when there's four to five, it can really struggle. There's a lot of people that, uh, yeah, there's a lot of people that go east with it. We'll take a quick look over on the right hand side. Something that's. When switching gears, be kind of like playing hard still. You try for one unit loss and you go for the win round and repeat. I mean, that's the thing is that can be really disruptive in the mid stage of the game. I think early game you can pull it off because stage two is pretty easy to kind of figure out like what's going to happen based off people's like early augments and openers. Like you can kind of tell the more experienced you are, the more you can kind of read people's stage two and think and like understand what they're trying to go for. Like in stage two, you look at and be like, okay, this person's purposely trying to lose. So I don't have to worry about like positioning in a specific way. But again, and then other people are like, this person is clearly trying to like force a win streak. I'm going to see if I can like, you know, position to try to kill these units and be more efficient. You can, you can get a good read on people in stage two, the more experienced you are. And stage three, stage four becomes a lot more hard to, it becomes a lot harder to, uh, to anticipate and predict. Guys, my ca cat's really asleep behind me on the couch. It's too cute. She never usually sleeps behind me when I stream, which is why I like it so much. Kale. I think Kale reroll is uh, going to be one of the big winners of the reroll, the reroll section of the the meta. I think Kale is very good. Kale and Senna and Seraphine and Riven are my four top reroll comps at the moment. That's not to say that um, other real comps can't compete, but I feel like all those four compositions are very high in tempo because the two cost headliner version of them is very stable. Like Senna 2 is very stable, KL 2 is very stable, Seraphine 2 is very stable. And you can play for like a top two with high cap. Like KL can hit the pentakill stuff, you can hit like Sona and all these RE stuff with, with Spellweavers and then... Um, uh you can hit like kiana i think seraphine's the weakest out of all of them in terms of uh top twoing seraphine plays a lot more for like third and then uh riven is is pretty good too lulu yeah lulu is uh a little bit more conditional because you kind of need to play her from a really good spot she's less like it's like less um you, you, when you when you slam certain items like a Shojin, you're like not really saying like I think this is a Lulu spot. You 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 need a little bit more to say it's a Lulu spot, in my opinion. What's the portal? It's item payout. I'm gonna go ahead and update that actually. Item payout. I got gotcha. you. 
finding another <clears> here <throat> might look for a cheeky three star Diego on eight with that duplicator or later. I mean, it's all got to be long shots here for Power Masker, but Diego needs to pull here. NA low diamonds, a lot of hard steel forcers. Well, NA and Challenger and GM, there's a lot of hard steel forcers as well. Viego 2 with Destifier. Interesting setup. Crown Guarded into Crash Test Dummies into this. It seems like he took generic tempo stuff, except Leighton Forge is not like super high tempo. It's a uh, delayed tempo. This guy's spot is awkward to say the least. I find that Pentakill is uh, the weakest when you're doing something like this. You're trying to play from behind and you have like... You basically don't have a lot of HP to trade because this kind of pentacle setup isn't good enough to just win out. You're going to take some uh, losses here and there. And with 28 HP, that gives you like three lives. And you're just going to naturally queue into people who are just stronger than you. Like as they hit like the Ezreal Hearthsteel boards or like the cap three roll boards. But he does have a strong board right now with uh, Viego 2 and uh, Mordekaiser 2. Like he'll win a couple of rounds. It's just that 28. It's like you're you're basically playing for fourth because you kind of recognize that uh, you're gonna have some bad rotations. I, I'd be very surprised if that comp wins out. Thoughts <clears throat> on Disco? I actually talked about it earlier, Brandon. You want you can rewind a little bit. Uh, I talked about it towards the beginning of the game. I actually showed a Disco game that I played. I think Disco is okay. But I think it's uh I put it I put it towards the bottom of A tier. Like Ken top four. You need to have like a good reason to play disco. Either you open up like a specific augment or a good portable forge set setup. Um high tempo, play for like a top two, top three. Disco can win as well if you like really cap out high and you don't really queue into many bad matchups. Like, Ezreal's still a kind of a tough matchup. Can you upload? I mean, we're, our, my editor is working on it. The VOD's going to be up to, uh, later today. My editor's working on it as fast as we can. If you wait like a few hours, it'll probably be up by then. Or the people yapping is the cast is in the background. I, I like having a, this, a little bit of caster background noise because you can't really listen to the game sound otherwise, so you just listen to the casters. Ooh, bard reroll. How about emo? Uh, Annie, Annie is not bad for emo reroll. Uh, Vex and Mumu is okay, but um, it's a lot weaker than last patch. A lot. They 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 nerfed Vex and Mumu's executioner setup like by a lot. So you don't really look to play executioners very much as uh, as often. But if you're able to get like the country vex uh, executioner setup, and you can get to the three star, you can still like do well. It's just much more balanced. Before it was like way too OP. You think this is the most balanced state TFT has been in? Mm. I don't know. Uh, my my. Whoa, what is this graphic? The round results, loss, win, loss. Okay, this is a, a little hard to look at. Man, they go crazy with the stats. 127 units, 38 rolls, and 92 exp in the bottom left. Like, what does this even mean? Is it like his go the units, the value of his uh his board is 127, 131 gold? Probably. No, that's that's too high. That's too high. 139 gold. <clears throat> I would say that the most balanced the TFT has been is probably like towards the end of certain sets, like end of set. End of set. Uh, end of set. 5.5 was pretty good. The end of set 3.5 was pretty good. The end of set. 
The end of set eight was actually pretty good, believe it or not. Um, nine. Nine had its moments. Nine was like largely colored by uh, Legends. So I, I, I would probably put it up there. I'll probably say that right now is like pretty, de pretty, pretty decent. I would say that like, like Heart Steel at it, even though it is still really good, it's like it's not nearly as oppressive and like auto win as everyone makes it out to be. Um, it's just that like it's uh, it, it feels like the the main way to win the game right now. Like, it feels like Heart Steel is going to win a lobby. And so you're playing for second. I think that's where most people's feelings are bad. It feels like Heart Steel just does, like, no matter what you do, someone who, whoever, one of the, one of the four Heart Steel players in the lobby is going to win the guy, is going to win the game. That's what feels bad about it. It doesn't matter if it's average placement is 4.5, 4.6. People just don't like loading into lobbies feeling like they're playing for second. But is going to have a lot of problems if he doesn't find the forecast upgrades in the front line. Yeah, he, his bot needs a lot of time. He's playing a very, very slow bot that needs... Uh, and a 3.5 was fun until people found one shot GP. That was the that was what GP was being played uh, at the very beginning of set three. Uh, but uh, for now, he leaves one more round. He can afford to lose by one unit as well. So we will see. And uh, here comes Had to kill about him. Diego. What up, Josh? Leg day? Absolutely. You know what leg day is for me? Every day is leg day. Every time I lift, I uh, do some, I do some squats and do some legs. This guy wanted to play Ezreal, but he stu got stuck on a collie because he went red buff, blue buff, and IE. Disco's not doing too bad though. Wait, no, this Disco plays at 9 AP. Never mind. I thought the Disco player was at 35. Disco's gonna go bot four. All right, so we have, we have Lulu reroll. Enzo's doing really, he's really healthy there. Lulu reroll is pretty good. We have R KDA Ari. We have Ari Warrior, actually. This is Ari plus Zed. In before WTF is Ari Warriors. We have Pentakill Kali. We have Bard Jazz. We have Ari Pentakill. Oh, this is, this guy, this guy looks like he's going bot four. And then we have Disco. And then Heartsteel went seventh. Harstio went seventh and eighth. It just was not enough for either of them. And now we are coming up on the later uh, part of stage five, and the lobby is getting closer and closer together. Uh, maybe uh, ready to roll it out for the last few rounds. We mentioned that we were saying you know, things going off real big. But I'm actually going back to a full body split. A lot of build everything, but having a focused muscle group. Yeah, I don't do focused muscle groups anymore. I just don't have time. Yeah, we can even back when I was you know, you know younger and I could go to the gym like two hours every day. I would like do like today is arm day, tomorrow's back day, and then it's leg day, then it's chest day. And it's just like now I do workouts every other day, like three times a week, and I just do full body. It makes it easier. Oh, we have no shred. Oh, well, if you're playing disco without shred, you're just going to have a really bad time. Unless I'm missing something here. Does he actually have shred? He's dead. No shred. Uh, no shred disco is yeah not very good. If he if he did have shred, I missed it. KDA Yorick too. Oh, you know Yorick does really well with uh, KDA because he gets so much HP for his guardian, and then he gets a lot of just a lot of stats. Gifts of the Fallen, Inspiring Epitaph. Low key, would you ever just sell this Ari and put these items onto Yorick instead? Just Death Cap and, uh, and Nashers. It feels like, oh my god, it feels like we're not really trying to lean into what makes this Yorick too good. And I know that like... AP is not particularly insane on your compared to some of the other stuff because the AP just scales the HP of the ghoul, I believe. But it feels like Yorick... Okay, we won, we won, it's fine. It, it, was, it was just like, he's at 8 HP and he's trying to play for placements. His AP, his AP scaling is the HP on the big ghoul that he summons. What a ramblin'. Oh, he had Ziggs? Oh, okay, my bad. Uh, the Disco player had the Ziggs. 
But if uh, if you have no shred when you're playing Discord, I mean that means he plays shred. He had played he played no shred until he hit Ziggs. It's just still a problem. That means that for a big portion of time, he unless he hit Ziggs early stage four, he still probably like he probably lost the matchups that maybe Disco's supposed to win. Cause I, I think Disco is a high tempo comp that bleeds out to a top four. It's like the I think Disco's like the four cost version of punk in some ways. Like you dominate early mid and then you just like fall off and you like either you spike amazingly and get to nine and play for legendaries and that's how you get top two, or you just like bleed to a third or fourth. Lulu three for Enzo, but he's like taking some bad losses here. Looks like he wins this fight though. Country emblem on Kennen. Interesting. Damn. We hit Yorick two on eight with a KD emblem and went bot four. Damn. I can't help but feel like uh, itemizing RE one over Yorick two does not feel right to me. Okay, Karthus 3 watch. Karthus 3 watch. However, he has just lost a round, which means that either Lucy said or Portuguese A have taken a round uh, off him, which is slightly concerning considering how strong he is. Let's see if uh, Enzo can do it with that Lulu. I am uncertain. I do like the crash test dummies in here in combination with the setup. I mean, we've got, you know, we've got All right, sorry. Uh, apparently, I got asked by the main broadcast just now if I if they if I want to do an interview with the main broadcast before um, the final day of competition. I'm going to I'm going to be on the mainstream guys. Guys, I'm famous. I'm famous. I'm going to call my mom. I'm going to call my mom. Yep, in case you missed it, here's the base of the, uh, not the best in slot, but seeing the executioner once again from this. Uh, also, I have to change my YouTube thumbnail. Give me a sec. Very, very bad with usually Shall I do this between games. Viego, Lulu on top of that it falls off with Nami and then with TF if you hit top nine, top four. If, if you if you get to nine and you get to Sona Ziggs, I mean, I showed a game that I played, right? Where I like, I had Sona two, TF two, Blitz two, Ilawi two. I didn't have three items on Ilawi. I had Ziggs too, but I sold Ziggs because I had eight Twisted Fates. So I was, I was, I lost three fights in a row. And I was trying to roll for TF3. I thought that was my only win condition. Two Cybers, which is like pretty good. And I, I bled to a third. I was in first place. I was like, this is top two minimum. And then like, I don't know. The other players just kept like, like, like six owing me. I was like, okay. I bled to a third place. I felt kind of bad. And I, I had the Ziggs too, and I, and I lost every round. So I sold Ziggs to the last round to try to see if I could hit TF3, and I didn't. I don't know. Good enough if you don't manage to find something. I don't like know. Three star Echo or three star Nico. The issue was it the matches are bad? It could be. It could be. I was going up against uh, hard steel players, and it's just hard. I mean, that's part. That's part of what makes it so difficult is that in these in these scenarios, it doesn't feel like you consistently play for first. It feels like you play for. It feels like these comps win when the hard steel players like die because they didn't spike hard enough. Like in this lobby, there were hard steel players that went I think seven and eighth. And like uh, they they drag down the average a lot, but if any of them like avoid that bottom two finish, it feels like they go they either go seven eight or they go one two. It's like one or the other. And I think some people don't like the helplessness of that. That being said, like I still think that it's like fine. Like I I don't think Hard Steel is like egregiously out of line. If anything, you could even say that the nerf uh, is was like pretty successful. It brought it down like a touch, which is what they want, but they don't want it to be unplayable. And you guys know how a lot of like players are, right? If if it if it became if it became average strength, a lot of them would consider it to be unplayable because average strength comps in a lot of players' mind isn't good enough to play in tournaments. Is country dead? It's not that country's dead. It's that uh, you'd rather play the executioner's version if you get the executioner comp set up. You like the scaling aspect of hard steel. I I think it's interesting. I think hard steel is uh. I think hard steel is a is a is a is a, is a cool take on the econ lose streak trait. But uh, win streaking with it, it was too good, and it ended up becoming a a, a win streak, <laughs> a win streak trade in the late game. Oh my God, that Lux cutscene! Hold on a second. She just tosses out the Goku Kamehameha wave. Actually, it's more like a Vegeta final flash. Holy shit! 
He just jumps up. All right, all right. Uh, give me a second. I have to replace my YouTube uh, thumbnail thing. Give me like a minute or two. BRB. All right, gentle friends. Uh, you know, of course, we'll be looking forward to. Alrighty. Of course, look forward to the rest of the game today. So stay tuned. We're back in just a few minutes' time. Yeah. And then get on to game two. Got it. More like Masenko. It was all blue though. Isn't the Masenko kind of like the yellow, the yellow key energy? Love to hear your opinions on this. I think raising the stakes ruined how balanced it was. Eh. I, 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 I can see why people think that. I, I I don't know if I fully agree with that, but I, I can see that it, it, it like to say that it ruined the balance of it is uh, I, I don't think that is the correct takeaway. I think it like ends up making Heartsteel have bigger spikes and 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 worse moments for people who are trying to like play a more honest straightforward game. But like, I think it's still like, I don't know. I, I don't think I don't think basically it's the sole reason why it's imbalanced. Starting us off with a Lulu at the very it definitely made it harder to balance. That part I can understand. Okay, so just to recap, Ari Lulu 3 won the lobby. Not bad. But that's because these Hearthsteel players all just went 7 8. Like if the if this if the Hearthsteel players get online and Lulu has no melee matchups, it can actually get really, really tough. But Lulu's good into like some of these melee matchups. And just showing we She like nullifies like yeah, like the Zed and stuff like that. Really to go Lulu in the first Disco went six. Had to kill went fourth. A lot. Look at this. Super. Where's the people complaining about Ari? Huh? Man, I'm getting more dogged again. Ari went one two in the lobby. I mean, the answer to that is because uh, it's just one game. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, they have a score ticker? Okay. This is something I want to do for regionals. I don't know if you guys think this is cool or not, but we might do like a score ticker for regionals. Fellas, thank you for the prime. Thank you for the prime. All right. Lobby two. Oh, this is a good lobby. We got Alan ZQ. Yeah, Wet Jungler. Okay, actually, those are the only two names I recognize. Actually, I, I've heard of Havali. Also, uh, EMEA does Swiss. I don't know if you guys know what Swiss is, but uh, if you, for those of you who don't know, Swiss means that you match up with people of equal record. So if you if you are, let's say, if you're playing chess and you've won three matches and you lost one, you should be playing against people who also have won three matches and lost one. So it, it aligns everyone who has the same incentives together. You're up against everybody who's won their first game. The way we do it is snake, which is like the t the number one player will always play against the number the last player in points, and it creates like these lobby skew stuff like that. But EMA does Swiss, and I think Swiss might be uh might be the answer. It just might be the answer. Yeah, Switzerland. <laughs> What's a score ticker? It's a it's a line that scrolls and it shows information. So we could show like standings. It's what you see in sports channels a lot. In sports channels, it shows you like the scores of different uh, teams. And stuff. I'm down to join the call if you like. Oh oh, sorry. sorry man, yes, let me uh, go ahead and join in. Alright, Ramblin, feel free to join whenever I'm in my channel. I'm not showing up tomorrow. Oh wait, what? Tomorrow's just gonna be just me then. So this probably also reduces the chances you can get grief with someone who has nothing to lose. Yeah, that's another uh, that's another reason why it might be good. 
Ooh, prismatic. This is the best way to run tournaments in general. I, I can see that. I can see that. It's, I think it's harder for people to, to do because there's not like an easy way for them to do it snake drafting is easier to program i think swiss is harder to pull off but uh hey that's not my problem i'm sure i'm sure they can figure out something else they have some clever people working on it two very good support items but that do not really fit with what we have right now but they would be incredible if we wanted to play a melee carry composition something like the raven all day uh the yoni which we could find a way to with the items right no, for sure. And I mean, that's the whole thing. All right, so we start off with stationary support two, and we got we got banshees plus a virtue of the martyr. So this looks like with banshees, you think about melee carries. It doesn't have to mean that you play like Yone Riven. You could also just play like Zed and like Ezreal stuff like that. But um, it's it's just best with like some some melee carries, especially melee hyper carries like Yone Riven, like really want that kind of CC immunity. But you could just play it generically. You can also play in backline. But the thing about stationary support is you want to put that dummy in the front. You don't want to have a. You don't want to have a reason that dummy to be in the back, because uh, that kind of defeats the purpose of what makes the dummy so strong. Is that it can absorb a lot of things. You're thinking about like you're going up against Vex, right? Vex shoots a bunch, a big wave of burst. If she wastes that onto like a target dummy, that's a huge amount of crit. You know, let's say she crits for 900 damage. That's a big amount of damage that's not going to your front line. And so you do want to keep that in the front. So hence that setup looks like more of a melee carry. Hello. What up, Ramblin? Howdy. This is the GSC. This is earlier today, right? Yes, let me turn you up real quick. Okay. All right. Of course, it just might happen to okay. So, hello, chat. Say hi to Ramblin. This is GSC. This is EMEA's like Hearthsteel Cup. Okay, okay. I watched some of it, but I'm down to it. watch whatever I miss. Fun. Need to consume as much TFT as I can before tomorrow. <laughs> you said you're not showing up tomorrow? No, I'm just joking. I'll be, I'll be good. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was like, well, damn, man. I got ditch. I don't hate you that much. <laughs> that much. Excellent. Uh, we take do, those. I mean, this is really interesting. So March of progress, you know, we ever do live coaching your stream? I did it one time. I did like, I do, I do like, you know, there's a, there's a difference between stream coaching and then like, li like real coaching, real coaching. Actually, Raymond has done real coaching before. It's not, uh, it's like, it's like very disengaging content. Like, cause you stay it's, silent and watch it. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to coach for real. I don't know if maybe Kusarin's got something else in mind though. If you want to stream coach like the way like Emily Wang coaches box box, that's different. <laughs> you can make content out of it, but it's not very educational for the yeah, person yeah, you're actually yeah, exactly. coaching or anyone for that matter. But uh, it's not nearly the same quality that you would get mm -hmm. if you're just focusing on the coaching itself. Hologram. Okay. So hologram with the Shojin, maybe the Lulu twin terror. Okay. So do you have a, do you have an opinion on the new twin terror? with like is it is it still executioners or is there something else so i haven't just keep in mind when you ask me any kind of questions i just started playing the game again so i don't have a frame of reference of the last enough, patch but from what my experience what i've seen it so far it does seem to be still like mostly executioners that seems to be the most common comp for just because i think it's the comp it fits the best in it's not a comp that like needs a lot of specific units it's just you play the executioners and you play your front line you're done but I have just seen it being played a lot more flexibly in general, like to even just like for standard play. So it's yeah. not only necessarily a reroll comp thing now, I think. <clears throat> yeah, there's a lot of twin terror compositions that I think are possible, right? As people are saying Lulu twin terror, like that is definitely a thing you can do. You can also do like, you know, people swear by like twin terror Kale and twin terror Olaf, some of these other reroll comps, but. Uh, I think the I feel like the safest thing to do is to enter executioner. Um, sorry, I, could not see who that I think that it helps that that line is not really contested by almost any other comp. So when you get when you say I'm playing executioners, no one else is going to touch your units, and you can just free your old them. Interesting. Yeah, that that was the case. I think that might be the case now. Last patch, it was like, uh, man, people would just randomly play Vex because she was just so good. <laughs> so like, uh, people would have her be the item holder for like Karthus. And if they hit like a headliner Vex, they would play that until like four or five. And then you're like, okay. Uh, and you just look around and all of a sudden seven Vexes are gone. That is the main thing that I've kind of felt so far from playing the patch is I, I don't know exactly what it felt like last patch, but 
it just seems like there's a lot of different options right now, even if it's still Hearthstone dominant, Hearthstone focused. I see lots of comps that almost everything feels viable at this point. Wukong! Even oh my if people God, are mostly defaulting towards that as uh, Hearthstone still was Zed. Yeah, yeah, I, I definitely see that. Hearthstone Zed still very, very popular. Oh, maybe he's going to go... Oh, is he going to go Twin Terror? Katarina? That'd be kind of cool. Raise the stakes here. Raise the stakes on stage two. I played my first two games of raise the stakes this week. Successfully cash out both times, didn't throw. Nice. Excellent. No it's one griefed you, no one FF on the spot. No, but I almost got I almost got griefed by a ghost. I forgot about that being a thing. Oh, <laughs> right, right, right. So you couldn't do a ghost and it was like a lot weaker and you almost yeah, won. It, was, it was pretty close. <laughs> uh. Hello, Solo, looking better than usual. Thank you, man. Thank you. You could raise the stakes twice. Are you sure? Usually, you're not supposed to do that unless you have a lot of HP. Like, a lot of HP. Like, you, you do, like, you know, metabolic boost and, you know, uh, Tiny Titans, that kind of stuff. I did feel like from those two times that I raised the stakes, one was in the stage three and one in stage five. The stage three one almost felt just not worth it at all. Like, so... It feels like you really want to just be really healthy early so yep. that you can raise the stakes in a later stage and not in stage three. Yeah, if you like yeah. lost streak into it, it feels like you're just dead. The most worthwhile way to raise the stakes is to actually be 100 HP and then sack like 60 to 70 HP in stage four and go for like the 500, like get like the crazy stuff and then play the board and you have like multiple lives and you should just basically get for uh, another set of cash outs and you win the game. That's usually the strongest play to, way to play it. Oh, Recombob? Raise the stakes, Recombob? That sounds like a terrible play. He could delay his raise the stakes for later in the game. Come back to it. <laughs> stage, stage five. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure there's probably a world where that's a real thing. Oh, to... right. I mean, it could also be one of those things where um, you scout and you see somehow three people all like straight up open fort. And you're like, well, I have to play this. So you just like delay it. I can maybe see that. Thank you for the raid the other day. No problem, man. No problem. I hope, uh, I hope you feel welcome to the streaming community and I hope you continue to stream, man. Good stuff. Roll the dice. Why do you think roll the dice? Roll the dice is the best, like... I think it might even just be as far as to say it's the best average placement augment in the game. Why do you think it is so high right now? I mean, it's just so much immediate power, I feel like. And with, especially with the headliner system, when you have so much power condensed into one singular item, which is the Rascal's Clubs, mm -hmm. you can just very freely move it around to whatever unit you hit yeah. with as a headliner. So it's very flexible. So you have a strong stage two, and you have the ability to pivot to any new headliner whenever you want with items to give it. Because, uh, like, everyone's like, okay, scrapping inventions is bugged. It's giving extra components. It's basically buried treasures plus scrapping inventions. Like, should we ban it? And someone's like, well, roll the dice is, like, a better stat line. Like, does that mean we have to ban that? I think the stats on scrappy invention are fake in terms of they should be a lot better because it's still one of the hardest augments to play well in the late game. Mm, and even sometimes in the mid it. game, uh, knowing which how to manage your components, like, which components are the best to roll on my unit, for example. Like, putting Vest on a frontliner can be kind of scary because you might roll Edge of Night but also just knowing which items you need to greed, that kind of thing. It's not an easy augment to play, even if it is that strong, which is why I think the stats aren't better. Got it. You're saying the noobs are dragging it down. I, like well, I think, I don't even think it's a noob factor. I think it's an everyone factor. It's just like the, the skill cap on that augment is very high, the same way it is on Salvage Ben. Radiant TG is also bugged on Super Fan. Oh, wait, I heard this. They like what banned that. Um, I haven't heard this one. I think apparently you get the Super Fan item and you get the Radiant item. Oh, that seems <laughs> strong so i think uh it's specifically banned because uh it's uh, I, I heard about that interaction which uh is gonna be banned in tournament but i guess people are gonna do it on ladder for lp that kind of sucks though because sometimes you like it's not like you necessarily are forcing super fan into your board but sometimes you just naturally have those units as your strongest board yeah, exactly. Although it, it shouldn't even work together in, in tandem, right? You shouldn't like... You, if you're playing super fan, you're usually not supposed to put these gloves onto your super sure. fan unit. <laughs> okay, raise the stakes. Wait, did he raise twice? 
He's still raising the stakes three rounds later. This must be the last round, right? It's ha it feels like it has to be. Okay, I mean, it, he's 38 HP, so there's no way he's going <laughs> another three or four. It, it's about to... I think the, the, the chess is about yeah, to burst. Yeah, okay, the, the animation's going to be a little funky on it. Okay, there's okay. the cash out. Oh, he, he unfortunately got to like 198. He was like just a little bit short of 200, which is yeah, a really that, that's what feels so bad about it. Like, you sack the entire stage three, not tr trying to kill units, and you, that's all you get out of it. I don't know. doesn't feel super worth it. Where did he end on? He ended at 194. 194. That feels so bad. That feels so bad. So close to 200. 200 is when you get like raiding items and things like that. Okay, so he gets a completed item. And some gold. <laughs> so he can definitely 4 1 at the very least. Gunblade Shoujin. Pumping up. That looks like a Spellweaver kind of setup, but. um. I don't know. Playing towards Ari? Is, is that like, uh, do people still play towards the Sentinels or they do something? I know there's like Ari Warriors, but if yeah, you're just trying to play yeah. Ari K, what's the preferred? So if you are to believe SEA, SEA still believes in Sentinel Ari, but uh, not a lot of other regions do. There's actually also a band of people that that somewhat think that uh, Sentinel Karthus could be a thing, but I, I've never seen it work. I tried playing Bruiser Karthus yesterday. I didn't feel super great with the too big to fall, but maybe maybe the Sentinels works out better. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I know. I, I feel, you, did you did you reroll Olaf? Is that what it is? No, no. I just I just had tempo and I was just oh, trying it okay, out. Okay, okay. And I hit a Karthus headliner, so I just got rolled it, with it. Got it. But oh, it this just feels like Lux. Oh. Oh. He had a hundred gold, and I rolled like twenty. March of progress. Oh, he used, it looks like he used the first duplicator on the Lux, too. So he's going to try to use the last one for Lux 3, maybe? Got it, got it. I mean, he should hit. He roll with, he like, should, 100 then, hopefully, yeah. Lux is another unit just not that contested by other comps. Mm -hmm. The problem with like this that comp is, is the floor cost being contested. Oh, my. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, we found okay. Lowey, so we can play four uh. bruisers. Uh, so there's there's a discussion about whether or not people like playing Lux with like just like the Jazz as if you're playing old Jacks, or if you're gonna play uh, four Bruisers for actual frontline because if you play like set two Zach, you, sometimes your frontline doesn't feel like very real. And I think it's predicated whether or not you hit like Alawi or you're able to actually get um, like like you get Lux three and you're just pushing levels like pretty quickly. But I think Alawi can encourage you to go for four Bruisers. Yeah, I think a lot of the time you feel kind of pushed into the four bruiser line just because you're not going to have the two star Zach and Zed a lot of the time, at least not until late in the game. So you feel like your front line is really locking if you don't play the bruisers. Does combat caster work with EDM? Like you, you the the extra cast on the EDM gives you the second shield. I am not sure. I would assume yes, but I don't know if that is fact. Anyone chat no? Chat no. I feel like solo go song would maybe no. <clears throat> Something that I feel like he would understand, he would know. Okay, this is a lot of frontline. Allow me. Yeah, looking like pretty in. solid now. Okay, best friends. Best friends, Urgatu. Wow. <laughs> this is uh, this is a pretty interesting stage four board. Corky headliner, Urgatu. Allow as well on seven. Open spat. Gazler. Emblem on bench. I don't know if that's real or not. <laughs> For people who don't know, uh, Wet Jungler is the highest ranked player in EMEA. He was power ranked number one. So a lot of people have high expectations for him as uh, the strongest overall player going to this weekend. So, I mean, he's, he's building a pretty weird board. Oh, so this, this is, was had, the Twin Terror no, Katarina. This uh, this is augment payout guys for game two. I didn't update it. Thank you. Sorry about that. Is this a common build? Uh, which one? Twin Terra Katarina. Oh no, it's not. That's why it was really interesting. It's kind of woke. Uh, I actually have not really seen Katarina reroll be popular in general. I feel like Katarina is just um, kind of it's it's kind of the same as like Yasuo and Annie and some of these other rerolls, where it's like if you just are late on it, even by a little bit. You're gonna struggle like a lot. Yeah, if you hit on time, it's very solid. But if you're if you're kind of behind, which is where Alan the kind of is, you uh, end up struggling a lot in the late game. 
Yeah, I think that's kind of a similar story to Lux's, where it's kind of a lot harder to cap out the board when all the Zeds are taken by the time you get there. Because that's definitely your secondary carry. The, th the thing is, this Zed unit is so uh, gross that, like, sometimes um, even you hit Zed uh, Lux 3 and you have Zed 2, you still have Zed 2. And, uh, y like, if you put, like, crit items onto him as well, like, IE, Hodge, uh, Edge of Night, he actually just goes insane with the Lux Beam as well. It's pretty crazy. <clears throat> yeah, especially with the amount of healing you'll usually put on a Zed. You can drain tank pretty good. Okay, Caitlyn. Two kill. Oh, what? Oh, he's sold. Oh, because he already has a Caitlyn too. He probably feels like he needs better frontline. And maybe looking, just looking for any frontline headliner. Wow, he missed. I mean, there's a lot for which to do here, especially with the best friends. I mean, you've got to rearrange your yes, okay, so the, the, the Dazzler was real. He just hadn't used it. I Sometimes there's it. bugs of spectators. That's a Z1. Oh man, barely, barely. No headliner, no a lot, lot of frontline, but at least he has two fully itemized carries. How much value does knowing niche lines brings? Uh, it depends on the meta game. In this set, in this uh, environment, I think that this weekend. It favors players a lot because everyone is going to theoretically know how to play like the Arthur line. You need to learn how to play some of these more obscure lines because um, it, it, it is like the thing about these headliners and rerolls is that there's a lot of conditions that make them good, and you just have to know it. If you don't know it, then you'll not you'll you won't be in a spot to capitalize off like Senna and Seraphine and Riven, and then uh, other players who do know how to how to will be able to capitalize onto it. I legitimately think people who like are like eight out of ten heart steel on ladder uh, are either going to like win the tournament or struggle this weekend. One, it's one or the other. I don't think you can make heart steel your primary game plan and climb consistently, or, or rather do well this weekend, in my opinion. Unless you're a high roller. Unless you're a high roller. Like if you're like a, I'm, I'm just gonna force heart steel every game. I, I just don't. How how many games out of ten do you think realistically should someone be playing around Heartsteel? Like not even necessarily the comp, just like in the mid game. I I can see it being like half your games, like four four or five games out of ten. Or if you're gonna play twelve games this weekend, twelve to thirteen, I can I can see it being like five to six. But I feel like uh, reroll is actually so safe, and actually like it, 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 there's also a bunch of reroll comps that still can actually do very well. Uh, I I'm I'm just so surprised at the lack of people who don't even want to reroll at all this weekend. Which is uh, interesting. Spatula is sad in this comp now. There's no more jazz. Yeah. Yeah, actually, bats are so bad for this comp. Uh, you could play uh, emo because Poppy could fit in if you want, but not great. Also, we're lacking a third item for Lux. Yeah, what's he going to go with? Touch. Interesting. Double healing. Oh, his edge trapped. Oh, oh, that is not good. Been, yeah. Wait, it's not the other one because the Lux beam. Yeah, the, 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 totally on purpose. Wait a second. That is that is actually five head. You second row trap your Zed for the laser. Is this guy a genius? How real do you think the uh, uh, trap blinged out? Blinged out, for example. How real do you think the trapping tech is for Lux, like sticking the jacks in the corner or whatever oh, with range units? I can't tell you how many times chat tells you to do that every single time. <laughs> Um, with, a, with a Lowy, I think it's a little more realistic. It, it, it's it's actually not as bad as it sounds. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would probably say that uh, noobs do it too often, and, and good play, peop, good players who are not familiar with the line probably don't do it enough. Probably somewhere in between that. But I, that's the only... I can't give a much more concrete answer than that right now. Cause I, I, I've only played the comp like three times. Four times. And then and that's that's I, that, I played it once since the buff, so it's like kind of hard for me to even really know. Alan's board's looking a little rough around the edges here. Alan, yeah, very late, but he also just has no front line now. Yeah, I feel like you should go Nico Nico as well. It's like so awkward because you like your front line when you play when you play these like reroll um twin terror things, you often want to twin terror the carry and one tank and he has double zed but like his tank is like has even less support than she usually does 
Oh, Z2. This comp seems difficult to fit in a lot of Twin Terror value because you have such limited spots. Like, even now, he's not even playing Echo. Something you d normally would want in this comp. Yeah, see, like, this uh, This Nico dies before even her second cast. Uh, a little unfortunate. Raw power, though, is really good. Okay. Okay, and then he hits Kiana. Actually, I think... Does he want Kiana? Does he want, like, another Zed for the Twin Terror? can't tell. <clears throat> can't really fit in the six crowd diver, right? Because of Twin Terror. Oh, without dropping super fan. Which he could. He could take, like, the Hodge and then drop, like, super fan. Sure. But KDA is also kind of nice as well. It'd be, it'd be dropping cannon with his guardians. Like, no matter what, he's sacrificing something. Right, 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 right. I imagine so if you get to nine, you do do that. You drop super fan, you just go like cat, cat, Zed, Zed, like two, two frontliners, and then just six crowd diver. Whoa. Okay. Nettle Midge. Oh, Equinox plus Final Whisper, Karthus. Oh my god. <laughs> Vest in the slot. No one's going to have any armor. Oh my right, god. White Jungler did find the Poppy, but still, it's a real one. Yeah, Poppy 2 is good. Emo Poppy. Oh, this Martyr is so clutch for the Caitlyn. She would have been dead 10 times over. She was getting chunked by the Lulu. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Lulu sometimes has these like random moments where she just like snipes Ezreal and stuff like that just because he's just like TPing and she just goes straight into the beam. Oh, this is a good lineup. Oh! oh. Wait, Garen's got this? I did not have that. Oh, this lobby is actually so close. All eight players alive, five, six. Does EDM spells use the stats of the individual units or the EDM unit? There, it uses the base of whoever's casting it. So if uh, Jax is casting Lux's spell, it's, it's Jax's stats. To Infinity Force, who's that going to go on the Akali or what? Kane? Uh, I feel like one should go on Viego. Actually, no, we're going to do Hodge on Viego, right? For the Probably going to go Hodge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Going up to the Lux. Kane. I'm both, both on Kane. Oh, of course this isn't cast. Dude, this Lux. Maybe I get on the Lux. Oh, if she got that extra cast. Oh, if she got that extra cast, it would have oh won the fight. Oh my goodness. It's so the close. Orbs. He's dead. Oh, barely alive. Barely alive. Uh, what then? Oh, Alan's died there. Oh no, Alan went eight. Uh. Are you from Seattle? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. That's as much personal information as you're going to get, though. Oh my gosh. 7, 6, 4, 2. And then Al went negative 1. I am surprised that he chose to go for Katarina of all of them. It wasn't even like people are rerolling 2 costs in this lobby. Like, there wasn't like Kale and Sun and stuff like that. It might have been his items. It might have been like, okay, I have JG. I have a cat. Yeah, he started pretty early with the JG headliner, so he probably just tried to stick with it. Right, right. I hit the crowd diver Katarina as well, which is like the harder. Like you, have to, you, you want that one over country. Although some people say you can play country as well. Okay, is this good enough for Wet Jungler to make the Hearthstone come back? He can actually win the game. It's so close. First place is twenty six HP. It's not like a. Oh man, it, it actually... looks pretty strong. Okay, Lux wastes the beam on a tentacle. Hit the Ezreal this time. And Ezreal's dead now. Oh, he jumped into the MF. Ooh. Oh, lined up for every... Oh, the key got... Oh, no. Poppy? Poppy's still full health. Oh, yeah. I don't think Lux can kill Poppy. She struggles with single target. You need Zed. Right? Yeah, Poppy's got it. Oh, my gosh. He's, he's dead. Wow. So close. And he catches out. That's huge. I think that might be a difference uh, between the seventh or a first. That's insane. That's insane. And, 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 and do you think it's like if you switch sides, if Lux was top left to not waste beams on the tentacles, that was a win? Potentially. I mean, I, just, I don't know if it was ever killing the poppy. Maybe if it killed the backline faster. Right, right. But I thought it was the card that's played Seraphine 3. 7 KDA, 5 Spell Weaver. Yeah, yeah. Damage Sona. 
my gosh. These bullets have time to get out of the way. Our players wanted them to. The double Lily set on the back line. Seraphine. Frontline's just gone, though. Yeah. I mean, That's these kind of I don't, This dummy is... I don't know. It wants to be back line. I gotta get the Banshee, but... Oh! No, the dummy is last to die. <laughs> Hologram into uh, into Lulu, but doesn't have Lulu three yet. Damn, White Jungler goes fifth. He, what did he lose to? He lost to the Carpus. Oh, no. He got the fourth. Okay, barely. Oh, he tied he for the fourth. Tie. Tied for fourth. Yeah. That's huge. Still no Lulu three, but he's three sure king. The sport is really at three straight. Hologram Lulu that broken? Uh, yeah, I think. I mean, I don't know if it's that broken, but I think Hologram Lulu is exceptional. Like, I think he does have the Ziggs, right? Three Hyper Pop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hyper Pop Lulu into. Uh, there's three ways to get it. There's um, Hologram, there's Twin Terror, and there's Trickster's Glass. If you can get any of them, Lulu becomes really good. But that's why I put her like as a, condi a conditional reroll. But if she wins, she did win two lobbies in a row. Oh, Lulu won the first game? Yeah, Lulu won the first game. Which one do they have that? Like, which uh, augment? Uh, I think Enzo just played it straight up. Like, he actually didn't have any... Uh, the standard Spellgirds? Yeah, he just played, like, Lulu 3. But he had... He start, I remember because he started off t uh, Tiny Titan at 2-1. Two, at two oh, there's the Lulu 3. Yeah. Wow. Wait, this person took Tiny Titans as well. Is Tiny Titans Lulu the tech? I guess so. Got the Allowian. Put the Akali in the Karthus. Yep, yep, yep. Tentacles. Red buff Nashers. Nashers allegedly is not uh, good for the mana lockout for her, right? She yeah, autos. She, she autos once before mana lock is up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, dude, Lulu three is the nuts. I should, I, 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 should, I, I knew Lulu was really good. I don't know. She would win back to back lobbies though. That's pretty crazy. Oh, that was absolutely beautiful tail end of the game there. All right. Um, you know, congratulations to all our players for an exceptionally entertaining game number two. But we're not even halfway done with today. Certainly not even to... halfway done. Like, My God. A little bit more rerolling just in general. All right. So uh, Lulu Hologram won the lobby. Turkey on top. UK second. Pentakill. Pentakill did a lot better this lobby. Second and third. Then we have uh, Ezreal, Hearthsteel. Another. Oh, this is why it was hard to hit Lulu because someone else was just playing Lulu on the units. And yeah, the Ari Sentinel player, right? <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Or did they end up placing the other Ari? Yeah, fifth. That's okay. But that was the person that like raised the stakes on stage two, which is yeah, like, they were really low HP. Honestly, fifth's not even that bad. It's not even that bad. Is this a three-day event? It's a three-day event, yeah. Okay. Uh, it's buddy it's Raptor. So Round two. I feel like it's been a while since TFT has had like three days. It's always two or four day, right? Yeah. Uh, three days are usually like for the big events. But um, EMEA has so many small events that happen. Uh, they have a lot of qualifier tournaments for GSC. You either qualify through ladder or you qualify through like a local region thing, like a Star Cup in Hungary or a Greece Star Cup um, or Northern Legends. Um the uh the a1 esports prismatic legends finals for germany so there's like so many different cups that you play so i think the way they view gsc the golden special cup is like it's kind of like a really big deal they only have two or three of them instead it's just na it's just like na regionals right none of the other tournaments for na uh yeah days. na regionals only does three days okay. which is a i think that's okay i feel like three-day tournaments can feel like the first day is like not very important but um i don't know because they only, I, I they like only cut the bottom days. eight or whatever right yeah it's also a budget thing too more days means uh more broadcast more people more expenses Things like that. oh wait raptor competitive experience none fun fact moderator for most tft channels <laughs> <laughs> yeah that he is not wrong he is not wrong <laughs> uh, 
All right. Cool graphics. All right, next lobby, we got Kerfuzzled, who I think made it through LCQ, and I want to say set eight, but maybe set nine. We got Jedusor, Yedusor, uh, one of the top players from France. And I'm cheering for Josh G because he just has a cam. I like uh, I like cam players. I'm very I'm very pro cam. Greece is an underrated region sub region within uh, EMEA. Some of the top Greek players are pretty good. Pre game talks. Yeah, they're about to start. They're about to start. Hmm? I don't hear uh, sound at all. Okay, whatever. Oh, it's because it's muted. Day or at the bottom of the day. Um, I think that's something that we got to keep in mind here as we are going to be seeing them splitting between. Is there a way for me to watch a specific GSC goals. game? Uh, I don't think they have replays. We changed it last second to make sure that we can. That'd be cool though if they did one day. In terms of that, but it is going to be the pot of gold. So really, this portal is not going to kick in until the later stages, which also means like if you can play to get there you know there's going to be a reward at the end of the rainbow so to say but sometimes the journey is the real uh, so this is pot of gold so pot of gold is at the end of or the beginning of stage six split like i think it's like 120 gold amongst all the remaining players so if you were going by last game seven players would get split like 120 gold build your own kaiser bard board already almost already right and pick up the little stuff like that and keep an eye on that and even then some like the guys uh playing this guy's gonna skip olaf which way really? he wants to I guess he has Bard pair in Kaisa, so he's going to think about playing Bard. Yeah, like you're saying, really also already having the Lilia. Even then, I feel like you would still buy this, this Olaf. Screaming Joshi's okay, so it's old Kaisa. But he has something different in mind with already one Olaf on board. It seems like maybe the direction that is Olaf pretty, really pretty much an the click right now. Yeah, I'm pretty sure well, most people course, think that Olaf is just the best. Okay, I think I think when it used to be more like it had to be Bruiser Olaf, but I think especially a Pentacle line is more viable now that makes sense yeah Bru i think bruiser off is better though plus it gives you the out of re-rolling uh, some people might be open to i feel like some people don't really want to roll re-roll off though because he has the same problem as all the other one cost rerolls oh oh wait yeah he doesn't have bruises <laughs> Our Gansha resolve Olaf reroll though. Do you think you could have still taken Gargantua? I think I'm gonna have taken that anyway and just not rerolled it. Yeah, I kind of like, like the idea of going um like Titans uh, Gunblade. Yeah, exactly Gunblade, and you can even go double Titans and just play for like a right. like a very large Viego or something. I definitely want to instant reroll at the very least, but like I'd rather definitely rather have it than healing orbs. Joshi Chan. Happy Chinese New Year! Both. Happy Chinese New Year! Oh, anyone who celebrates Xin Nian Kuai Le? I mean, certainly, you know, they've just been taken out of a little bit with Xin Nian Kuai Le. Sorry, my uh, Chinese is bad. With everything else, you've got the right. Never <coughs> mind. <laughs> yeah, not 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 as bad as Ramblin's apparently, but uh, no one's holding him to it. Necessarily, where we end up staying long term. I mean, I think that this, it all is going to come down to whether or not you want to invest the gold into the punk rerolls, right? And that's the big thing we're going to be seeing here. I don't think punk. That also bought into the EXP. It's a we have five. Here, right? Okay, do you have a, do you have a read on punk at all? I played it and I went eighth, so that's my experience with it this patch. But <laughs> <laughs> it does seem like Vi is very strong as a headliner. I just don't know if rerolling the clump is correct. Okay. It just doesn't seem like I don't know, it doesn't seem like it keeps up with the other comps in the game right now. Would you play it if you have like extended play? Because I, oh, I mean, really extended well play is definitely worth it, especially if you're comfortable doing the the tech of getting the bonus gold or whatever. I've never done that, but that definitely seems like you would make it worth playing. I do know that six punk is still very good. That's something that's been consistent throughout the entire set. Is if you could get six punk, then it's strong for sure. I think even with the three star version being slightly trimmed, it's still going to be a very, very powerful option. You can see the item carrying going on from darkest at the moment is great. Of course, we've got the internet, so we've got the edge of night online. Uh, when will the podcast be uploaded? I'm asking my editor right now. It should be like up soon. He works on it for like three or four hours, and you know, there's stuff to do because it ends late uh, last night, and he has work, and then he does it after work. Some of those like martial lines we've seen, they've heard they talk about as well, right? So. 
What's the extended play tech? The extended play tech is you just roll for three star puck. Oh no, there's more to it than that. Oh oh, the spat. Yeah, the spat thing. Is what uh, okay, okay. If you, if you the spat, you put the spatula on a pair. Like like let's say you have Annie pair, and then you you make a two star Annie with the punk emblem on it on the bench, and then you sell that two star Annie and you get that you get the value of the extended play, and then you just rinse and repeat. It's kind of like honor roll yeah units here we do but like on, on steroids one of the more popular components i feel like, like honor roll had a baby with uh yeah we can see that that's pretty interesting uh you mentioned the puzzle before of course item payout i don't know exciting western like last he won <clears> to the world stage uh picking up some very very early emo executioner you know the kind of stuff we'd expect uh, pocket's gonna be up in a couple hours actually doesn't have any augments to push in that direction quite yet wait Oh, uh, star six centers, stars are born, no headliner. Wow. Oh my god. Okay, so he just has center three. Yeah, okay, so this is a, another condition uh, where you just might hit center three naturally. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that's another condition for Senna. Besides, um, blinged out and, you know, the other stuff. I don't know if I would pick ramping rhythm as a condition for Senna, but it is not bad in the data. I just haven't picked it myself. That augment in general, I, I, I'm not sure how to feel about it. The data suggests it's okay. I'm not sure if anyone here has experience with ramping rhythm. I don't, but just knowing that Senna and Caitlyn have both gotten better makes me a little more confident in playing around the augment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just have stronger units on your board that benefit from the augment. Can't be too bad. In the right direction and delivering us a man. I saw someone use that tech and get like 600 punk bonus. What is it? Holy crap. Oh, that's your doc. That's easy. We have three sets of year now, meaning three sure. worlds. Have you seen yes, that? yes, they confirmed that. They originally weren't going to do that. I think they were going to do like two sets because it just felt like a lot of well for one thing three sets a year means that they're doing an entire world championship which means like a way more broadcast and way more like three hundred fifty thousand dollar prize pools but uh they they said yeah nah tft is a really important game for us right now so we'll, we'll do it but originally they were they were like not sure if they're gonna do it i'm gonna be sad by jump everyone else before and getting absolutely uh, smashed again and again but it's fine because fuzzy is building up a good amount of low key i think watching vegas happen uh, real time changed their like like cemented their minds about it they think they're on the fence and then they saw the way vegas pl played out and they're like yeah you know what this is good we should do it because i think part of it was that if they did a land and they did like three worlds it might just get kind of expensive like to do all these world championships wow duplicator and to do like uh, a land every year it's just like the the budget starts to get kind of big at that point this could be a very interesting one to follow. But I think it watching was. the way Vegas sh shook down, I think, inspired them. Oh, no. Land vise. All right, they'll punk reroll. <laughs> so Jinx, Jinx won. Wow. He's, he's level 5, 6 out of 20. <laughs> he's, he's, yeah, he's, he's the punk roll, but I'll be 5 straight with it. <laughs> he has Vi 3 with Jinx 1. He has natural it. Yeah, he, nat I mean, he, he, he like effectively natural it. All right, with the punk rolls. With punk rolls, yeah. <laughs> So, do you play this until level eight? Like, yeah, or, yeah, or are you, you like away. riding this out until like stage five? I don't even know. As far as you can go. Yeah, I guess like this is kind of uncharted uh, territory. Most people don't really play like this. Yeah, being being this big a gap in your buy and your jinx. <laughs> most one costs you, you definitely sell later, even if you three star them. Ooh, prismatic. Binary. People think binary is like really OP right now. It seems to be very enabled by hard sale. Yeah, I mean, just you to make free items. All right. Yeah, I think so too. I think we are going to be very. I think we're checking the stats. You think more worlds in the year makes it feel less special to win? I don't think so. I mean, you'll have more people who win worlds, but it's already so hard to do so. I guess you could say it's less special in the sense that it's it's less rare, but I still think winning is a great achievement.
I think it makes a lot of sense the position Drox is in. Yeah, he wants to start pushing up the table and get the immediate power online. He even got a couple of items left. Oh, the center player rolled a zero, didn't hit. Oh, ah, yeah, you see, you can't want it that badly. You can't want it. Like, the game knows you're hunting for it now. Yeah, we can't want it that badly. Spread your items across. Start itemizing the guys that already MF, depending on which time you want to go down here. Just provide so much additional value. Oh, this is the guy that wanted to play Bard, right? Because he had Bard pair early. I think so, yeah. He has, he has Adaptive and Nashers. And Binary. <laughs> right. Got it. So that's going to be very interesting. But... Okay, so Bard, what, uh, Bard, in my opinion, is actually pretty solid, but um, he seems very strong, and like from what I've seen, I feel like you can't force him though. As in, like, you, if you don't have like a really good spot for it, like you don't have the tiers, and you don't have like the setup for it, I feel like, uh, I feel, I feel like it, it is, it is not as impressive unless you don't, unless you have like this. His spot is like okay. I'm not sure how yeah, good Nashus is. You, you need to have full item online on three two with the headliner 100. Yeah, it yeah. can't be anything like to that. And then hopefully hitting Bard three by the end of stage three. Do you feel like binary on average rules good enough items for Bard? I don't know his pool well enough to say, but I think it should be okay as long as your other one is a man item. Like, in this case, I guess Nashers. I was just saying Nashers is weird on Bard because the attack speed actually triggers like halfway through his cast. So you lose some of the value. It's like the third dude is when it procs. When it procs the Nashers. When it procs the attack speed on the Nashers, yeah. Oh, weird. I guess they do that so that way he doesn't lose the attack speed buff as he's casting. That would be silly if it procs on the first dude and then he's finishing casting. And then uh, by the time he's on casting, you lose the attack speed bonus because it, it, it took three more seconds from the cast. And that's probably what's going on there, but I'm not sure. Super fan definitely makes, I don't know, like having the control a guaranteed adaptive, I think it's probably enough for Bard. But I, I, I've never, I don't think I've ever played binary Bard, so I don't know exactly what, it, what his yeah. pool looks like. I think if he just, I think, I think if he just had blue buff. Blue buff plus right. the adaptive. Blue seems very really important. Yeah. Glass item doesn't matter that much. Kale. Kale is beastly. Especially when you don't have a pentakill set up like this. She's like great. Especially in the early mid game. Bruiser Olaf. Not today. Dude, this guy is this guy hates TFT right now. <laughs> I'm just surprised he felt pressured enough to roll that deep. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. He had six centers at two two. Where you would like to have her online. He had six centers at two two. Open cells, rolls a zero every turn for center three, and, and just misses. I'm surprised this guy chose to play any. I think he had four at the end of stage two. Spell weaver augments that are empowering this Annie, but yeah, now he has Quicksilver Annie. That, that good? It's like some attack speed and she, you know, uptime, but does have Jewel Lotus, I guess, kind of makes up for some of it. Crit with the QSS. It's five bars on the other side. I mean, there's a lot of reroll in this lobby. There's any reroll, center reroll, bard reroll. There's a kill, like a different one from the one we saw. Okay, so we're gonna the QSS on somebody else for now. I like the spirit of the round result graphic. I think it's hard to parse it quickly. Like I, I feel like I'm going it's through it very overwhelming information. Yeah. 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 A whole bunch of gold. Glove items are terrible. Sword, sword, glove. Sword, 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 glove. QSS. Hey, seven, three. Hey, we, yeah. <laughs> we got there. Mm, we have death cap. Okay, I'm actually down to. Uh, I mean, death cap's definitely better than the gunblade. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was, I was gonna, I was down to like play death cap, gunblade, nashers, and then remove, and then move gunblade somewhere else. But... He has Harmesis, so I definitely don't think he needs Gunblade. Yep, agreed. 
I'm surprised he even slammed Gunbike, because I think he originally slammed it on, like, he had it, he had it on one center, and then he had the Nash on the other one. So I don't know what happened there. Uh, combined, maybe? Maybe he just, like... Yeah, I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. Oh, you're talking about, like, why he slammed it separately? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I don't know how he ended up on two different ones. Yeah. Maybe there was some plan there with items swapping off or something. This is the buy player. Still 100 HP. Oh, these are awkward. Uh, oh my god, it's like don't, I don't love any of them. I think Chalice is like the most flexible. Yeah. Just for frontline value. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chalice, I can see it. Uh, Banshees is not... I don't know if it's like super good for Vi in this spot. And then uh, you're not really looking for Gem or Cleaver. It's like maybe you're playing towards Zed or something later. I don't know. I, I think I would have taken Chalice, but I don't feel great about any of those. Oh, you want to bling bonus on both centers? I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, that, that makes some sense. Yone reroll. Wow, I didn't yeah, know I was to see that today. To be the strongest right now. Pretty good augments for streak. Yeah, you don't see, I feel like I definitely haven't seen Yone very often. He's really contested, I guess, is the main thing. Okay, looks like we're stable. Wait, Kenan, Deathcap, Echo. Wait, Shoujin, Kenan, Deathcap, Echo. What? <laughs> oh, he has blinged out. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah, interesting, interesting. I oh, went for another guess? Yeah, sure. Absolutely yeah, sure. If you, if you want to, Kevin. We're going to have uh, potentially Kevin Parker hang out as well. He can provide some EU commentary. He dropped the EU lore on us. I'm down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we said, long term plan might be looking differently, and he has started losing. Showing Kevin Diff. Death cap echo diff. On the punk board. Yeah, I mean, Tropical's in a pretty you can maybe space. remake Kenan and move Shoujin to Kiana. I, yeah. It's just that, like, Kenan becomes increasingly hard to hit, but if you're playing true damage, a lot of times you can drop Kenan because he's, like, the one cost you don't mind and you don't, you're not really, like, looking to play Super Fan very often. Unless you think the Shoujin on her is, like, really valuable or you don't have a good front line at all. But, uh, it's, 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 it's a little bit interesting. Like, I think Senna is still... People are still, like, toying around how to play, like, her late game right now. I'm surprised that, like, you would full commit item onto the and I could see like throwing a tier and saving the sword for a Kali or something like that. Yeah, so, yeah. The full make a Shoujin, I wouldn't expect. There's the KL3. Oh. Hello, hello. Hello. What up, Kevin? <clears throat> Tell me, you can see the, the, the screen okay? Yeah, one second. Yeah, yeah. I can see everything. Alright, great. Let me move. It's nice that you've been watching some EU tourneys, so maybe maybe NA players are going to start caring about EU more as well. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I actually think that EU can be pretty strong this set. Uh, I feel like I feel I I, I get the feeling that EU is trying a lot harder, like these days. Um, oh yeah, I mean we had really good results in Worlds as well, right? So hopefully we can achieve some of those again. Yeah, I say they're okay. They're all right. They're not bad, man. They're not bad. They're all right. Uh, not get carried away and be like really good results i mean you, get, you did get second that's pretty good yeah i mean we got second and uh what did volta place like uh yeah, fifth yeah, or actually, fourth yeah, or players, something at the top you're not wrong you're yeah not wrong. <clears throat> okay can you explain to me this like uh death cap echo shojin canon thing is that a u tech Wait, that what? EU tech death cap shojin canon three or no 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 it's just it was center reroll and they death cap Echo, and then they push Shojin on Kennen. I mean, honestly, Kennen, Kennen, uh, if he can get like two double stuns off, it's not that bad. I mean, I, even I, in I even in so. uh, even in MF, sometimes I give Kennen like one item, and he kind of smurfs sometimes. I can see that. Sometimes, sometimes Kennen stuns can be pretty clutch. Wait, what do you think about binary bard? This feels kind of awkward. This guy's going eighth. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Six bards. <laughs> he, he had five know. bards two stages yeah. ago. If only it would still exist. Yeah, yeah, I, don't I, don't if, I don't know if, if binary is that good in this comp. <laughs> Yeah. Also, Sho Shojin is not ideal on the MF. And with this comp, you kind of need to hit the three stars over early as well. And he's it's five one, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think I think it's also conditional come back. too. Like his items were not very good. Yeah. All got lost streaks in place. They have not turned it. All right. KL three. Where do you want? He beat the Vex player. Oh. The Annie player. The Annie, Annie player. player. Sorry, I just saw the Vex. On the bench. Oh, what are these items on Vex? These, these are also some some interesting Vex items. Wait, wait, we're even three what are these here. Vex items? Hold on. What is this? <laughs> Holy shit! I've never I mean, seen his, that. His, his I items like looked. Quicksilver. His items looked really griefed. He had like four BF swords or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh my god. At this point, I don't Yone player hit Riven before he hit Yone. I feel like all the reroll players are like not, not in a good spot. Yeah, Yone, Yone is really hard to hit uh, this patch in the last one. Yeah, but like it doesn't seem like there's that much hard steal this game, so it's like hard. Yeah, it's to... almost all reroll. Yeah, it's like almost all reroll plus like pentakills, uh, KDA. Yeah, there were there were definitely some lobbies where there where there were like three as real players. So yeah, the the more as real players there are, the harder it's gonna get to hit you only three, right? Yeah, yeah. You said that you didn't qualify. Uh, did some? Did anything go particularly wrong today with, um, with how the games played out? Yeah, I mean, I wasn't that well prepared because uh, my girlfriend's birthday was yesterday. So yesterday I didn't do any games or watch any vods or streams. Oh. So yeah, That's it's okay. really tough with just being a couple of days after the patch, right? Yeah, I mean, I played some in-houses before the patch even came out, which was pretty useful. But, uh, I mean, as, as soon as the patch drops, uh, people people catch on uh, to, like, different stuff because their stats and everything. So, yeah, I feel like uh, one day more of practice uh, would have been helpful, definitely. Sag, that's okay. Trust me, the, uh, the girlfriend investment is uh worth long term you can always make regionals yeah them. yeah absolutely <sighs> okay i think burl also got the true damage emblem by the way burl got true damage and the only player got crowd diver wow okay we can just play true damage uh we just get we just hit uh what's her name akali and then you can true damage ari True damage Ari, I think people also really sleep on. She's very oh, good. Speaking of Ari, yeah. Crowd Diver Riven 3 with Yone 2. <laughs> 10 streak. What is going on? This is such a weird lobby. Oh, Lucian Headliner. Wow. And those items are pretty good, too. Damn. He's got smacked down. Girlfriend long term investment? Yeah, it's like uh, determined investors. Also, uh, Kevin Parker and I think his girlfriend started an esports org together. So it's like. <clears throat> he was also yep. doing business, or rather taking care of business, if you know what I mean. True. <laughs> also, I, I, I saw people in chat saying, I blame my girlfriend. It's not, it's, I didn't blame my girlfriend, okay? <laughs> I just didn't, I just didn't have time. That's just, uh, that's just how it is. This guy's playing Olaf 1 for the pentakill bruiser. I think he's just fine as it is. I'm a little bit worried for this Lucian. His front line, his front line is Thresh two, allow you one Olaf one with a with a with a with a Yorick. <laughs> what is his front line? <laughs> he's got he's got an R two. <laughs> yeah, he's got an R two. You're right. Oh my gosh, what what a funky lobby. 
Honestly, I'm down for this guy to win with just Yoda too. I'm, just, I'm down for him to win the game with just Yoda too. Why not? Level seven, which really did help in stabilizing this board because that is such a powerful unit that is spread the Morello, provide extra damage, provide damage amplification on top of that. What augment gives you a girlfriend? Hedge fund. You get a lot. You, you can have as many gold as you want. Crowd diver ribbon three. That's pretty. That's pretty exciting. You you almost never see that. There we go. Stage six. Okay, so the reason I think is that you're praying you need to hit level nine to get somewhere, and you're just okay. We uh, no, we don't ramp up. No, no, wow. Fourth. I mean, crowd fourth's not bad. Given... Too broken. Yeah. Not enough for... Riven, Crowd Diver. Is this six Crowd Diver? Uh, not yet. Four. We have Ed yeah, not yet. It's worth noting as well, we, where we are in the tournament with these players, we're in lobby... Okay, we hit Yorick too. <laughs> we hit, uh... Okay, now, we hit now the sport too. is looking cracked. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I, I like this though. I like that he's like playing like a non Harstio level nine board. I think, I do think some people are too tied to like, oh, I want to like always be playing for like a Harstio cash. You can play a board like this. Yeah, it's all about the positioning, and the Yone is trying to. This was the uh, the buy player. I just realized that. Oh, the, 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 the Yone, the Yone guy has like yeah, has elements. Wait, so the guy just played Vi three into fast nine. Yep. Oh, that's actually awesome. What the heck? That's actually really cool. You guys, you guys. So he actually played a no hard steel fast nine with Vi three. Because he was using his punk rolls every turn, and he basically had hit Vi three. He was already over leveled. He was like six out of twenty on level five, and then decided fast nine from it. Out of the game's going. I think it's already interesting. I, I, from what I've seen so far, this pat. If this is any indication of what we can see tomorrow in NA, the patch is uh. Oh, pretty interesting. He's what? Yoda. Uh, Yoda, Yoda is uh, outscaled at this point. We got Kevin Parker Man, in the call. You know, not, not Kevin. The Kevin Parker. The Kevin Parker. <laughs> yeah, it's not. It's not the uh, gargantuan resolve, but I mean, <laughs> that works Kevin, as thank well. You. Pentakill emblem. We can drop the Olaf. No, he was for a crown guard. Oh, he wants items for Alawi. Alright, brings us to a final round. Just a last piece of the pentacle emblem. Oh, thresh two. Or th thresh shadow. Okay, I can see that. I mean, that ribbon kind of. I feel like we have a damage issue though. With the Lucian. I kind of, I kind of like the pentacles fan being able to play Zach. I think it's really good against this horde. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Zach for the CC. I can see that. I can see that. He's not rolling, by the way. Tropical thirty-nine gold. Says uh, I can't improve my board anyways. So he's going to try to see if he can win a fight or two and go 10. Yeah, he can roll for Olaf 2. Yeah, Olaf 2, Bard 2. Oh my spikes. god. Pentakill Emblem, Crowd Diver Titans, Riven 3. Uh, and he got completely over. dumpstered. Okay, oh, he still has 31 anything. HP. Seven Edgelords, four Crowd Divers. Oh, it's because he has no front line. His front line is guaranteed. Oh, he sold the Mordekaiser. He sold his Mordekaiser. He has Z2 now. Oh, did he throw by stunning the Mordekaiser? He has like no front line. Oh, wow. <laughs> like every one of his units are like carries. He's playing at nine units and he has eight carries. <laughs> it's seven edge lord is a bit weird here. I don't think you want to run the Kane one and uh, Yasuo two. I mean, surely there's something better than that. Yeah, I mean, I think this is one of those things you you read the data and you're like, oh, seven edge lords is is really good. And then uh, I don't understand like what makes it good. I mean, it's really good for Riven. It's not that useful for uh, Yoni. Yeah. 
like with Kane 2 with a healing item, it's a completely different beast. Kane 1, very, it's been like paper, it can get caught open very easily, but if you get Kane 2... But these these, be better, these Riven so. items, these Riven items are, are pretty, pretty cool. They, they are pretty cool. He, he has blue buff, Kiana 2, is that enough? We went to 10 and added Jin for Tropical, which is, um... Pick a shot, which is Jazz value. Yeah, it's just Jazz value. I, I think I would rather actually play as Oh, oh okay. Here we go. I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty sure six crowd diver is just better than four edge lord. Yeah, no? yes, Evelyn the shop or, uh, or seven edge lord. Oh, Thresh didn't cast. This one's looking better. Thresh didn't cast. Yone. Oh, man, I'm getting more dunked oh. again. Uh, seven, seven edge lord's broken. Oh. Never mind, seven edge lords. Succulently moist. <laughs> they actually just uh, every time every time a Yone smurfs, uh, some, some something says something about me. <laughs> isn't that isn't that cool? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Like people people just connect me to these units throughout the rest of the set. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your what's your real name? Or like, what's oh, your my first name? My name is Roman. Roman. Oh, that's pretty bad. Yes. We're going. I through, mean, in, uh... in, in Germany you say Roman, but I mean the the uh, the English pronunciation would would be Roman. Roman. No, Ro Roman. Oh, Roman. Roman. Mm, almost. <laughs> Roman. <laughs> I'm just gonna like I'm just gonna like make a general O sound like Ro Ro Roman, and then just hope that's correct. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's that's good enough. That's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so Yone won the lobby with Crowd Diver Riven. That was pretty dank. And then we got a a Vi three Fast Nine that also won, which was crazy. Vi three uh, at three one, and then pushed to level nine, and then played for a board. Didn't play hard steel. Looked like. Then Senna three, which did, honestly, this guy game looked doomed. He was six hey, gold. You're... At three yeah. six level six, and uh, somehow it's hard stabilized, and then uh, KO reroll. So center reroll, KO reroll, Yone reroll, and then pentakill, pentakill, jazz reroll, and Annie. No hard steel players, not a single one. Well. He probably wanted, simply wanted to use her as a transition point. Like he had only found the. Uh, yeah, I think people. I think people don't hard force it that much anymore. They they only play it if they get like hard steel early. <laughs> I mean, do you think that's correct, though? I feel like people can just, like, still tech into it, even if they're not, like, they'll, like, that they start within the game. Yeah, I think, I think you can win streak uh, into it really well, too. Like, uh, it, with, if you get an Urgot drop, uh, you can you can definitely still play the comp, even if you don't uh, have hearts literally. It doesn't seem like having hearts still in stage 2 is particularly important. It's about having it in, yeah. like, late stage 3 into stage 4. Yeah, exactly. You can just, like, use stage 2 to save HP. Oh, all the Greek players are right there. Aragante. <laughs> Holding hands. I like that. At 16 points. All, all the Turkish players are bashy. All the French players are bashy. I don't get it. That's, uh... That's interesting. Who's number one? Mamene. Yeah, he went. He went for, uh, third or um, first three times. Damn, one, one, one. Yep. Amazing. <clears throat> All right. Dude, what is this vest by Panda, man? I usually like it. It looks like... Uh, I think you know why. It's because I think it's the green screen behind him. It, it, it makes like a weird uh, outline on it. It's the green screen. It's probably fine. I, I like Weedas shirt, though. Weedas got some drip. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, the thing about it is that... Uh, the thing about EMEA is that you guys just wear like any clothes that isn't just like distressed hoodie and like a random t-shirt and because because you do that you instantly clear our fashion it's not it's not hard to beat americans in fashion we are terrible at it <laughs>
nations and i'm not surprised american fashion in general the worse it is the tackier it is the more people like it like they want to look bad i don't know why unit accelerator coming in from game definitely will be right i mean just the other thing when you look at this right the fact is that as i was alluding to unit accelerator but it looked like this was the lower end of points i believe so these guys are probably gonna be playing for like first to come back Unit. which yeah, is surprising because it's a pretty strong lobby i think considering yeah. some of the players in it <laughs> we got less coco canvas ging wow yeah what uh ging and canvas uh ging and canvas only had i think six and seven points after three games uh-oh. Or, or wait, no, actually it's... Wait, Canvas only has five uh, after three, yeah. Is this... And, and, and Ging, Ging has six. Is this half uh, half the field advances? Yes. Okay. Is there bonus points as well? Uh, no, we, we don't have any bonus points. Okay, so what's, what's the incentive for people who are like placing well is it uh tiebreakers uh yeah the the first tiebreaker in gsc is total tournament points oh okay okay got it yeah so even even if you're already through on like uh day or one and two you still want to play for the highest placements so you can you can have a good tiebreaker <laughs> players coming into stage two is we're gonna have some pretty decent balls online from the start all right silver start i mean if you just want to have like the, all the money in the world you're trying to build up start building a county for a reroll line there's the afk option secret there. national secret tech of the unix accelerators olaf i mean melee cares in general are, are a lot better on unix accelerator yeah i think the, the, the not so secret tech is zed the not so secret tech is zed yeah yone and riven are better in this as well <laughs> so is Vi three duplicator. This is this is looking like a Seraphine or a Senna spot. If you have Senna, are you saving Morello? Uh, I I haven't played any Senna reroll this patch yet, so I'm not sure. But I mean, it should be decent at least. Okay, he slammed it. But I mean, I, I think he's probably going for Seraphine. Yeah, I feel like Morello means you're. Going more for Seraphine, you had the Shojin ready to go. Uh, yeah, you, 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 pro you probably want uh, like more burst items for Senna. Yeah, yeah. The flat AP, I think, is much more important. Yeah. Well, Kel 2. Kel 2 with spoils. Wow. You see him Hodge here on her? You certainly can. Might not have to, depending on who he's fighting. Right, right. Oh, no, there you go. <laughs> okay, he insists slams it. I mean, I Poor feel like uh, you, you want her to you just want her to kill everything, so I could see it. Temple this into uh, like a KDA super fan board. Yeah, or or Penta, right? Could be a Penta game still. And extra power onto this oh, headliner. Man, Spoils of War is so good. It just it feels like it feels like that Augment is not a silver in terms of like how much gold you're able to accumulate and everything like that throughout the game. And then late game, like one time I was playing Spoils of War, I had an, uh, uh, a Yorick on my bench, and then I had a Yorick, uh, and then and then two Yorick's dropped from uh, the treasure chest. I hit just hit Yorick too. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. <laughs> Sometimes it's more silver. Can you also can you also get loot like that from the silver one? Yeah, I was playing silver. I was playing silver uh, silver. Oh, okay. I forgot when it was. I think it was like stage five. I'm so glad you said it. But I just remember yeah, I was like, I just had a Yorick on my bench, and then I just made Yorick too. I'm like, oh. Okay. Yeah, I think stage five is where you can get some of the bigger rewards. You can get like a, a regular duplicator as well, right? Yeah, it's which is uh, really good for for a silver augment to even have the potential to get something like that. Which is funny because no one was really picking like Draven as a legend last X of that one patch. But nowadays people love yeah, Spoils of War. How strong is uh new switching gears? Canvas took it this game. Have you guys uh, played it? I played no, it. I, played I, it. Uh, I liked it a yet. lot. I liked it a lot because it allows you to try and play for uh, a high economy with like kind of a middling board, and it gives you some interesting. Um, it just like it allows you. 
hit breakpoints like pretty aggressively and then that gives you so much more flexibility and you don't really have to even care about it much in the mid and late game but sometimes it can be surprisingly clutch when you're going for like these roll downs especially in stage four you know when you're like strong enough to be some of the people who are low rolling but like weak too weak to be the people who are truly high rolling you end up having like you know six to nine more gold randomly in stage four sometimes it's like kind of nice i mean it, it has a 4.42 average right now so uh sh should be pretty good for silver yeah i mean that's reasonable for something that's just people haven't been playing for most of the set so they're probably not super comfortable with yeah and then there's also the element where i think uh kevin if you look at the stats and you increase the ranks on it it improves on evp so i feel like the better player you are the more you're able to get out of this argument oh yeah i mean i can see that yeah because you know when to like try to push for that gold and you know when to like not care about it yeah, just about keeping the tempo, about building that streak of power, just getting towards those fast. Also, uh, one guy had an uh, 8 bit of them staying on an R2. Yeah, he committed. 6 8 bit is very, very strong. He's got the uh, Latent Forge, so he very likely can get another item for Riven if that's what he's aiming for. Yep, yep. Yeah, 8 bit emblem might be the best uh, emblem this patch, I feel like. You think so? Yeah, it, it it just it just uh it just brings up Riven and Kate to to a whole different level. I feel like. So when you play eight bit on like, are you willing to play eight bit just like tempo into Caitlyn, or do you always reroll Riven? Uh no, I've I've played Caitlyn like as my main carry as well. You, you need it a lot uh, a lot of frontline and you kind of need a second carry as well. So you, you need a lot of items I guess in general. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, it can definitely work. It's probably not as consistent as as real, but yeah, I, I would say Caitlyn is pretty good. All right, I have a new question. How do you feel about five loss switching gears? <laughs> is that what we have? We have five loss with you. Oh, God. Also, okay, also he uh, looks like he wanted to play AP, and he has three swords. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I learned this as well. I, did, I haven't played the Augment, but I was watching this the other day. Is if you lose the first round, um, that counts, right? Because you have won the previous round of PvE. So you're breaking your streak. Oh, I think so, it counts no matter what. But I, uh, no, I, I, want, I want, he didn't get gold because he he won. Oh, so you want to lose two one with it? I believe so. This, this spot is looking giga doomed. Yeah, I feel like <laughs> five points, three games in, he's probably, it feels like he's built it. That's like a total. Especially with his items. Tiny Titans. <laughs> oh, Kaisa 3? Wait. Oh, hold on. All of a sudden. We back. What's going on? I mean, at, at this point, he would need like two firsts and uh, and uh, another second to make it. So, not impossible. He, not impossible. Yeah, I mean, it's not impossible. How often? How often is it? Um, do you get to like uh, barely miss, and you sometimes make it through the next day because someone like doesn't show up? Is that very rare? into a really much more focused composition uh yeah it's it's really rare i i, I can't even remember if that or the last time that happened but i mean it's happened before but uh, usually everyone shows up i i actually overslept a gsc once so <laughs> uh, the last time it happens when you overslept <laughs> yeah and I, i'm so fresh was uh was also um like he he had a spot but i think he was like on, on vacation and then just didn't let everyone know but he, then he just didn't show up uh, okay so okay. <laughs> at, at least i wasn't the only one that didn't show up <clears throat> It's common in OCE, but probably because our region is fraudulent. <laughs> he has six scales here, but he took Headliner Nico. Do you think he's still going to try to play for the KL3 out or just tempo? Or something else? Yeah, he's probably selling the Nico later. 
Are there any particular items you want on Kale? Because I haven't played the new Kale very much. Like, like you need to have, other than the super fan. Rageblade Gunblade is, I think, what most people are playing right now. I think you can also put Deathcap instead of Gunblade, or instead of the second Rageblade. Hello, Froden. <laughs> hello. My girlfriend wanted to, wanted to say hello. <laughs> oh, I was like, did someone join the channel? I was like, what? <laughs> you are so cool. Congrats to your girlfriend and your baby. Oh, thank you. Uh, that's my wife. <laughs> Uh, but she's also, I oh, guess she's my girlfriend. That's his wife. No. Oh! <laughs> More cool. <laughs> Are you Vietnamese Danke. too? My Vietnamese too? No, I am, uh, I'm Chinese. I'm... Chinese? Chinese? Yeah. Oh, Chinese, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but Vietnamese food is my favorite kind of food. Another sign of three. Vietnamese is, uh, is his favorite kind of food. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ours too. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, it was great. <clears throat> yeah, I, I like that Kevin Parker said he was too busy to hang out uh, to practice for GSE because he hang out with his girlfriend. And then to prove it, he hired someone to come talk in his mic. Uh, and then she finally came over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're eating some pho right now? Dude, don't make me hungry. I'm actually kind of hungry right now. He's able to find that win exactly as it is happening. And on the back of that, we'll get at least three goals. But I do want to shout out Dallas. Okay, so we have a bunch of people rerolling. So we had uh, Senna 3, Kale reroll, MF. So it feels like EU is a lot of reroll. That's interesting. Do you feel like EU slant is like more reroll heavy than other regions? I mean, it's definitely more reroll heavy than, heavy than NA, I would say. Yeah, NA doesn't reroll. I feel like I feel like NA is like too cocky to reroll, as in like they feel like rerolls beneath <laughs> them. I don't want to miss, and I'm better than these players anyway. So why play something that like I can just lose because of variance? Was like okay, but if like all of you are saying that that you can't all be better than each other, doesn't make sense. I mean, I I kind of like playing reroll, but the thing is, every time I play reroll, I uh, I just don't hit. I don't know what it is. Like I like reroll, but reroll doesn't like me. Damn, that must be tough. <laughs> yeah, but like you you have an entire thing attribute an entire reroll comment tribute to you this set yeah i mean that's true so you can't you can't you can't, you can't, you can't say you never hit you literally got to like second was it second in vegas third in yes, vegas second doing second, that yeah. okay. nah, see that here's the thing about all the true real hitters is that none of them think they're hitters i'm not a hitter <clears throat> You guys just have seen that. I, I'm curious what the 8 pit spat guy is doing because this guy is just forcing Riven anyway. Yeah, off of yeah. just vampirism. He doesn't even have like amazing Riven items. He's probably just gonna go for BT here because I don't I don't think vampirism one is like uh, enough uh, yeah. enough enough omni vamp right. And then maybe like if he sees support cash or something, he's just gonna rip it for the banshees. And there's three Ravens on the board. So it's so interesting watching a lobby where everyone has like four to five points. Cause I think a lot of these people are just sending, just saying like, I need to get lucky to, to go first. Uh, there is something interesting about watching these like four to five point low rollers. That we are seeing on the other side of the board find yet another loss. Can the last Auckland maybe offset? Whoa. What's going on here? We're gonna get hit with Prismatic. Mm. Uh, Harmless is three. Yeah, I don't know if that's great news. Like, oh, maybe yeah. okay. that's now to not. Yeah, that, I mean, you can definitely go for QSS now. Yeah. Well, Infernal Contract might be the. I mean, it's probably the exact thing uh, Canvas would have looked for. <laughs> Oh, he wants to hold this Nico. Also, he had eight Kaisas a stage ago. Still hasn't. But he was also broke. He was also broke. <gasps> oh, wow. Oh. Oh, he's going to transition to MF. I see. Yeah, he's going to switch to MF. I see, I see, I see, I see. I see. Huh? Hmm. Curse crown. Whoa! You know what? This, this Swiss format is like making everyone play as if it's checkmate, like last game. That's kind of what I'm realizing right now. Yeah, they, they all need to play for they first. They all need to kind of play for first. 
the selling of the Kesa has me <laughs> That's so interesting. To be with you. Of course, if you are playing that jazz line, more is always merrier, but it can work on level 7. The only issue is that Canvas is really not finding what he needs to make this one come together. He Lucian. Can oh, he hit, he hit. Oh, okay. Big shot. It's, it's, it's a big shot, though. Okay, he's dropping KDA by the Lucian. No attack speed on the MF. Feels kind of rough. Yeah. Almost to the point where I don't even know if I want to put this death plate on her. But you have an open tier. It's not like you have much of a choice. Maybe if you can get something else, you just super fan it off. Oh, I like that. I like that. Lucian 1 also is a surprisingly really good item holder. He like randomly yeah, contributes true. 4 or 5k if you give him like a rage blade or something. This MF is not looking so hot. <laughs> no. He has, does he have an armor reduction? No. He has, he has just solution. He has no combat augment. It's looking bad for Canvas, guys. Why does Swiss Foreman encourage me for it first? It's because all the people are playing with similar points. Uh, Swiss pairs you with people who have similar tournament performances. So, like in chess, if you you know win three and you draw one and you lose one or whatever, you're playing against people with similar record. In TFT, the way that translates is you're playing against people who have the same amount of points for the most part. And so everyone's in a similar position in the tournament where like they need to basically average like a two or a little bit a little bit better to potentially advance the next day and so everyone's incentives are like aligned jin one i i'm not a really big believer in jin one from spots like these especially when you have no armor reduction <clears throat> I feel like Jin has the Yorick now, to help a little bit, but that's true. I don't think Gen 1 can get it done by himself. I mean, Gen 1 feels uh, better than last patch, for sure, but it's, sure, it's, not, it's not ideal, but he, okay. if you have enough frontline, he can actually carry even at he's, ta he's tankier now, right? So he doesn't get just yeah, blown yeah, up as yeah, easily. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, yeah. that was surprisingly effective. I think it's because the Seraphine just like hit everyone but the Jin. So. That was a oh yeah, he has so many units on the board that it actually takes a while to get to the gen. He positioned that well. He positioned that well. There are kind of two schools of playing Seraphine. You have the Spear of Shining plus JG because then you go around the critical stuff like that. Personally, I kind of dislike playing Seraphine without Morello on her. He has the Morello on Lulu one. Oh yeah, which is kind of interesting. Popped it off because I think he committed to it early, right? Morello was his first slam. Uh, Caitlyn, of course, he's yeah. Caitlyn so hurts. Will, yeah, adaptive Shojin is yeah. like, or adaptive and Nash is like way worse, I think. If you want to actually have a flashback to that Golden Spatula Cup one of the set where we did see the full. So this guy just ended up playing Kaelin. Oh, Coco just played Caitlyn. With 8 bit Diego. He looks like he's just looking for like maybe any yeah. any 8 bit headliner. So like you, you take a ribbon here if you did hit it. But yeah, I don't know probably. how many ribbons the other guy has. Uh, yeah, it's actually more. It's actually interesting because um, he only can roll for 8 bit Caitlyn or ribbon. You can't hit Garen at 8. <laughs> you roll at 7, you can hit Garen, but you can't hit Caitlyn. It's kind of awkward. 3 TTs. It's going fast. Nine. Dale Sam. Five hearts too. Dale Sam was uh, rank one for a lot of this set. He was like the first one to reach one point eight k. Oh, uh, what's it? What what what, what what's he uh, kind of known for? Um, I'm not I'm not particularly sure actually. Uh, usually, I think. Usually he he spams the comp that is uh, considered the strongest right now, and just like w one tricking whatever whatever comp is the strongest. At least mm, what okay, that's what that's okay. what he's been doing uh, mostly this set, which is probably why he's such a, a high LP. Oh, this three. is a big hit. Echo three is a big hit for Kevin. Riven three. Oh, this guy hit Riven. Didn't go QSS though. So he went for BT. That's uh, that's dicey, especially with so many like, like get stuck on the Echo Three. The Senna is not doing as well. I, I got destroyed by a by a, a double Titan Gargantuan BT Riven today without QSS. So, like, I think if your build is uh, good enough, um, it's 
It's not as bad to not have a QSS, but sometimes you're obviously gonna get punished. Campus went eight. Campus, yeah. I think he still didn't get armor reduction. Oh, he had two adaptives on board. You know, even shown. Yeah, level nine. If you're playing any AD range carry comp and you have no armor reduction, you just can't play the game. Is real? Jin! Oh, okay, he just skips the no mana, though. No mana, but I'm into Lucky Glove. Yeah, surely he, he will roll a mana item at least some of the time. Not this time, I guess. At least if it's headliner, you start with a violin, so it's not as bad. Did they clear some bench space, though? Yeah. Oh my god. Dude, imagine he hits his Jin and he just goes pop for Oh, Jin got a York and a Six from his box. From his spoils. <coughs> Overlay was wrong, by the way. Dale's time did not win. Are you saying for the K3 tournament? Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'm, I'm going to be uh, co streaming and observing. Uh, when, when, when is that? It's next Friday. It's basically a week from today. Okay, so it's like between. And then regionals is the, the following week. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So next okay. next Friday, guys, I'll be co-streaming that event as well. They uh they said that you know they they, they didn't want oh, me to play to make it fair for everybody else, you know. Yeah, I think I think Jin can roll Shoujin and blue buff, but not adaptive, which is which is pretty good on him as well. Oh, yeah. From uh, from TG. Which I think is entirely reasonable in, ter in terms of like his classification. I wouldn't want adapted to roll on like my uh, yeah, my, true. Like my other eighty range get like Caitlyn or something. Okay. I mean, if he can sneak a top four here, I think that's a good result given that I, it feels like he just forced Caitlyn because he just wanted to play, or uh, Riven because he just wanted to play Riven. Uh, yeah, and then and then you face the R reboard and yeah. your uh, your unit just gets blown up. Getting hit at Kali too. This is a good bounce back game for Ging. He needs that. He's the one who hit the Kale too early and converted off of it. I have bad news though. Zulanak has Ging in his match pool. Ging is on fire. Kale three. Oh, he he went to kill three. Okay, he hit he hit uh, a natural on level seven. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. Yeah, I think he he had it at like three five or something. This game. Right. He also had a uh, <laughs> rolling for days, so it seemed like he made, he like stored up his rolls, went for like a big fear bomb roll down. Rage blade, rage blade, red buff. <laughs> That's a lot of attack no, speed. Man. He goes fast nine and he just loses four out of five to go to go for. <laughs> I don't know, man. I think I feel like with no mana items, I still feel like this Jin is a little fraudulent. But his front line is bad. Front line this is bad. board is not a Jin board. It's, it's a way too board. much back line. Yeah, that's why I feel like. It feels like you high roll too hard to hit the two percent to get the gin, but at the same time, it's like this gin is not going to get you to the top two. Oh, wow, this is the best thing could hit. Yeah, that's a pretty big spike. We are seeing Lakoko could still tank one more hit, but Dallas and Zulanak are for sure. Another Nico item, maybe Shiv. Shiv probably. Run to Dunn to the other shred. Just more Lulu cast too. Yep. I like it. I think it's the 8-bit player. Oh no, this Diego is so scary. Romanian player. We talked to him this morning. Oh my god, this Diego is so crazy! Sold the entire world. Oh my god. That is insane, man. If you allow Diego to cast multiple times with the 8-bit thing, you just lose. It's crazy. Yeah, like if you if you hit six eight bit Viego two with like two other good items in Riven, uh, he al he's almost a better carry than Riven three. Yeah, yeah, Sometimes yeah, yeah. like <laughs> he's insane. He scales so well with the AD. It's crazy. My old Shojin, but still no front no front line. Yeah. Oh, well, we got the tentacles. That uh, didn't do anything. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then you just get wrapped, and then it's just doomed. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Oh, seven. Diego's so filthy. 
right, so we got Kale versus Kale versus uh, Diego. He definitely had a ghost copy, cool. but I'm not sure whether he's just playing the four eight bit. Ended up playing the thrush headliner. Yeah, I don't think uh, Kane matters I, in that spot. It's just like you basically need a a, a tank that can withstand Diego um and caitlin attacking it which i don't think many can at this point that's part of the why six eight bit is so crazy is because uh you there is no tank that can withstand that kind of amount of ad and pressure like this is this is crazy also uh if the, he also has like the the benefit of the inevitability of the high score as well yeah, I think as well as that, like, he doesn't have I really six eight bit. This game out, right? I think it, it's super important to kind of oh, he doesn't. No, he's just playing three with no headliner. Like it's a uh, Riven Kate and the. Oh, okay, okay. Well, still, he has two hundred seventy thousand, which is like still pretty good for four. I heard that you, there's some kind of bug with four eight bit where you get an extra bonus at the high score, but you get like more AD. Uh. Okay, really? I, I didn't hear that one. Uh, Tanner was talking about it in Discord. It's like uh, another tier, but it triggers for 4 8 bit where you get extra AD. Okay, so it counts like one level higher. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if that's still true on this patch, but it was that was a bug he was putting on last patch. Okay, Diego died. Hold on. Yorick went infinite. Hey. All right, we have a we have a we have a game on our hands. What changed that fight? Was it positioning? I'm gonna send you an image for that. What changed that fight? Did, did, did King already have Yorick to the fight before? I see, I see. Yorick 2. Yorick 2 with 7 Penta is kind of a beast. He has 3 item Yorick, and I think he had Edge of Night. Yeah, I think the Edge of Night on Yorick was a big game changer. Oh, but the Yorick's getting attacked first. That matter. And they kill and they refocus. Never mind. Dude, Yorick is so filthy. Yeah. <laughs> what the heck? That was crazy. Okay, so the, the, the difference was the, the Edge of Night just allowed him to drop aggro and then he, he able to heal back everything and cast again. Yeah, Edge of Night is probably like one of Yorick's best items. Because he always needs to be in the front line and uh, if he doesn't have Edge, then he just get, gets focused down sometimes even before getting the second ulti out. Yeah, yeah. I don't think he could have leveled. I don't think he could have I think he would have leveled if he thought he, that was going to make a difference, but he did not. Okay. Well, that was pretty educational. And the 4 8 bit was actually still really impressive. Like, the fact that that was the second is still, like, really good, I think. All things considering. Yeah, considering he was forced out of ribbon by the other guy. Mm -hmm, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, Lokoko is is definitely one of the best uh, tournament players uh, of the region. He, he he also has a really creative play, play style. Like this this kind of board, like Caitlyn uh, Diego duo carry without hard seal, is probably. Uh, I mean, it's it's something I haven't seen yet this patch, and it's probably not something a lot of other people would play. So he he's, he's got the text. How many players played today? Uh, 128. Okay, so it said that you were at 64, so you're like right at that cutoff. Yeah. Okay. And it's then, like... yeah, the, 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 the last two games were a disaster for me, unfortunately. Badge. I, I, I went eighth today twice playing uh, Riven Reroll. Like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. That sucks, man. Did you have good spots for it? I mean, I, I thought I had good spots for it. Um, I, I was also uncontested. I had like all Riven components at 2-1 and I had like a, a Corky opener with uh, with Garen and like a Sentinel upgrade. And yeah, I thought I thought my spot was good for it. But the one game I rolled like 80 gold for an 8-bit Riven and didn't hit. And that's the point where you uh, where you usually go 8th. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
loot swinging is considered a little bit weaker, right? And that's something that Can you greet Kevin from me? Well okay, his, David uh, says greetings. Also, you can tell him yourself. Uh, He's right here. <clears throat> greetings, David. And these uh, these EU casters yap a lot. Oh yeah, there were some uh, some longer breaks I think because uh, of some delays and lobbies. Oh, is Jadisaur on Dignitas? No, that doesn't look like a Dignitas uh, logo. No, I think it's uh, I think it's a different French org. French org, okay. Yeah. But, like this guy's on Dignitas. I had no idea. Curious to see if players want to opt into strong uh, bruiser uh, line uh, in the early game, especially if you find the okay, cannon. The, oh, what was the portal? Uh, Do we see? To, to play full, uh, the... I think they went straight into the game. Yeah, we missed the portal. Yeah, they, they were. I'll probably put it in the top right. Just wait for it, I guess. Um, curious to see if players want to opt into strong uh, bruiser uh, line uh, in the early game, especially if you. I rolled 116 game for a Seraphine three and barely hit the end, end of one. Orange Jesus wasn't with me. That's what that, I mean. That's just what uh, TFT is sometimes. Sometimes you just get got. And it's not even your fault. There's a bit of a rough spot here, itemized. Why I figure this out? There's, there's no real slamble items right here. You don't want to slam stack ship. Even though everyone has been buffed, it's not necessarily something you want to slam. All augments offer gold. Pumping up. Uh, oh, uh, gold, symf gold symphony or something like that? Golden symphony. Yeah. Scrappy Adventures. Scrappy Adventures, he rolled it! What? That's, that's, that's Giga weird. Giga Chad. Huh? <laughs> Giga Chad. He said frequent flyer. Oh, it's because he knew he's going to hit blinged out. Maybe a couple people were confused if they were allowed to take it or not, but uh, yeah, it was not forbidden. Yeah. I actually had a lobby today where three people got scrappy, and I, I was so mad. Or do you know they placed? You know uh, what? No, I, I don't remember. It's because he doesn't want to were... win that way. He's classy. He doesn't need it. He's classy. <laughs> yeah, true. That's right. Although, uh, the way he's playing his items, I guess it, it, he could... <laughs> you know what Aug would be really good right now? Based uh -huh. on the way he played his items? If there was an augment that like benef he benefited from putting single components on champions, that'd be pretty good here. Yeah, that'd be pretty good. <laughs> oh my god! Just... If, he had, if, he, if he took Scrappy, he mentioned the spot would be insane. Oh my god. This guy's probably just forcing Senna, I would say. He picked uh, Blinged Out, first augment. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Aegis into Disco. I, I played exactly a line like this today, and it felt okay, because you, you, as long as you can get, like, a, your early game rolling. But his items are so bad for Disco. It'd probably just end up steering towards AD. Yeah, if that's the case, then I feel like you would slam IE right now. You can play for red buff. Okay, he wins anyways. These, these items are kind of salvageable in the comp. He, he can't slam anything right now, but you can use all these components pretty well. Pretty well. You can, it's just that like I feel like with Disco you care about tempo a lot, so you want to commit your items as fast as you can. And so, because yeah, winning early is like a big deal. Agreed. I was. Uh, we haven't really seen much Cisco in the games we've watched, right? But I was looking at the stats. We saw the one Disco through. player. They went six. It, it, it plays like pretty well overall. Oh, the, there's a. There's a. Oh, sorry. Oh, I was just asking. Disc Disco plays over well for today. Yeah, it, it was like 4.51, I think, or something like that. Yeah. Let's see there's a there was a French player uh, who in GSC won. He I think he went second and he played Disco every game. And uh, today I had him in my lobby and he was also playing Disco. So I don't know if he's doing again this uh, it, it again this tourney, but he definitely loves to force Disco. <laughs> Is, okay, so um, a lot of, with a lot of success as well. Was Disco uh, was it was it the Disco patch last time? Uh yes. Oh. Okay, so the stats I saw one for today they were just for scrims. I see. I'll, 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 I'll send them to you if you want to look at them. Okay. For NA scrims? Uh, these are EMEA scrims. Oh, actually, right, the one that Panda posted. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. On, on tactics tools, it's the it's the second highest average comp now, actually. Disco. Yeah. Uh, for what ranks? Diamond or Masters? 
Oh, uh, I think it gets a lot worse. G GM plus, GM plus. Really? Yeah. Me disco, me disco. <laughs> I think certain augments enable it really well. Obviously, if you have like keepers, it's like a really good thing. But um, I think portable forge is surprisingly like a really good uh, star for it because you can kind of use a bunch of different setups for it. And if you can get something that prints gold, uh, and get the snowballing with it. Escort quest, escort quest is one of the best augments yeah, yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, gold generator. Spoils of war is also a uh, disco augment. <laughs> it's just really funny, but. Anything that helps you snowball and get that early goal so you can get to nine is like really, really good. He played Disco twice in my games as well. What's his name? What's his name? Uh, Zoro. Zoro. Yeah, Zoro five, five, three, or something like that. Uh, EU, yeah, some, EU some digits. Box. <laughs> I apologize. We're going to raise the stakes. <laughs> This doesn't feel like a raise the stakes spot, but uh, he's 37 out of 40. It's not like it's a great catch out anyways, and he has metabolic. I can see it. I can see it. He's at 89. Raise the stakes. Oh, Potterball always plays really greedy, so I'm, I'm definitely not surprised by him raising here. <laughs> The metabolic accelerator first augment. This is a playstyle actual into as well. <clears throat> Hotball looks like um the guy from uh, who does he look, look like? Who's look like? Reminds me of uh. Somebody. Will people be there in person? No, no, no. That's for regionals. I have uh I have people flying for regionals. This this upcoming weekend is uh is remote. His ability to find well his ability. I did some tech testing though today. We did some tech testing. I posted my sub chat. But uh. Here's the here here's the here's the tech. We set all this up today. This is what I did in the afternoon, like after lunch. I set up all this up. So this is all ready. It's a bunch of new wires and all this new equipment we set up for everything. Second PC, all the new cameras, new technical stuff. <clears throat> so yeah, we we uh, we worked on it today because we we wanted to see what we're missing. We're still missing like a couple of small things. It'll be ready by regional. Yeah. You mentioned not a lot of economy in the bank, but so much economy on the board because that board is very expensive. Two upgraded, two cost, two upgraded, one cost. And uh, here we see complete itemization for Senna. K, Gunblade, and De and uh, Red Buff. Blinged out. Is Gunblade like really good on Senna? I feel like that's a. This is multiple times I've seen people like prioritize Gunblade on Senna. Is that. Look. Yeah, I've, I've seen it a lot as well. I, I don't know how the stats look. Yeah, I'm going to look it up real quick. Senna. It's like blinged out. Okay. Gunblade. It's, uh, it's average. Delta neutral. They're like better with combos, like you build it with certain items. Not too sure about that, but he's Not enough sample size. I don't know. Yeah. Red buff is very good though. Red buff looks very good. Red buff slash Morello. It, it almost feels like you can slam red buff Morello and and kind of like go between Senna and uh, Therapy. Yep. These are some really interesting options. I feel like any of these are takeable. He could, like, I don't know if he'd want to like, pivot into executioners, but he totally could. There's some epitaph. It's really poor. <laughs> poor is expensive, I guess. The time where you start tomorrow, uh, the cup starts at 1 p.m., but I'll be live like a couple hours before. A lot of hard sale in this lobby. Even hard sale spot here. Yeah, this is lobby 11, so I think people are like, yeah, people are at 16 points. They kind of need a, a big game. I think 18 and 19 points is exactly the cutoff at the moment. So their second last game kind of feels like you need to play for like a, a little bit more than a fourth. Yeah, the final cutoff is always like 28, 27 is where tiebreakers are. Yeah, yeah. With 128 players, I imagine that there's a lot of 27 players that don't get in. So 28 feels like where you need to be. Yeah. Cool collector Nar. A lot of, I don't know if it's like people rolling on a 6 or what, but this guy's 4 too. Yeah, it was Spores of War as well. 
Soil is called collector. I guess you can make some of the money back. Yeah. Are players allowed to use, allowed to use extensions in tournaments? Kevin, are they allowed to use extensions? Uh, I don't think so. Actually, I, we are allowed to be uh, to use sites like Meta TFT or uh, Tactics Tools, but I don't think we're allowed to use the 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 built-in programs. Like, like blitz or or the meta tft overlay or anything <laughs> interesting i don't think it's banned in na but i'm not entirely sure yeah, there are a couple of interesting things here as well he has that vampirism as well so he's that kind of playing down half of the market right now with the, like, with the amount of okay so we have one center player one disco player ad Heart steel, bunch of heart steel actually. Looks like four people are playing AD. And then we have like one disco player, one uh, center player. One player, I'm not entirely sure what they're playing because they have like uh, stone plate and sterics gauge, which I'm not entirely sure what they're making. Vampires in second. Oh, he's going for the double. Whoa, the double raise. I mean, he does have metabolic, and he's pretty healthy here still, so I I can see it. The double raise. He will been using it. Okay, well, I don't know. I don't know the exact rule set, but so maybe Kevin, uh, maybe Kevin is talking about an old rule, or those people uh, didn't know. Not entirely sure. Yeah, he might drop to single digit HP before stabilizing and if there is Yeah, I'm actually not too sure myself because I don't I don't use uh anything like that, so I but I, I thought we were not allowed, but then again I'm not sure. It also makes for the best viewing and commentating experience as well. The upside is that uh, he has two edges already as well, which is one I am your favorite chatter, can I get a Sony TV? I mean, yes, but only if you copy paste that same message like 10 more times. <clears throat> and then I'll think about it. This is kind of interesting. No no mana generation in Senna. I mean, he has red buff, which gives attack speed, but I think you want to have Shoujin. You can get, you can get it from the super fan, right? Oh, Tome! Oh, true. He can't do that, yeah. So you can just drop one of the items on the Akali or whoever. Caitlyn, yeah, whoever. True. If he does end up going for the K3. Uh, uh, what was the tone from Heartsteel? Oh, uh, it could be Heartsteel tone. It could be Heartsteel tone. Yeah, yeah, I think he just cashed out five Heartsteel. Oh, man. 400? Alright, so... So much Heartsteel this lobby. Yeah, this, 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 this lobby went the other ne the needle in the exact opposite direction. Like, so much Heartsteel. It's looking like North America. That's exactly. what I'm used to. <laughs> <clears throat> Hard steel oh, disease. Yeah, I, 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 hate the, I hate this bug with uh, oh. when, when your bench is full and you get the cash out and it's like delayed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, we got a big duplicator. I mean, you already have Senna 3. And you got the headliner. Wait, you got more Senna's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he can go for he can go for Senna 4. We'll see what his board looks like if he might just end up playing that vertical KDA or the RE as the main component of his board in stage 4. Yeah, and uh, okay, this guy's not doing anything. Let's put it. He's going for Riven. He had Heart Steel Yone. Would have had Yone 3. Well, I guess that's cherry picking because you never know if he ends up finding the other Heart Steel Yone. Right. But, like, I don't know if you feel like Yone is good enough from this spot to just go for Heart Steel Yone. Probably not with having a QSS on him. Yeah, yeah, too low power level. If he like guaranteed gave him the heart, like if he got, if he saw one now that was hard steel, you take it though. This guy still hasn't used his tome by the way. It's been like a whole stage. What's he waiting for? Armistice. Oh, he's going for country. I see. Oh. 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 Emo. Emo. Emo's all right. He's, he even has the poppy. Like you can tell, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who would you emo though? Uh, Thr Thresh is who it's supposed to go on. Oh, you're right. Thresh. Five twenty nine. My God. Five twenty nine, and I think this is his last turn. Can you get to can you get to 750 this this fight? I don't think so. With five hearts still, I mean, I feel like so. 
Uh, I don't. I don't. I don't have enough experience. So sorry, close. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, these are, these are the kind of small things that I, I, I haven't. I haven't spanned enough hard to know all this small stuff here. I think if he kills a lot of units and loses, still he might be able to get there. But it's not looking like. I, I'm thinking like this. 180 or something like that instead of 200 something. Oh no, yeah, he, he missed by a lot. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I didn't know what, what it was like. 640. Yeah, usually the most I feel like you can get is like 100 and like 60 to 80 or something. Like that. And nail biter. Oh, we got to a thousand? Oh, never mind. Oh, he raised twice. Oh, right, 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 right. How does that work? I generally don't know how does it work. Doubles, with the raising it twice. doubles the heart. It, it doubles at the end. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Okay. oh, I didn't know man. that. I forgot. I've never seen it before. Two as real twos. Crazy. Uh, oh, this this looks scary though. Like this front line is a little yeah. bit sus. <laughs> <laughs> Reforge re Morello into a Titans. Okay, just stacking his head. But I mean, he's facing Kubix on who isn't that strong yet with the Yone two carry. So yeah, it's three sixty extra. Is that it's a bit? close? Oh, he, I mean, he, he he takes a good loss though. I mean, yeah. That, that, that has to be his last loss. That, then. Yeah, I mean, he, he can only take a one uh, one unit loss now. He has met met a bulk though, right? So like he might be able to heal. Oh back yeah, true, first. true. Okay, my chat's saying you just get a bonus 360 from raising twice because that wasn't two times, right? He was like he was at like 640 or something. Oh, I was I oh. thought that it. Oh, okay. I didn't know. I, I was that. under the impression that you got uh, twice the hearts whatever you had as a base. So you just got plus 360. I have never seen it before, I should, so I have no idea. I should study. I should look at the double the double number. It's, it's pretty rare. You don't really see it that often. Reforge. Look, he Man, does not I'm have getting very many items. Getting there, but it's definitely is not there yet for the front line. I think he's like trying to just orchestrate the board to the best of his ability right now, just setting up as much as possible before the round here. But you can take. Da, I think he's the prime. Here, just to have we have our headliner Ezreal on bench. Uh, yeah. yeah exactly. Is he holding um, any items? I don't think so. Sell one of the Ezreals then, because I get uh, back to five. Wait. Uh, what are we cooking here? Uh, <laughs> he he could have five hearts still in right now. Just you know, set something like that. I mean, he has the remover, right? So. Yeah. Item holder in stage four, so luckily it's gonna be a win for Punable. He's gonna have. Is he saving the remover for something? Execute his final board coming into this stage five. Oh. On the other side. Projection this guy lost so much HP. Well, that cash out's way worse. Yeah, he he didn't hit. He, he's dead. I mean, all the Ezreals are gone. Yeah. <laughs> six hearts, so six Ezreals, and then this guy's stuck on Ezreal pair. Yeah, that's a classic. I feel like in these spots, night. you're actually supposed to put these items onto like, like Caitlyn instead. Oh, it's I mean, it's even stronger on Lucian, but uh, yeah, if you have a Kate too, I just stack Kate. Especially yeah, one yeah, yeah. I think this is a really common thing about Hearthsteel players is that they like, okay, I have Ezreal pair, I'll just keep rolling, but like, you gotta start cutting your losses at some point. I don't know if that swings this fight though, because Potable is very strong. It looks like it could have swung the fight, to be honest, if those items were on Kate. Okay, it was close. Wait, this guy's also has Ezreal Headliner. <laughs> what the heck? How's that even possible? Did he do... Wait, what? Someone has... So there, there was an Ezreal pair. Someone had a head, Headliner Ezreal and then... Potty Bo did Potty Bo sell one of the Ezreals? He probably did. He must have at the end. Yeah, because like, that's 11 Ezreals by our count, right? Right. And they can't duplicate the Headliner, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless, I'm, I, I, I think... I, I think Potty Bo He must have sold that round, yeah. yeah. And, this, and then this guy hit. He's playing Ezreal. Oh, Ezreal KDA. Interesting. Four big shot. Right. He was looking for a different spat, I think. True damage. That's not that bad. Damage Ari. Generally, like the best <coughs> flash trait you can get right now. You can actually play uh, interesting tech. You can go into true damage KDA if you, and then you can play uh, true damage Akali as your damage dealer with like blue buff and stuff like that. Look um, at the crowd diver Yone over here. Yeah, I really like. You can't naturally play that board. You have to have like a plus one, or you have to have a Kiana. Hit, hitting Z two on seven is like that's uh, pretty good. It's pretty it raises your average so much in this comp. 
Yeah. Any of those three cost rerolls that rely on like a four cost uh, secondary, like Viego 2 or Z2, is so big. Okay, so he switched over to the headliner as a real. He's playing three hard steel. He doesn't need to go to so, nine, really, because he has so he many just extra needs to hit two stars. Points. That's it. Yeah. Seven win streak here. Yeah, Senna's good. Senna's good. He didn't end up ever playing the super fan. He just stuck with these items. Ooh, that's Z1. This position. Does it matter? It has so much stuff. It was pretty close. Oh, man. Very close. We have so many units. We have 10 units on board and, uh, well, 11 actually, if you count the target dummy. And it's, uh, Ergot holding it down. So rough because the damage that he has compensate for his lack of front line. He just Dude, there, some people are such big uh, uh, Ergot believers. It's like, there's either people who, like, really believe Ergot is, like, the, the hottest shit or, like, people are like, okay, he's all right. It's, like, pretty good and then falls off. Yeah, he's really good in stage two and three, but I don't think he's good as a main carry in country. Yeah, and then there's people who are like, I'm gonna play Urgot till stage five. <laughs> like in, in a non reroll setup, they're like, I'll play Urgot until like stage five. As prior. Yeah, I mean, some, sometimes that's that's correct. Like if you're playing yeah. hard seal uh, and yeah, he's yeah. holding like as as real items, and you don't think you can hit as real two uh, in time, or it costs you too much gold, you can just sit on the Urgot too if you have enough HP. 100%. If you play like red buff, blue buff, like Vex, and then you put like Z items onto Urgot or something like that, you can totally do, you, can, you totally could play like that. Yeah. <clears throat> so people are just big time Urgot believers. Let's see. A lot of spats, but nothing in particular is like, oh wait, there's a disco player. You can pick up disco emblem. Is that even what you want though? I, didn't they nerf like the verticals on that? Yeah, he took it anyways. Playing disco with Ari. I like it. We haven't seen that board like at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's a disco player, man? Oh, big time okay. hits. Wow, that is massive. That is massive. I remember EU was always big on Urga as well. Uh, like when Volta would play like reroll country, even like a few patches ago, he'd be like, man, people just don't play around Urga 3 a lot. But I felt like that was because uh, you cared a lot more about your tempo for country and you just want you focus a lot on stage four for your rules. These days, I'm not entirely sure how to evaluate it. I win this fight? He's dropped super fan, by the way. No, no surgeon. Oh. Uh, the Karthus doesn't cast. Oh. He's alive, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I think Urgot is um surprisingly reliable. You isn't he doesn't like win every fight, but like you can steal some fights for sure. He say he just switched to TF one. He was on RE two before. Yeah, he got to nine. This front line though, holy yeah, hell, RE two the blitz. Wow. <laughs> Keepers, this is, I mean, if he hits the is two stars he, uh, in the back line. Is he a little two clumps? I feel like he's, I'm getting a little yeah. claustrophobic he, he here. He also has Aegis. He has keepers, keepers and Aegis, right? My so I think it's God. actually kind of correct to position like that. I see, I see. You're right. So he has Aegis and keepers. Got it. And at, least, at least has vampirism for some chip damage. Oh, oh. barely. Oh. Oh. Wait, Blitz Blitz got this. Blitz 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 Frank got Blitz Frank. Yeah, Blitzfrank gonna smurf it out. Let's crank Wednesdays. He's a Chad. <laughs> when I was watching the um, the uh, CN MSI uh, where Double was also playing Double Sixty One, he he put a gun blade on his Blitzcrank uh, in Disco. That that was the, the Disco patch, and it was oh, doing I so love well. That. I love that. When you um when you when you when you go Blitz Three, he unironically is like really good with the AP items. Like you give him like JG and and gun blade. <laughs> like, <laughs> Death yeah, that's, like that. that, he goes that's why crazy. Crown Guard. Uh, that's that's why Crown Guard is so good as well. Uh, yeah, that's true. As that's well. true. He goes. He goes hot in the vein once he gets rolling. Looking for Poppy. Oh, oh especially was pretty good. Yeah, Poppy huge for four emo. You get Poppy, and then you can replace okay. that with the Lally. We got it. 
And the fresh upgraded as well. We can see maybe a second item on third. Yes, third uh, item for uh, Samira makes sense. I mean, I feel like his HP deficit is pretty high though. Also, he's spread. Not having Vex like itemized in this comp feels so tough. Yep. Yeah. Like Urgot, I think Urgot's limitation is going to start showing soon, if not right now. No, looks like he's uh he runs over this fight. And he has like gigabus items, like Samira and, and Urgot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and three yeah, crowd. Yeah, holy are cow! Insane. Yeah, three is a crowd elevates this comp quite a bit. It is true. It is true. You just you just get so much HP. Oh, that's right. He, does, he can just keeps that the whole time. Just even does switch to Lowry. Hardball just lost. Who did he lose to? It had to be either Kubix on or Ryosuke. He really lose the like the TF player? I don't. I mean, those are the only other people who we who are street or a win streak. Oh, the Yone. Player. He's fighting him now though. He's facing Kubix on now. He's also a disco TF. player. That's surprising. That's like, really surprising. Oh my god, this Yone? Oh. I guess that's sad one, so. Yeah. He double raised the stakes. Oh my god, that, oh, that, that Zach was, was so clutch, clutch man. Yeah. That's so, that's so crazy. Lucian pair. True damage Akali. Are you thinking about playing into a call? Uh, He's thinking about know. going for Kali 3, maybe? Yeah. Because like, he has a duplicator. To this champion duplicator, should another copy of Kiana come running for eyes on the Maybe if you can live one turn, you can try it. Oh, yeah, actually, the play was to lock and then go and see then the carousel. See carousel, get gold from carousel. And not get immediately blitz down with the amount of damage that comes off of the Senate three. Both champions are scaling later. Senna does fall off late game. Oh, this Yone. Oh, no. Oh, to one HP as well. Hey, disco players winning. Uh, yeah. and, uh, it's a disco win out. Six straight. I mean, the cap disco is so hard to beat. True damage emblem. They have two, or he has one. I don't see. I don't see any true damage emblems on this. I, I see eight bit. No, he has an eight bit spot. Yeah. Dude, disco wins this lobby. The OG Caitlyn is back. Oh, he has a headliner, uh, Malawi, I just realized. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He has six disco because of the emblem. High rolling the perfect headliner five cost on level nine is like, is kind of disgusting, honestly. <laughs> like the chances are what, 2%? Yeah, two yeah. percent, and yeah. that's like, oh my god, a colleague's trapped behind the. Oh, that's not good. He's been cornering his Senna a lot. Yeah, that's actually also interesting. He's cornering his Senna. Oh, killed by Zed Shadows. That's a fourth. That's a bad feeling for us. Wait, maybe a third. Maybe a third. It's a fourth. Oh. Right, so we got Disco versus Double Heart Steel Cash. Still rolling at eight. Do you, do you think Potable could have just stopped and go to nine? Ah, I feel like he really just wanted the Zed two. He's just been rolling for Zed two for yeah. so long. Yeah, he found more. He found like pairs of all the legendaries as well. That feels terrible. Also, the way he's positioned. Actually, I don't know what to do against this Aegis clump. Aegis keepers. Usually a counter to Disco, but the keeper shields here helping out a tiny bit. The Ezreal blue buff is missing, so I'm not gonna get that early. Oh man, he wins anyways. This matchup is like impossible. If you can't yeah. beat this with Zed one. Okay, basically he's still he got, he he got room to cap. He's going ten. He still has Lulu. He could replace with Sona. Yeah, and I, I, I especially, you're right, you're right, you're right. especially since he's full clumping, it's like even worse against Ezreal. Like the matchup is already bad. Yeah, like surely, surely you can split this up a little bit, right? Yeah. yeah. You don't need full. You, you full probably value. want to make like a, like two groups on the on the yeah. different sides, right? <laughs> yeah. The way to play it is like to um, play it if you're going against Edge Lord. You just have the disco balls at like B two, B six. Yeah, exactly. 
and uh, and then you separate them. Oh, he on a two. He dropped Tarek. Oh, he dropped Tarek. Oh yeah, Tarek. <laughs> People have been calling this uh, quote unquote strats ball sacking. <laughs> What? Okay, he's, he's baiting, baiting Israel <laughs> to the right this yeah. time. What? <laughs> I've, I've heard that from NA streamers like so many times the, the past like week or two. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, didn't get hit by Israel. Is that enough though? I mean, he got the tattoo 2 now. Since that is a menace. Uh, we went to 10 and hit Kiana 2 and we just got wrecked. It's not enough damage on his board. Yeah, no, 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 Sona Ziggs won. You know, I feel vindicated. I feel vindicated. Going for that three star forecast, but at the same time, it's not like we had additional copies to work with, so it is very understandable. It is quite hard to say how the booba formation. It looks more like eyeballs or a flower to me. I don't know, like two eyes. Take it, take us through it. So here's the interspace, the slip you were talking about before, David Wright again, going to be coming in here. A little bit of a change up though, to sit coming on to the right side of the field here. Potty ball with the catch. He's healed 27, by the way. Yeah, it's crazy. That's okay. Disco second's not bad. I feel okay losing to a double raise with Sykes. This one was pretty close. Oh, it was actually kind of close. That one was very close. I, hey, if, if, if he gets to like 6-2... If he gets to like 6-2 with an item, he probably wins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, like, I was thinking, like, maybe he should have rolled that 9 instead of go to 10. Can you go back to the 7-1? To, to I just want to see how much HP he had. Uh, he had 40. Is, I'm on this turn right now, how many does he have? Oh, he has 24. 25. Okay, so I mean, it's not like 100% sure he would live one round. Oh, no, no, sorry, 24, 24. So he, he's not like 100, he's not like guaranteed to live this round, or he could sack one. Mm -hmm. So he, he went, he went, he went with 15 gold. He would have had like 30 if he waited. Has come to six and uh, yeah, but so has Pat Did, but like going for the count to even make him that much stronger, though. Not really, no, but it's, I mean, there's so, so few things you can take with that much gold that you just kind of have to accept it. So then, like, the other option would be to roll like 60 gold and try to hit like Zigsona. Definitely, uh, Potentially, I mean, he with like, no yeah, items, so. he had like a Zigsona one. He didn't, I don't know, I guess Lulu is stronger, but yeah, Lulu is definitely stronger than Sona one with no items, yeah. But especially, especially uh, after you hit the zigs as well, where uh, like when you get too hyper pop. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. He took a JG for zigs. I don't think that did anything, but I don't know if there's any better options. I mean, his TF items weren't like uh, the absolute best either. I think if he has like uh, Archangel, he probably gets closer to winning. Agreed. JG is pretty bad on him. Yeah. Sometimes that's what you got though. <clears throat> Alright, I'm gonna use the bathroom real quick. We're back, guys. Okay. It's for the rest of the players in the lobby knowing that there's really no way out. If Panabol doesn't get absolutely just, you know, destroyed at the point he's trying to turn the game around, but I think with the you know, Unix as well, the metabolic character added with the vampire. Do you follow EU uh, TFT at all, Ramblin? I, I watch the events pretty regularly. I just haven't been like invested in competitive this set. So, like, I'm not, I haven't really been watching NA either. So, I'm, I don't know. Oh, I see. I see. This is the first EU event I've watched for sure. But uh, in the past, yeah. I, I mean, I enjoy watching as much TFT as I can usually. Same, same. I don't play on any of their servers or anything. So, this is the only exposure I get to other metas. He made a beautiful board, and the two players in this game that were on the losing end of this kind of Spider-Man meme-ish playout, where Jedusor and Odessa both also looking for the Ezreals, also looking for those hard still com eighty flexes that arguably have been nerfed, and it just didn't come into fruition. I'm kind of surprised Punk wasn't played more uh, today. We haven't seen it in all in these games, right? Other than the guy yeah. not showing by three or whatever. Yeah, I haven't seen it in, in any of my Man, games today either. Uh, so, I mean, there were probably a couple in the other lobbies that, that I didn't see, but uh, not as many as I would have expected. Do you think there's like a specific best way to play it? Like it's good for Jinx Fi and then what do you do after that? Alright, um, 
I mean, if you're uncontested, you probably go for the for the Amumu three uh, win out as well. Uh, I actually I actually don't know if going for Vi is better for uh, or is better than just going for Pantheon as your main tank. Um, I mean, if you like natural Vi three, of course you're gonna play her, but I, I don't think it's worth digging that much for her. So you just get your Jinx and you move on to the the higher costs. Get a yeah, I think, board. I think uh, the the hurricane hurricane buff uh, made the comp quite a bit better. What was the uh, the change to hurricane? Do you remember exactly? Uh, the the AD increase. I don't know by uh, how much it was, but yeah, it, it definitely has uh, better stats now. It's actually after last whisper, which is a four point two nine. The uh, hurricane is the next best one with a four point three two, so like just as good. So uh, you probably wanna, you probably want Hurricane on Jinx now, is what I'm saying. Makes sense to me. Alright, we're back. And also, Wandering Trainer, two people voted for it, but uh, six people voted for Golden Finale. Bench, oh, yeah, the, EU is the, the item. Uh, Hurricane gives five more AD and the bolts deal 10% more damage. Which oh, that's is, a lot. Which is kind of a big buff, so yeah. Uh, yeah, Runes is actually uh, really, really good in general. Um, on the unit that really like it. Like, Lucian already really liked it. Now it's like very, very good on him. Yeah, it's also pretty good on Caitlyn, and it's really good on Jinx. Closing out an avenue spot. That is not the case for these players. My goddamn cannon was like an auto pick at the start of the set here. But I shoot. Why did you attack from being a TFT caster? Because I think TFT is a game that's uh, one, the main broadcast is good enough without me. They don't need me anymore. Uh, and two, I think that the the experience of being an observer and co-streamer and analyst is uh, I, I just I just like the way I like doing this a little bit more than casting. Um, it's the fastest way I can summarize that. I think casting you kind of have to like tell you have to kind of like uh speak in a certain way and present in a certain way and i think in tft uh, there's a lot of different ways you can observe and like watch the game and analyze things i, I really like I, I really like doing it having control um yeah cold streaming is probably just a lot more chill right i mean if i would be casting i would probably be pretty stressed <laughs> I mean, there's that, and also uh, the thing about casting is okay. Like, it, it, it's, it's, it's gonna sound like really like small, and it kind of is. But I really don't like when I'm talking about something that I think is really interesting, and then the observer switches. Like, that's like one of many things that tells me about TFT casting, <laughs> because like I want to be like focusing on something, and then all of a sudden the observer's like, nope, we have to like spread out who we're watching because you don't want the main broadcast to bias anybody. And I'm like, yeah, but like I only care about like these two things. Like what if I like these are the only things that are, are actually really interesting to talk about. Uh, so it's like it's like small stuff like that, and then uh, there's like some other things to like. Uh, th there's also other factors. Uh, one, I also think that in general casting is sort of like a dying art in uh, the space in esports. It's not a very profitable thing to do, uh, like for your career, because uh, esports casters are always taken advantage of. Uh, and I and I feel like it's not like Riot does like a bad job of it or anything like that. They're actually kind of nice for the most part. Um, but uh, Riot and tournament organizers are never truly incentivized to like make casters like build up casting ca like the casting team because they become too expensive and also uh, they would have too much power. <clears throat> so like this whole like uh you, like you guys watch i don't know if you guys saw like rocket league or um some of these other like scenes or stuff like that but they're going through like a really big contraction like a lot of casters lost their job and then they have nothing else left in them and so co-streaming is like another move to protect myself and to build something for myself because um it's like something to invest into me and less about building something else just for it to be taken away like all this bs about like who's casting and everything like that is like another element that I really don't like. I basically build something that Riot can't take. Just like the, the summary of it. Not that they're trying to take it away from me. They're actually been very good about working with me. But uh, I'm tired of building up for something, building up a, a project for somebody else just for an incompetent suit and executive to, to just like make a terrible decision because 
the item holder they don't know anything the about the scene in space. I'm protecting it. That's like the that's like another element of it. And there's a few others, but um, that's the quickest summary I can do. Well, there is some really dark tech as well, right? We have the Mordekaiser uh -oh. reroll line with the Also, it's really fun. Right? So I really like that. Is something that I know Volta played a lot of at the start of the set. It's kind of fed into obscurity, Kenobi, but there's a line that needs to be open for. Okay, yes. sorry. Uh, more about this game. What's the what's the portal's golden finale? Okay. So we have scrappy inventions. I like actually this is a really good thing about the Swiss system is that the Swiss system lets you also know like where are the important lobbies. There's like only like two lobbies to watch for the most part, right? Because there's a bunch of people that are kind of in the bubble. You can. Yeah, yeah, they kind of guarantee that the, the last lobby of the day that they watch is going to have almost all of the players in contention to make it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Instead of it usually only being like three at most that you're actually caring about this, their placement in this exact game. On, uh, on day three, they actually have uh, a cast for every lobby. Which is pretty nice. How many, how many lobbies is that? Uh, it's it's 32 players left, so yeah, four. Four lobbies. That's awesome. There's three people with uh, scrappy inventions, by the way. Oh wait, is is this my lobby? No, it's not. It's just another lobby with with three scrappies. <laughs> I need to see the pick rate on this augment. I'm surprised that we've already seen it skip once, to be honest. Wait, he has, <laughs> yeah, we see he has disco. So he has disco Tarek chosen. He already has a TF. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, but like, there's a rule about this though. When you hit like TF too early when you're playing like disco, uh, you like that's like that's like that's like the only TF you see for like the next three stages. It's <laughs> weird. Yeah. I, I, every time I've hit like TF early, it's like uh, it's kind of impossible to two star TF until like stage five five. I mean, if you're uncontested, surely it's not going to be that hard. Surely. You would think so. <laughs> also, he has really good frontline items, but he doesn't really have any damage items. So unless he's going to at least guarantee it. Yeah. Yeah. But if he gets like the one component, and he still has no damage items. He could fall off really hard in stage three. Can he take down Scrappy? Looks like it. Uh, yes. That's a big ass shield. Oh, he's got the, the Wormog shield on the Jinx. Yeah. Oh. That's a big ass shield. Wow, the Wormog shield on the Jinx. Oh. Oh, that's so tragic. Oh, that's my a scrappy God. death. Like, the one thing you want with Disco is to streak stage two. Oh, my gosh. This is a horrible patch for tournament. I mean, I, I, I feel like a lot of players actually think this patch is very uh, high skill. <clears throat> Like, players who think that it's low skill are probably the players that are bad at the patch. Honestly, this oh. patch isn't isn't that bad for, for Tyranny. The last one would have been uh, a lot worse, I feel like. Home. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Home drop. Emo game. Oh, wait, it's wait emo this guy gets is gold. actually so good now. Nice. Is Karthus who you want to put it on, or is there anybody else that's a particular great on? Emo? Um, Emo spot, yeah. I, I've, I've seen Ari. Ari, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, Sona is actually pretty good, because like yeah. she, she ults pretty fast. Emo Ziggs is good too, because uh, scales him much faster. If you're able to get into that line. Yeah. I mean, there's like a pop to it, for example, it's always pretty good execution. It could be pretty effective. I think that yeah, when you, also, when you if you, play, uh, if, you, if you want like the, the true best holder of emo spats, I'm pretty sure the data says it's Lucian, which I'm not entirely sure if that's just because it's just like, you know, you have Lucian. Uh, and, and then emo, emo emblem is Jin's best item. I think. Oh, it sounds really good on him. Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense, yeah. Final he like reserves. fills up eight in like seven seconds. Crazy. Oh, I'm yeah, I, I played Final Mana's Angel and that, that feels so strong. Yeah, yeah. I got offered final, final Reserves today as well, but I was too scared to take it. 
Oh, that's you, you know what, man? You just gotta pony up sometimes. Oh, these guys like these guys are the point players that kind of need to play for first, I think. So, I'm oh, surprised you're right, you're right. Yeah, I'm surprised wait. He wouldn't go for it. Ooh, final reserves. I actually I didn't look at close enough at his spots. Radiant blue buff. And it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see what comes out of Radiant Blue Buff. I think, I think Hyper Pop Lulu. My God. I, th I think there's like a specific way you have to play Final Reserves as well. I think you have to like uh, make a lot of gold on your bench because you get your gold gets set to 50 anyways. So you need to have like extra gold on your bench that you can sell off and uh, to go 10. Yeah, that's what I've seen. I, I haven't played it this this set, but like when I've seen people usually roll for like a decent board on eight, just so they can kind of set themselves up, and then they yeah. use the rest of the gold on nine to cap out. Hyperpop. Hyperpop spell weaver oh and my sentinel. God! Now you get hyperpop so Lulu, good. and you get four hyperpop. You get hyperpop Ari. Oh my goodness! If, if he takes spell weaver here, I'm angry. <laughs> Uh, what? Sentinel? Sentinel? What? Oh, no, wait a second, wait a no, second, wait a no, second. No, no, no. Oh, he's playing That was the worst one. Nah, he plays Karen Reroll here. <laughs> he took, he what took Sentinel. The fuck? Okay, okay, so he doesn't think he's going to hit the reroll, so he wants to go for Sentinel Ari. He's just playing Ari, yeah? Oh, man, I'm falling asleep here. I'm falling asleep. Come on, man. No final reserves, no hyper pop emblem. That's right. They don't know Wandering Trainers. Dude. <laughs> EMEA. Well, last GSC it was a lot different. Last GSC a bunch of people went on Wandering Trainer, <laughs> but but maybe they maybe they, they learned. learned. <laughs> they learned, yeah. <laughs> Man, I thought NA does bad shit. <laughs> Ugh. That's right. EMEA copy got, NA uh, again. Two twin terrors. It looks like this is playing twin terror kale. Yeah, Twin Terror Kale. That, that, that's actually, I think Kevin was the one who was like, Twin Terror yeah, Kale Twin, is... Twin Terror Kale can work, definitely. You, no, you were telling me that you thought it was really good, and then I took yeah. it on stream and I went in. <laughs> but then I, but then but then that was when I found out about the KO bug and then I watched it back and it was bugging every fight and I needed to win out because I hit it to like pretty late. Like so, yeah. I mean his, his other augment that the guy has is crown guarded and if you can get like triple crown guard on a on a ward it's like actually really insane. Yeah. So his, his setup is pretty good for it. Yeah, two KOs, two mords. Also the other part of it I didn't, I didn't realize at the time was I needed two mords. I think I played like uh, something dumb. I didn't, I didn't play too much. Ch Chinar's spot looks like my average Riven spot today. I, I'm surprised I only you didn't have take like the, uh, three forgot. Rivens. No headliner. You're surprised you didn't take what? I think you should have taken the Urgot headliner and stopped rolling. Oh. Yeah, I think Urgot headliner is uh, very reasonable. He, he totally could have gone back up with it, but now he, like, he's, he's rolling for just Riven. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has a oh. dupe, so... Oh, okay. Hazard? I mean, now he's too off. Now it's not he's too off that anymore. You're just kind of stuck in the spot where you have to donkey roll for it. Wow. TG. TG. This I TG mean, is it even a high roll rambling? Think about it. He has Scrappy Inventions and Binary. You can't get either. Damn. Can't even use it. He's just, he's just down. He's just down. Well, Enzo, Enzo already has Scrappy Cyber Bulk. Scrappy Cyber Bulk. Already KL3 with these KL3. items. I mean, that's... That's going to be stable for a really long time. Mm -hmm. Five streak. Kayla seemed very impressive so far in these games. Yeah, I pet I put her as the best two cost reroll, and I think Seraphine and Senna have moments where they can contend with it. It just feels like Kayla's like the most consistent. Also, because I feel like you can play for like the Yorick to win, which is just nuts. What up, Blau? He's going to have a oh, we're very almost very done with EU, and then we're going to gonna do some hard steel cups rims. Makes sense. He's got enough items to go around. Scrappy with Cyber Bulk 3. That's that's already quite a high roll. Yeah. Then he just needs to get the uh, the binary last. Actually, you can't. It's gold finale, but then you just replicate set 6 perfectly. <laughs> Where you get Scrappy Inventions, and you get binary. Oh, he hit the he hit the he's the oh. army. 
Spell over Ori? With the per B this? Actual this? Okay, so that means you don't play a super fan raid, because, uh... No, yeah. no, he's going Sentinel, he's going Sentinel, 6 Sentinel. I haven't seen 6 Sentinel ruin in a while. Usually people just play either 7 KDA with Akali or the Warrior variant. Oh, Ari? Oh my god, Drain Ari? Tank! Oh, Ari! Ari? Oh. Oh. <laughs> so that was really close. That's a six and yeah, a kill diff. Yeah. Okay. Oh, epitaph. Oh, combat, combat caster. Oh, combat caster is really good. Combat caster is really good. Epitaph is also good. But uh, combat caster is too nutty. He needs to find Echo. If you find Echo over the Mumu, perfect. perfect. Twin Terror? Twin Terror crashed just on me, Synergy? LDP. LDP. Oh, and you give the kills. <laughs> I feel like they're not sharing that many stats, though. <sighs> Wait a second. What's going on here? This guy uh, this guy found early TF. How many TFs has he found since? Mm, very strange. Mm. Very strange indeed. Oh, Enzo, Enzo might uh, connect Mord and Kale later when, when Mord has all the crown guards. True. He, he has, he has, he's the crown guarded, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Mm. You hit GM finally? Awesome. He didn't just go his TF. So someone asked why is Scrappy so good? <laughs> Bug currently. <laughs> yeah. You, you just get the components at uh, at two two and two three, which kind of makes it uh, much better. Barrier treasures. Oh, Raven three. Three. Nice. How good is I was gonna ask? How good is emotional connection? The Vex player took it. Is that something you're actually looking for in that line? Uh, I don't think so. Actually, I think it has pretty good stats in in Twin Terror. It's, I think it's like it's like pretty decent. I think the best part about it is it gives you like a lot of tempo, and it gives you the Vex, which is nice. Uh, but uh, it's a lot better in like Annie Spellweavers than it is in this comp, I think. Because you're more or less just buff, like buffing your Twitch, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, like, Maybe. it's good if you're able to use it in Executioners in general, because you, al you also can give the mana to, uh, like, Karthus, which could be really Karthus nice. Karthus-like game, sure. Yeah, uh, but uh, in this part, it doesn't really do very much. Yeah, and his way to get st to getting stable is finding three star Mumu with items because right now is Lulu Twin Terror better than Punk Twin Terror? I think so. Oh, actually, uh, uh, emotion connection is not very good in this comp. Is what the stats are saying. It's, it's like a it averages like a five actually. I <laughs> see. <laughs> okay, so it's uh, it's not good at all. It feels it feels like yeah. If your if your entire team is emo, then what does your augment actually do? Nothing. Sentinel Ezreal. The moment I hit diamond, I lose the will play game. I mean, that's fine. Like, that just means your goal is to hit diamond. If you ever feel motivated to try masters, you can try. Three big shots. Yes, <clears> random, <throat> random Ori for KDA. Two, two Lilias on the board. Oh. Yeah, that's weird. <laughs> that Everyone has right. different goals when it comes to TFT. So don't feel like you like you need to hit masters or whatever. I will say that's different KDA than crank. feeling like you are scared to play because you don't feel like you can, like you're afraid to Wait, fail. Don't you just drop the Ori for like a Lowy here? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> or maybe he's playing for more oh, KDAs. Okay. I mean, he, he just he just wipes yeah. the board, so yeah, it doesn't matter. even matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> this KD Blitzcrank is kind of an animal. What yeah, the heck? Blitzcrank with with AP is a uh, is a beast. Uh, it, it's it's a Blitzcrank dual carry. True. Yeah, I want them to show how much AD damage he did because he had even trout. I just want to see his autos. Wait, do you guys realize that Blitzcrank has another person in his cannon arm? Ever see that? Wait, I, I thought he I thought he only has one in in like the the cockpit or whatever. No, 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 no. Look, 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 look. Uh, this is very important. Uh, best friend has he has like a little baby that he's like in his own can. Oh what? Oh, I've never <laughs> seen that actually. <laughs> Man, that's OP. That's that's like three champions in one. But that's why Flitz Ring is so good. What the fuck is that gameplay? Two Lilias, 4K, not by Alawi. 
A. He won the fight, so. That's right, man. He won, he won the fight, so he's right. Relax, Q. Guy's a, a big time backseater. Keen, are you ready to crush tomorrow? Ready to expose these frauds? Man, I don't really know about this uh, Six Sentinel Ari setup, but he's he's doing all right, so. Maybe he wins this fight. I mean, this Ari is pretty crazy. I don't know about the rest of the board, but. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Radiant Blue with Combat Radiant Blue buff? Yeah. Like, I, I feel like I feel like his setup is good, but he is at 16 HP. It's probably because he has too many one stars. He's playing like. Yeah, the Sentinel two stars his, his are really frontline, important. Yeah, yeah, his frontline yeah. items are uh, very bad, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Gargoyle, Serax on a Mord one, that's not gonna tank a whole lot. This guy picked emotional connection and lost every round, so I'm losing faith. Yeah, I, I feel like your twin terror spike should be like, kind of, oh, we found duplicator. Oh, we found frontline items. He's also like full sacking though, like uh, right. he's playing this as greedy as possible. Right. Okay. Oh, but he's, hit, he's hitting a lot right now. He's playing it like it's a win out comp. All right. I mean, it kind of is. Oh, yeah, he hit, he hit, he hit. He hit everything? Well, didn't hit the Twitch 3, but this is good enough. Uh, <clears throat> oh, took out Guardian for a Mumu. Isn't that worse? Uh, that feels a lot worse. Also, he lost AD on his Twitch. Also, we still have an anvil. I feel like I'd rather sub out Poppy because I feel like the four emo. Oh. Um, he also has uh, an anvil. Yeah. Oh. 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 I'm pretty sure even like four emo is just never the way in this comp. Yeah. He, you always want to go for executioner, I think, because he's kind of he's still kind of lacking damage, even though his his vex is three star. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I feel like four emos when you hit the emo emblem and then you go for like the emo emblem on like a yeah, yeah, yeah. like a Karthus or something. Yeah, when you when you, when you hit an emblem, it's uh, it's great. Dude, this but... guy this guy's gonna hit scrappy inventions, twin terror, and go eighth. Oh my gosh. That's not that doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel good at all. Uh, he doesn't have magic shred. Oh, you're right. Man, so, I'm getting more dog Is he hoping that, like, the cloak transforms into it? No, he's, he, 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 he's scrapping <laughs> he belt. Last whisper. He's scrapping belt. Oh, uh, I mean, it's TF1. Still TF1. <laughs> yeah, for the fact that he was facing a TF1, this looked uh, not I mean, very one-sided. I, I, I tried to tell you guys ahead of time. You cursed him, Froden. I, what do you mean I cursed him? That's literally the law. If you hit stage, if you hit stage two TF, this is your fault. when you're when you're angling disco, you just don't hit till like end of stage five. <laughs> like you can pair up at best, you just don't hit TF two. <clears throat> I, I, it's, it's happened to me so many times. We got all our two stars on the Sentinel board now, except for Lilia. But he's literally one HP. Where where is this guy Splits Crank? He yeah, doesn't all, the, all the all the they're, they're on they're on this KDA board. Let's Crank. Yeah, he's getting grief. There's, there's the, the disco player. The, there's the disco player, and then there's this guy. So I guess there's a lot of them that are out. Yeah. She's okay. She's going to be regening. He goes back there, but we have a lot of time. It's Ari trying to hyper carry. If he can hit thinking. Sentinel Sona with the Rage Blade. <gasps> oh, oh, that Ezreal. Combat caster diff. Combat caster diff. Oh yeah. my god. And, and and did anyone die? No, no, no one died. Oh god. <laughs> oh god. It's so close. Is it better to fully vitamize Vex3 in late game than scrapping it? Yeah, some situations you're supposed to actually just give up scrappy vents the value as well because sometimes you just don't get any like meaningful impact from it. So yes, uh, sometimes in scrappy inventions, you, you go for like one, two, three items instead of like four or five. <clears throat> Akali Ezreal do okay. Okay, we're in level nine TF. Okay, time to hit TF two. Surely. There we go. Okay. Right on time. Five five. Yeah, he just he just skipped an echo. He has a Garen on his board. Huh? Oh oh. Maybe he's gonna play Ziggs. Okay, I got it. I hit four Dazzler. Okay, Jazz. I can get behind it. 
JG Ziggs. Playing Ezreal 1, MF1, Bard 1. With 4,000 items. How is everyone so weak this lobby? I mean, this guy's sitting at 30 gold as well with with, with that board is uh, a little bit suspicious. Yeah. Defeated! Giant black le or uh, white letters on black. Oh. <laughs> Man. Uh, ending for both of them going down minus 12, minus 14. Um, we had a win from Lust, but very Defeated. Lucky him, Might as well put like wasted from, yeah, from GTA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or just like, like bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if we just do that and just for fun. <laughs> just, just shrink the font a little bit, man. Don't put it. We, we get it. <laughs> the people who are zero HP, you can just like fade them out. You don't have to type in such big letter. Depending on how these caps come through, Scrappy the Twin Terror went eight. It went, it went seven. It went seven. The TF does survive the rate can... Which is uh still not uh not the result you're looking for. Oh. And these combat caps are close. Crank carry. Close crank carry. Close crank wins these. Close crank. Man, this unit is so feeling. <laughs> I like this as top eight. Yeah, I know, I know. It's funny that they say top eight because usually that's used in a good way. But uh, it's like Hearthstone Battlegrounds. And, and, and Hearthstone Battlegrounds, they don't say they go eight. They say they go top eight. Which is uh, always threw me off. For some reason, even when you go top eight in a tournament, it sounds bad. Bad because just because of because <laughs> top eight, eight. eight yeah <laughs> yeah still LEPing the two kills there's more items i guess it's just not very much ap in these items yo rick okay yo rick uh hodge probably yeah hodge on the kill oh interesting Giving up super because fan. Wow. Because of maybe kids like thinking about the super fan. But then shouldn't we just cut super fan and play double mord? Yes. I guess maybe we don't have a pentakill in bomb holder. I guess you can just keep one of the units. Then. Wait, is the bug with super fan where your rage blade goes back to zero stacks? Is that yeah. still in the game or? Yeah, it's still oh. in the game. It's, it's when it's when something is summoned. Oh god. So so you put York and he's probably like, okay, I'm gonna bug it out. So I'm gonna. I see. I see. That's pretty. That's pretty five head, but also weaker chatting. I mean, Hot does not exactly <laughs> doing anything either. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, mean, I don't even know if York won. No items is casting twice. Only this this Zach HP. Like you can all, you can you can almost not even see the HP bars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he has like as many bars as everyone else combined. <laughs> four bruiser prismatic bulk. Miss Riven three is gonna be stuck on the Zach. Just Double wait for her to come back. Yeah, yeah. Oh, never mind. Oh. What, am I, what am I talking about? Never mind. Holy crap, she just autoed him twice and died. I thought Zach was going to be way tankier than that. Never mind. Pop two. Oh, insert coin. No frontline, no. Double Z. Interesting. Double Z, scrappy binary. Wait, this is the Ezreal 1 board. He played two Ezreal 1s. He's playing Twin Terror without Twin Terror. Two <laughs> Ez1s, two Z. Yeah, and this is the top two board, by the way. Oh, I mean, Scrappy Inventions is bro broken. Scrappy Inventions plus Binary. Wow. It wins the game. Oh, oh my man. Life. That is not good. Should damage him? Anybody want that? Probably not. That, that is not a good look. That is not a good look. When Ezreal won, two Ezreal ones. We have some positioning trick. Oh, we see a, uh, a headliner is real in. Okay, to be fair, he's not even actually collecting binary on that many units. Now he has as real too. Weaker. Man, I'm getting more dogged <laughs> again. It is the end unless. Ta. Unless Shinar manages to find a way to sneak that ribbon on top of Ezreal. Thank you. Okay, buddy. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Thank you. One misposition dash. I think I just. Wait. I, 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 I,
Yeah. I mean, he has binary, but I mean, what does IE Bark do? <laughs> Nothing. He got a lot stronger now. It doesn't appear to matter. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. And so Taro wins, which means he probably made it through, right? Clutched up. Yeah, you should yeah, be. 28 should, should have been enough, yeah. And Chinar also made it because he had 21 and plus 7, so. Nice. nice. Alright, let's go ahead and look at the standings then. And getting Dudunas as strong as possible early on. Haro wins, so we had Ezreal. Somehow, you know, playing two Zeds. Yes, I mean, we have lobby, apparently. And then uh, Riven, Ezreal, uh, Disco in fourth. And then Pentakill, Kale, uh, KDA, Winter, and Sentinel Ari went eighth. Oh, wow. Okay, it's probably not Sentinel Ari, by the way. Probably not Sentinel Ari. Yeah, probably not. All right, so these are people that made it through. The, the two players that Ty broke their way through, Volta and Tev, they also made it. So that's nice. Shurikane, Zoro, Raptor at 28. Oh, Raptor actually went eighth twice. That's kind of scary. I mean, at least he didn't go eighth three times like me. Ilya made it. I'd be happy for him. The Luch. Gluteus. Og. Dark Hydra. The Lana. Salvi. Double. Oh, the Loga sang. Nice. Wet jungle. Dude, Germany cleared today. They have four players in the top 16. They will avenge Kevin Hart. No, surely not. He's not grown into a player that can win. I hope so, yeah. Well, Wet Juggler was kind of just uh, the, the favorite going into this tournament. Yeah. What? what why, do, why do people think Wet Juggler is so good? Uh, I mean, he's he's been rank one uh, for a lot, a lot of the sets, and he I think he has another account that's like top 15, so he's probably going to have two accounts in top 10, and he went uh, second at Worlds last set set so yeah um he, he's also been a player that has been performing for a really long time like in the okay. prior sets as well so he he kind of just built up a reputation of being like super consistent <laughs> okay i want to listen to this guy who uh in keeping that clean points. sheet uh well when i entered the tournament i said to myself like if i don't go to the finals uh to the finals it would be a failure so for now it's just the Is this guy french I mean, yes. It's the the last uh, I could do to to go through the day two. Okay. Uh, hi, Pressures. Hi. I see. <laughs> um, <laughs> looking at your games today, of course, you started out really, really strong. I would assume if that you your red on the meta was won't. pretty good. How did you prepare going into this tournament? Uh, well, to be honest, the the last JC I played, so that was uh, the first one two years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, uh, I just played. You know, like I, I didn't really train. I wasn't looking about the stat and everything. I was just like playing. Uh, Ladder uh, and didn't give a shit about uh, playing ladder stat, uh, and everything. Ladder. Like, yeah, playing the uh, two weeks ago, I started to, to learn about the meta <laughs> deeper, to, to look stat, and uh, and I think that's the result of it. Uh, I train, I, uh, I train a lot for for this tournament, so. Uh, I, just, I like the French accent, it's pretty fun. Well, uh, I want to kind of follow <clears> up on that because I know a lot of our players have been <laughs> you know, working with the study group to try and prepare. Do, I mean, this is obviously an incredible return to form. Is that, do, you, do you mean, is this something you've been doing just by yourself or have you been getting assistance? Your French no, invitation I'm, uh, is so I'm mean, sorry. Uh, I, I just, I like the French accent a lot. Because I love the fun. top elo players um, scream uh, together and uh, and share their, their insight about the meta. But uh, for now, uh, I'm just studying uh, alone. And it seems to work. Oh, so, he's a solo <laughs> guy. Good. Interesting. He doesn't actually hey, study with anyone. It seems to work. We're going to be seeing cool. how it works out. Yeah, I, th I think Wet Jungler tomorrow. always um, preps alone just as in well. General, do you feel like really? this set has been like, because yeah. that's just the way he you likes to do it? To the sets since the yeah, last he, he's just a really seven, introverted seven, seven, guy. Seven, and I think he just, you know, trusts his own instincts. So I guess that has been working well for him. Giga Chad. I've been studying abroad, so that was kind of hard to try out the game game uh, while uh, doing my studies. This year I'm still studying, but uh, I have less courses, so I think I can focus more about the ga on the game, and it reflects uh, on, the, on, the on the result, I guess. So. Yeah, it does. Damn, awesome. his eyebrows well, uh, are so intense. Thinking back across today, 
was there a particular game or maybe a all, all i see is facial hair is, you know, so striking <laughs> <clears throat> mm, well, I've been playing uh, versus the same players since I was in the <laughs> lobby one uh, all the all the day. Uh, I was, I was, um, I did some screams and I was um, expecting like Diga Sparta to go higher because he was doing incredibly well in screams. But the people, uh, the people that were, were with me in the lobbies were kind of good. Every every one of them, but uh, I don't have a particular name uh, that scares me a lot. So. Well, maybe you have a particular name you want to shout out because if you remember from set six we always allow players to shout out anybody that's watching or anybody they want to thank at the end of the interview so if you have anyone time's yours uh just shout out to the to the fans and uh, you for the amazing job you're doing for the tft community oh. so so thank you and uh see you tomorrow i guess <laughs> nice <laughs> thank you for very professional to to good luck like out him. there tomorrow my man thank you thank so you much he's uh, uh he's, he's pretty well spoken and that, you know the, the, the nice thing about it a lot of these uh a lot of these players is that english is their second language so good for them actually kevin your english is very good where did you learn english from or how did you get english so your english um the most i mean I, I was always really good in english in school already uh and then when i was like 13 14 i started being on the internet a lot and uh i i always <laughs> consumed more english language content than german content for some I see, reason I see, I see. Uh, nice. I, I also started watching a lot of movies and shows when I was uh, 14 and uh, always in English at first with subtitles and then later I turned them off because I felt like I didn't need them anymore and through that, uh, yeah, you you learn the language a lot. Okay, that, that, that makes sense. I feel like uh, he, he's a, yeah, he's a shit poster in chat, that's why. He's actually not uh, like, the real reason. Uh, also, my mom is a translator with a diploma, so maybe it just runs in the family as well. Oh, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. It's like uh, it's like baby's mom. So you're like you're like German baby. That makes sense. That makes sense. Oh, I don't wanna I don't know if I wanna be called German baby. <laughs> <I'll stop. laughs> Alright, cool. Well, Kevin, your girlfriend is uh begging me to let you go, so that way uh you can go spend right, time with I mean, her. yeah, that was the, the last game, so yeah, yeah I, right. I'm I'm gonna leave regardless. <laughs> bye, Kevin. Later, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was fun. GGS. Bye, bye. GGS. Bye, bye. All right. So I was going to see if people are scrimming. They were earlier. I'm down to watch if they still are. They are. Appy says in a normal, so I think Appy's is scrimming. So if you guys want. Thank you, Kevin. You guys can go follow him at Ask Kevin Parker TFT. Wait, shout out. Uh, can, can we do, give him a shout out? In the meantime, we're looking to see if there's any scrims. This is Appy's. He's currently in a game. I think he's playing an attorney. Oh, yeah. I see Joe Bookmark here as well. Okay. Is, is anyone actually scrimming, scrimming? Maybe they stopped. Or maybe they're just not streaming. I'm gonna go ahead and exit then. Rain is screaming. Okay. I don't know if I'm friends with Rain though. Let's see. Who is potentially screaming? Asa is in a ranked game. Casper's in a ranked game. Oh, Vanilla. I think that's it, right? Yeah, Noster. Okay, here, here, here are some of the here are the, some of the screams, I think. They stopped. I mean, some people stopped, but I mean, th there's different practice groups and whatnot. How about Kerm? Kerm is streaming. I don't know what he's doing. Kerm's in this game. He's. Uh, I'm in there. He's game. in the game. Okay. Rain, uh, Rain T lights. Okay, I'll, I'll go ahead and stream stream this to you real quick. All right. Sick. All right. So spectating scrim lobbies. Uh, left of you. All right, so degree, you got Noster. Noster going with uh, Kaisa. Kaisa reroll, frequent flyer. Do you like Kaisa at all? I know, but I, I can't say that I've played her very much either. So <laughs> I just, I'm, I've, I've never been a fan of the unit design. So yeah, <laughs> like, the, like funky, having right? the super long dash, it's like, yeah. it feels like it makes you weaker. I don't know. It's She's so a good item holder, but I don't like re-rolling her at all. It's 
If it happens, naturally it happens. Yeah, I know, I know. I feel like I feel like if you do go for a Kaisa 3, it's a lot of times because you're like rolling for like Bard 3. And then you just like roll for the same tier. And then if you hit Kaisa 3 before MF3, you just itemize Kaisa. That's how I feel like you can really make her shine. Makes sense to me. I, I feel like she, she does like, I don't know if she actually is stronger as a non-headliner, but she feels stronger as a non-headliner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Has anyone been keeping track of scrim scores by any chance? Uh, I, don't I know, know some people doing... used to do that. Yeah, I don't know how much scrims they've been doing. It feels also scrims have been like very like pocketed. Like some people are practicing only within their own circle of people and other people are just like, I'll play against anybody. <clears throat> All right, we have Kerm's POV. This is a really balloon. good dummy for this. <laughs> oh, too big to fail. Lulu reroll? Is that what you're trying to do? Um, I, maybe. Is maybe there like KO. a preferred backliner for this comp right now? I know Kale. I, I've definitely seen Kale. Yeah, yeah, Kale, because you have Olaf 3, so you can just kind of tie Kale plus 1. That makes sense. Interesting. I like Kerm's setup a lot. Chalice, lock it on the other side. Wow. That's so good for frontline. Remember your roots. Rain he, is, actually, this I, is I a good. He, uh, uh, Rain, Rain is playing Kale, I think. Rain's going Kale. Oh, I, I mean, I guess it could be RT. I just like that's why I, I see a Nar and a. Oh. Board. But also, also yeah, like yeah, yeah. Also. I can see that too. I can see that too. Remember, your root sounds better with for Kale than Ari for me, but like with a Rage Blade. Right, right, right. I, uh, Rain could do either. I think. She could do either, but I like Kale the more you, you're, 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 you described it. I already has the RE though, so maybe just play with that anyway. Right, and she's also holding all these Sentinels. That's another way inter interpreting it. So she's probably just open to both. Makes sense. She lights, scrappy inventions, just generic tempo here. Looks like he's trying to play uh, AD. And then Cam. AD. AD. Oh, wait. Mosher. Submit to the pit. <gasps> Nar reroll. Actually, uh, really it, interesting it, spot. How would you play this? It, I don't have any experience with this, but I know some people have been playing around like Urgot, Mosher, Vertical stuff. Yeah. The thing is, when I play this comp, uh, there's only two placements you can get. Or rather, there's only three placements you can get. Second, fourth, or sixth. It feels like you don't really get any other else, uh, any other place. Yeah, your mid game is like super insane, but yeah. you never win games like games. Yeah, like how much yes. you speak and you save. And the, and the distribution is like 20, 60, 20. You, you have like a 60% yeah. chance to land exactly fourth. <clears throat> this seems like a super heavy tempo line. You just take your place and whatever you end up with. But like, I, I imagine he's not even like opposed to dropping it. Oh, it's a Radiant uh, portal. Oh, yeah. Radiant. Uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and I don't like love any of them just considering what he already has. But maybe like Titans or IE. He just already has two full carries. Right. Maybe also, so it doesn't else. really want like Titans anyways, right? No, I mean, it's not like great synergy with it, but it, maybe it just happens to... Maybe Radiant IE, yeah. Okay, just another damage item. Maybe put LW on somebody else. It feels like a good way to convert off all these flash stats you get. So that's probably what I'm thinking about right now. But we get rain spot, see what she ends up doing. She open sold. She's rolling, rolling six. on six, so Kale. Can you, can you just look at Kerm? I just want to see what. Oh, uh, this is a KO. I just want to see if Kerm's. No roll. Okay, just sticking with the Lulu for now. Can't really, no roll. Okay, we took the Gunblade off the, the Urgot. No stir fast Nico. eight. Oh no, he's only at seven. Going for Lulu and Nico. He had a Ziggs. I right, clear my disco board off. <laughs> <laughs> you knew what I was playing right before the stream. Ready in TG Kaisa for now. Do so I want to go on a Kali? Do you play Kali in this? I think Nostar really likes spell reroll re in general. Like he plays it like, I feel like in like forty percent of his games, fifty percent of his games. It okay, was so. Kerm's gonna go for uh, four two then, right? We should watch that. I feel like he's just playing too nice. big to fail. It's kind of it's kinda poor though. Yeah, that's true. I Maybe don't even know if he's gonna. He might, he might sack too. I've seen that become a little more common. Oh, can you do this? Uh, no. Blue? Need more than that. Bulk is pretty good. Bulk is good with too big to fail. I like that. I have a bulk. Okay. 
Oh. I think he has to sock two more. Looking at two he, might play, he might be playing towards Disco. There's AD Flex, Radiant Shojin. Radiant Shojin is like the same as like blue buff, I think, for us, real. Just more oh, smoke going on Tentra. Oh. Interesting. I feel like uh, putting ants on this gym one. I guess I guess I should see it. It is a new patch. My, my a lot of my biases so. were from previous patch. Oh man, I still got some items on the ground too. Okay, able to get the TA. These are not great items. Even trout at so least. He doesn't have backline items. Oh, he didn't scrappy. Oh. Oh, he at least has scrappy. Yeah, but that's okay. He's just making LW. Interesting. But he, he thankfully fought Kurum. So that was really lucky. Yeah, Kurum's pretty weak. Kurum's trying to sack. That's, just, that's a lot of violins. And bonus it's, still two, it's still just two two autos, though. That's, yeah, that's pretty nuts. Pretty nuts. <clears throat> Vanilla full streaking. Oh, the Vi carry with the Brink of Dawn. Six oh, monster. What is going on here? Hey, yes. hey, hey. Who's in chat making fun of my Vi build? Huh? Who was in chat making fun of the Vitek? Okay, you know what? We're talking, we're talking shit. But like, what if he just like loses streaks from here and goes? Fit? I feel like that's what happens. You just lose all the stage four five. <laughs> what? What if, what if he just lose streaks here and just go? I, I got three for Kimberly. Uh, so we have two people playing vertical monster. Okay. Well, like the the whole point. Okay, he's level seven. The whole point of what you're supposed to do with this is to go and find a way to hit Yorick if you can. But uh, I mean, that's obviously like a pipe dream at this point. Wait, this Vi just went straight to the back line. Uh, Cal two, it's John. Oh my God. Friends on six Cal's. Radiant Bramble. Damn, this more just tanking though. Yeah, everyone has a Radiant item. So like your super units are really strong. So Kern's about to go do the roll down, yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's see if Kern can do the the four five. It, it is a little on the later side, and I feel like he was playing around some of the units that are being rolled for. But we'll see. <clears throat> Noster, by the way, did not uh, streak, so he's he's probably gonna go eighth. You know anything about Hanako? He's like a player that made it to day three, I think. I'm not familiar with them. No. Just a name I've seen before, but nothing about the player themselves. Okay. Uh, theoretically, too big to fail is an augment you can play for Lux three, but he's rolling at eight. Doesn't really have the item sword either way. Yeah, that is true. You want AP, not mana, dude. Mm -hmm. It's an old blitz. Bruiser Zach, that's. Really good. That's pretty you're, good. You're yeah, that's really good. Yeah, that's my backline. You got the TF Holy in at least. Blitz carry? Oh. Gotta get the TD off the Gragas. Put it on Zach. Oh, wait, you already put a item on him. Who was Radiant TG? I guess secondary carry then? Like a Zach Z or something? Put, put it on Blitz probably. Per okay, I can see Blitz. I can see Blitz. Yeah, if, if, he, he, had, if he can like, find like if Zed, he had Zed, be down, but he's just not so far off. So I think probably most of the Zeds are already gone. That is true. Well, a lot of rerolls, so potentially, yeah. We did we see a couple AD flexes. See how okay, there's one here. Ari, oh, the, that's a scary guy. Yeah. Okay, maybe not do that many Zeds. A Kali. TF, but the Radiant Adaptive. Radiant Adaptive. Yaksho. Okay, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I did go on the blitz. IE blitz. Let's see it. Okay, okay. We can see the physical damage. Oh, he's giving him also the Zeeks. <laughs> <laughs> no, he all is the all in on carry blitz. What the? He's just missing a. He's missing set. He doesn't have set over this echo. Yeah, or Lowy, obviously, but uh, not banking on it. All right, let's crank. Big explosion. 800 so far, 800 physical. It, it wasn't that bad. 
not Brains, that bad. this hard suck six kills. Yeah. This like pivot into kale is like <laughs> going from zero kills to nine is a big pass. Right. This feels like the way like China oh would play. Free thresh. Wow, thresh two on seven. It feels like this style of like trying to do like a hard pivot feels very like China like like this is like the way like Juan Mei and Chunga would play it and I feel like um you just you're just very susceptible to this kind of like setup and you can go eighth like out of nowhere for it double oh it's a binary I say the radiant red buff regular red buff Ezreal dark red buff and a red buff fuck it, another one <laughs> triple red buff Ezreal <laughs> <laughs> that'd be so funny all right, let's see if Kerm can pull himself out, but this is looking like a like a bot finish. He's not buying this out. He, he bought that one. <clears throat> oh, Lowie. Lowie. Okay. Okay, we're just going to go four bruises then. Drop the L off. Right? I think so, for like Sona. Right. Like Sona. Right. Oh. <laughs> Nico three by Noster. Nico three, Lulu three, two items. Oh, binary. Oh, binary. binary. Oh, he does not have the DPS to keep up with this. Oh man. <clears throat> I think he's. I think Kerm's eighth. He's that oh. way. No, so took healing Sona. Interesting. They did buff this. Something to think about. I still okay. feel like attack speed sun is the best without like yeah some specific situation I don't know I, I, I've only ever liked healing Sona on gen board I mean obviously if you like fully stack Sona you can go damage you call a flex here this is oh, uh this, more loss. This, so Sox actually likes true damage call a lot it's like an anchor of a lot of his top four play but um I don't feel like people replicate it well as in, I see other people say like, oh, I see, you know, players like Sox doing this. Surely I can do it. And it feels like it's not uh, as consistent for other people. And Kerm is still... Still stuck on TF1. Or... Oh, jeez. Locked. Still playing five Bruiser, I think. Oh, no, no you he put a set in. It's playing six now. You put a set in. And six does make a big difference. That he dropped uh he dropped blitz and echo for uh lux yeah. and set okay i mean i really like to have sona in as well but oh he wanted the extra edm really really like tricky game here for uh for sona pair dude if he like hits sona too okay Still TF1 though. <clears throat> wow. I I'm actually surprised that he doesn't feel like uh Sona can do anything. But um I guess because the only items that he can put on her would be TF items. He doesn't want to sell the TF. A okay, degree. The Grease board is very close to like getting really strong and then like winning out. That is that's my challenge thing. It's something to keep in mind. Is sometimes these guys are just limit testing in yeah. these yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know if they're playing what they think is optimal or what they want to learn more about. Yeah, current win eighth. He lied. Yeah, like, like, like I said, I feel like I feel like these uh, Akali setups are like. I, I've seen a lot of people try to replicate it, and they just they just they just struggle. Seventy attack Ziggs. <laughs> seventy five. <laughs> oh, what the heck? Well, he half half, so he might be done. He might be done. Yeah. A lot of people don't want to burn out too the night before, right? If you play till like mm -hmm. 10, 11 p.m., then you like it takes a while for your brain brain to wind down. Are you giving yourself actual ample time to rest and recover? <clears throat> That same reason, by the way, I'm not gonna go that late. Fast. I, uh, I'm probably gonna only stream for like another hour or two. We're half like, yeah. Not all of us uh, work like a hundred hour weeks, more dog. <clears throat> so 
some of us have this thing called work-life balance whatever that means Kel three. Kel three. Those are streaking though. So like he, uh, the thing about spell weavers is that you kind of want to put that stage four streak together. He finally did it on stage uh stage five. Which... It's because of Nico three, I think. It's like the real key. The problem with this is always front line. You have infinite damage sources, you just don't have enough front line. Quick game, it's the Ergot. It is Ergot three. <clears throat> My goodness that's a lot of damage wait a second oh he's stuck on nico now the wall of nico nico three is such a good tank and vanilla still making the vi three work by the way he also got a punk emblem He rolled on eight though, so he's not gonna be able to go for the fast nine like transition like we saw earlier. Yep. <clears throat> he's just planning to bleed out. Yeah, he's trying to bleed to a fourth. If he can get punk on a Yorick though, that's what he's thinking. That's what he's thinking. Oh, he got it. He was also playing rolling for Poppy too. He's a river. TG Nar, I guess. Probably. It's actually not bad on Jax because at least he's proccing the EDM. I like it. I like it. Oh, Jax items are great. Oh, he's lucky. Great Never mind. <laughs> yeah, that's how to do it. I explain it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh the, the problem with the, some of these like uh, motion boards is you also clump up perfectly for all these different uh, units that you mm -hmm. want to do. Degree doing the win out. Rain is taking punishment. Noster might win the game. Nobody looks like they're capping super high. Mm -hmm. What about well, the, uh, the TF is, player? But, yeah. Oh yeah, but he's he's still even still he's eight. Like nobody went to nine. Yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. Hanako even <laughs> level eight. Everyone's level eight. And, and there is something to be said about like people like uh, like Vanilla putting a lot of pressure on the lobby because he's like doing stuff like this. Crowd Diver's Ziggs? That doesn't even sound bad. Crowd Diver is just bonus damage, right? Yeah. And he lives a long time, so it's gonna scale up. 12% bonus damage plus 1% each second. You can get to like 20 pretty easily. 25. Adaptive. Actually, he's playing binary. Uh, yeah, he's a best, so we can go on set. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's oh, big. Okay, okay. That's really big. Yorick is better than anything. I mean, we can drop Yone. Uh, we could. We could. Nice spot. Oh, he goes for the Yone. He wants the hard steal. This guy's so greedy. Oh, also because he's playing Jazz, so he probably has double traits that way. Got it. No, he actually has only has uh, one trait. They're both. It's one for one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I guess it's just like he values another crowd diver. Yeah, yeah. Probably to dive in the back, but the Silver Veil actually stopped that. Let me go. Disco is bot four. Man, oh, the solution. That's crazy. We're good. Oh. Kale. Oh my Kale. Oh. God, oh. that was so close. Dude, that's nuts. How much damage is Urgot doing? 11. It's pretty good. I mean, it's not Kale good, but pretty good. It, the prophecy is going to come true. He's going to get uh, Nar 3 as well. Right, Nar 3 with these items. Vanilla could also it's die. The top of Masha Clump is funny. This guy has keepers. He missed. Oh. Uh, and this red bar. Oh. Oh, he just gave a free win to Cam. I'm sorry. Fergot's getting the flank. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'll never see it coming. Unless it's Vi? Wait a second. This Vi is kind of nuts. This is, this is a battle. <laughs> nope, never mind. Oh. Ergot's too good. Yes. And Vanilla died. Oh no. my god. 
Okay, okay, but vanilla threw that. Vanilla threw that. You got it. I know what it looks like with the Vi three, but that's a that that's a that's a piloting issue. That's a piloting issue. That's not Vi's fault. <clears throat> you guys know. You guys know. Don't don't even know. Eleven ever ten five five. He obviously mispositioned that last fight. Oh, he's trying to. A lot of DPS is going to be going to this Nico. Do you want to confront Nico early to try to kill her, or like, I think I you want to avoid her? Think so. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's doing nothing. It's doing nothing, and also Urgod is like his damage, so stuck on a tank. Uh, <laughs> it's it okay. Strong force. Strong force. Strong, strong force. That, that, that's that's the that's the six Mosher build. Just go forth. Rain third. That's actually pretty good. Esther gets Rage Blade Sona. Very, very strong. No, like the, the Urgot does fall off. Oh, that's Sona too. Uh, Is Nostra going to win Heartsteel Cup? Sona 2 on 8. Degree still rolling down to 0 at 8. <clears throat> People yeah, laughed at my fantasy team, but Degree is the true ringer, by the way. What's the attack here? Uh, he's just trying to, like, all in on the same side. Maybe he's trying to aim, like, at the... Sona. Snipe the Sona. All the shields. The healing Sona death. Oh. And then another cast. This the the healing Sona seemed pretty good. Like I, I think he might win as well with a taxi Sona, but like I think he would have won with any Sona, but But it, it does look like it did look pretty good. Yeah. Oh. When's the next episode gonna be up? In the next uh in the next couple of hours. My editor's been working on it. Alright. Union queue. A lot of people in solo queue. Or I'm uh rage queued. Oh not rage queued. Who else is uh looks like most people are kind of out of Grim. A lot of people are playing ranked right now. I think it's probably just because it's hard to get lobbies. This open. Oh, this open in a ranked game. Who's seen a ranked game with? Do we know? Spectator mode. <clears throat> this open in a game with Robin, Dr. L. Herm's in a game with Herm's body pillow. Sush. Looking to see if there's any, like, High quality lobbies, Ram Kev with David. A lot of people are just kind of fragmented. I think Robin's gonna do well. I hope so. I always, I, always, I think Robin's one of my favorite players just in general. Do well. I like watching Robin perform well in tournaments. Let me message Vanilla. Are you guys still going? Over. Amazing. <clears throat> Lobby died. Okay. I think we probably got like one or two more. We can watch uh we can just watch Dish Soap's game. See how Dish Soap is doing. But if it if lobby if scrims are done, then I might just end uh in the next like 30, 40 minutes or something like that. Opponent anvils. <clears throat> Ooh, a two healthy KO reroll board by Dish Soap. 
That's interesting. What's the two healthy boards? So Kale, Nar. It looks like you just play one of the, the two cost KDAs. You, I, I, don't, you, I guess you could also play Garen, not a potentially. Right. So you, you only need to play like three to feel like it's pretty good value, right? Okay. Yeah. Even two in the mid game isn't bad. I mean, you'd be getting it for right. free. Late game, you can take you can take one of them out and just get like a only 220 health. I think it's fine too. QSS. Oh, interesting. No super. Wait, no, it is a fan item. Never mind. Got a play on the other side. What's Robin playing? Four monsters. Gargantuan Resolve Jax. Oh, what do you think about this spot? I mean, he's he's gonna go level eight four five. So, okay. you don't think he rolls for Jax? I will say he's holding his money right now, so maybe he's considering it at least. Like he's just sitting at fifty eight. The only reason why I say is because you you can roll for Jax at seven, but he's so far behind the count. I don't think he's gonna do it. Yeah, like I don't think he is preferring to do that, but maybe he naturals more in this next shop. Yeah. Radiant clicks over on the Zed front line. With Jewel, Jewel Lotus. <clears throat> You're saying Jewel Lotus because of the, the crit? Yeah, it's a, you get a lot of crit from Radiant QSS. I played it played it on Riven yesterday. How much do you get? I actually don't know. I think it's, I think it's 40. Wow. I'd have to double check. Hmm. Spot is looking less hot for this though. He's like kind of behind on the kale count. Looks yeah, like it's four, 40 now. crit. 50, 50 S, 30 MR, 40 crit, and then you you gain a bunch of attack speed as well from the passive. Um. Let's watch Robin's roll down. It's portal. No, the portal is a uh, component in those. I changed it in top left. Yeah, it's just a hard start right yeah. <clears throat> What's the website you use? Uh, it's just metatft.com. Okay, open cell, around 40 gold. Looking for four costs. Diego, Ari, Zed. Let's not have a lot of money. I mean, the answer is Zed. He, he found the individual units, just no headliners of them. Me and other jacks, too. Six monster, no headliner. Stack York. Oh, okay. You can go for that 5 2 augment, submit to the pit. Jinx. York got 20 stacks. You got the ghoul off at least. Oh, he won. What the heck? It doesn't really have any front line. You're so, uh, went for rate, uh, gunblade. Looks like he's, he's going to pop off these items. <clears throat> QSS Viego probably. Yeah. 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 I'm not rolling again. I'm going to wait till after. Going for more three. Oh, QSS Karthus. Crunch. Robin did enter Broly. Oh, he did, he did oh, roll it. Oh, he Viego. Viego, that's pretty good. I like this. I don't think I would have rolled the Viego. I think I would have tried to put it on, like, he has a Kaelin shop you could play. Put it on that and play around the glove. Hmm. I could see that. Wow, that heal. Oh, man. So still stabilizing. This is actually really impressive from a Kale 2. Kale 2 seems an insane unit. This, this is so stable. There's no, there's, this is so ridiculous. He won against, uh, I guess, okay, he, he did beat 
the punk player who seems to be pulling it's off. Pretty weak, yeah. No front line. Hard steel. Kate, uh, Going level Kate nine. Lucian. A lot of hard steel this lobby. Six true damage. True damage. No. Lux three. Lux three. Mm. Five EDM. This looks like this looks like a Lux that's like, fortunately, a little too far behind. Okay, Nico two. Nico two. Dude, he's gonna. He's not gonna hit KO through this game. <laughs> <Icky Hodge. laughs> what about Robin? Seven pentakill. Okay. Uh, you, can, you can have another on Viego. It feels like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rarello was a panic. Yep. Agreed. GG. Dead fast. Oh, he's supposed to JG this. Yeah, yeah, you can Morello, uh, Carthos, like, why not? Actually, he's actually really good with Morello. This Yorick. Thank God, Yorick is so good, man. Disha wins again. Wow. Is, this, beat... is this Disney diff? Oh, yeah, he beat, the guy, he beat the guy going nine. <clears throat> but still. He, he, he's at seven. I'm blown away. He's also getting the low rolls out of the way. I guess we can watch one uh, fight of the Lux board. See how this Lux board does. One of the cooler ones. 8 HP, no roll. Yeah. yeah, no big deal. Just two extremely important news to hit. Oh, just about like another win. <laughs> yeah, he's on wrong side. Oh, Seraphine survived. It's really big. Burns a cast. This is the second Gunblade Hodge. Flex oh my god! Night. Dude. He went eight. Second Gunblade Hodge. Oh, for, uh, for, uh, luck. Lux. Yeah. Like we saw one earlier in the AP. Mm. It turns out it's not enough damage. I think you want two AP items on her. Right. I think you really need the two damage items to one shot. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I don't know if Dishub doesn't care because he's like getting his reps in or he's like he's like super tilted because he's about it's to hit Ward him. 3. Oh, yep. Oh, there yeah, Ward 3 is. before you go. All right, one off KO. Now just rolls to zero. <laughs> uh. Going against Robin. Robin versus Dishub. This patch is so cool. Yeah, the thing about my tier list. So if you guys want to watch other people's tier list, they'll probably tell you like what's working at Challenger. But uh, the tier list that I made is actually um, a tier list of like every viable comp in the meta. And as I was doing it, I counted like 20, like five, five comps. I actually started combining comps because it was like two. Some of them were too similar, like country and execution. I just put them all into one. <clears throat> or like Lulu reroll with twin loot, twin terror or like other stuff. I just like condensed into one. There's so many different like variations. So if you like the variety of the meta, there's like a lot right now that's available. But uh, the thing is, a lot of times people are saying like all those variety, you're playing for second because you're probably gonna lose the hard seal board. But if you can get past that point, it's a pretty diverse and wide meta. Okay, I mean, KO3 the, now. You, you right. just took the cane, I think. Oh, you're right, you're right. Edgelord. Edgelord next level if he ever gets there. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Hearthsteel players. Dude, these people are dragging down the Hearthsteel average. They need a buff Hearthsteel. Yes, agreed. It's really falling off this patch. <laughs> Allowy 2. Allowy 2! He's at 9, though. 8 out of 9. No. Okay, surely this sh surely Disto loses to a Lowey too. Uh, I don't know if he can kill this more. <laughs> He'll kill it. He'll kill it. Eventually. Yeah, actually, he has a higher chance of killing KO through AOE than killing the Mord, actually. 
Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh my god. This is a KL2. KL2, Runon's on bench. I'm down, no for, I'm down for digital just to win with KL2. That's it. He's econing up. <laughs> What time does Hard Kill Steel Cup start? It starts at 1 p.m. Pacific. I'll be streaming ahead of time. Do you feel like the Hard Steel complaining is overblown, Ramblin? Or no? I don't think it's overblown, but I do think the comp is overplayed. Okay. Interesting. I think I, I feel like what you were just talking about is the reason why is there's so many outs this patch that people are just like yes defaulting yes. to hard sale when they don't need to be. Uh yes, that, that that's exactly my yes. I you do don't think need to play the lottery, strong, but I also think players are being dumb about it. Just point blank. I just think a lot of players are being sloppy and lazy about the way they're approaching the game. <clears throat> but He's uh, got some <laughs> yeah, but I, I also feel like hard sale is too. And it, it, it's too cent like central to the game of who wins. Yes. That being said, than, this this is a game where Diso might win. Yeah, uh, I mean the hardstyle players look like they did not really hit yes. their end game boards. Yeah. And the floppy's not very high cap. Mm -hmm. Dish soap overrolled, dude. It's stage six. What do you mean he overrolled? <laughs> I should talk about somebody else. I think he's just saying that he didn't he didn't need to roll for KL3 because he won anyway. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. He could have actually sold all this and be at level nine already. True. Now we hit KL3. Hey, just right on, on, time, time. on time. Two stages behind tempo. TG. Run buff. Oh. Oh, does he not have anti heal? Oh yeah, he doesn't. I thought oh, I just kind of wow. What the heck? He did all this without anti heal as well. Yeah, no anti heal. Kale doesn't shred until her first cast, okay. right? Is that is that how it works now? Oh, let me look actually. It's not. Is, is it or is she having yeah, cast her active, on her auto? Yeah, active. Okay, so she, technically he doesn't have shred either. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, I feel like it's okay with a couple. But you're, you're not really yeah, yeah, it's just like you, you would still appreciate having it. Wow. And that's another Hearthfield player dead. Oh, one HP. Oh, yeah, one. Robin Robin <laughs> uh, I feel like if you got the double Titans BT onto the, the Viego somehow instead of the Yorick one, it would have been much more effective. Well, this guy's, I mean, he's pretty strong, but no front line. Jack's a little better. Yeah. Also, I feel like you don't necessarily want to always stay on this Caitlyn, but um, I feel like he has no choice. But I would, I would probably rather have Caitlyn sold so I can get like a frontline like Poppy or something like that. But then, what do you do with these items? This is so awkward. Also, yeah, how does he, he have just... like the exact same items across all these champions? Triple Hodge, no idealism. Triple Hodge, two Death Blades. <clears throat> So awkward. This guy, oh. just, this guy just wants all the carry items. Oh. oh. I just have this one out from KL2. <laughs> That's right. Uh, so it's going to be these guys fighting and then just with the ghost, we get dish soaps waiting for whoever wins. I feel like this guy could win if he had two star front line. Yep. I don't, I don't think he can do it right now. He has one star front. Line. In fact, he has one star everything except for his headliner, Ezreal and Lucian. His three carries. Yeah, everything else. His three carries are two star. At around like platinum, the emerald level. People always ask, like, how did this how did this uh, board not win the game? And the answer is because, like, the only things that you are focusing on are, are two star. Everything else is one star. Oh, there's a Mumu into the back line. I think Caitlyn's got it, though. Oh. Mm. 
Alawi? Lowy. Should have died Lowy. Going for super fan. So he gets to cut a unit? Uh, he can cut or it's just like more stats on his KL, I guess, but... Set two. The other guy. Same. Did that dude's actually lie. really big. It is. I don't know if it's enough, but it is a massive difference. Yep. Just okay. can sack a couple rounds. He can get to nine. He can lose these next two and get to nine or seven. <clears throat> I'm always scared that Lucian's going to bug out in this corner. Me and Kale can also bug out, so I think it's fair. Yeah, it's, it's an even trade, you're right. <laughs> the one to one. Oh, Moore's a little bit out of position. He can actually snipe the kill. Uh, okay. Okay. Just up stacking. Kale can't bug out on this board. Wait, really? He doesn't have any summons. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Yeah. I thought people said it was the, f the fifth pentakill. No, it, it's, it's fake. It, it, it's it's when something is summoned. So Zed, Yorick, and Alawi are the triggers. Okay. So what about his opponent's Yorick? I don't think the opponent does it, no. I mean, you can watch the Rageblade and see it. It, it would reset, but okay. I've only seen it with your own summons. So the second Rageblade won't stack because it's just visually bugged, and the first one would reset if it was a summon bug. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not, I guess that's not sometimes it works. Maybe it's working in spectator mode. Visually, I mean, it eight, always works. Eight, yeah, I'm just looking at the counter right here. It, it hasn't reset at all. Uh, so one did go to 3.0, but... That's the edge load. Oh, 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 okay, okay, okay. It doesn't look like it resets off opponent summons. <clears throat> okay. Dear so found it, we fixed it thanks to him. <laughs> All right. Fix it for Not next only match. is he the perfect Not. player, he's also the perfect QA tester. Man. Amazing. Oh, duplicator. duplicator. Kane, maybe. York. Jin, no. Yorick. There it is. Can you go to seven pentakill? Maybe drop Seraphine. York two. York two. Doesn't have Karthus. Yeah. It's all up though, if he wants to drop Seraphine. Oh, he's dropping actually. Yeah, he drops Seraphine, he's dropping Seraphine. Okay, okay. Didn't really have time to position though. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Get the uh, York item. Yeah, allow you to as well. Doctor yeah, so, like, so the, yeah, the Kale Rage Blade will likely reset this fight. When the York casts a second time. Yeah, she already, looks like she did kind of already. Uh, uh, just watch the York, it's about to cast. Yeah, they yeah, reset. just lost a huge chunk of attacks, dude. <clears throat> That's okay, second is great. And like, uh, that, with that one HP is like, that, that was a very fortunate one HP. Actually weaker. <laughs> you guys can't be serious. All right, let's see how Soju's game is coming along. Looks like most people scattered for scrims, so we're just watching people's ladder games at the moment. Is it only with super fan? No, I think it's yeah, just it's anytime a, you have rage blade, right? It's a super fan rage blade specifically. Oh, okay. Never mind. I don't know if it works, if it happens to any other like stacking items or anything, mm -hmm. but it, like I know it also happens to Sona. Got it. Isn't Lucian's uh, item rage play as well? I believe so. I've seen not very many headliner Lucians recently, but probably does. Okay, I'm not sure why the shots are looking like this, but. <laughs> <clears throat> Augment payout. Man, I'm getting more dogged again. 
Hey, Clyde Cornyn, thank you for the tier one. Okay, so, uh, Soju's trying to play Crown Guard. He looks like he's transitioning into Disco. Actually, I can't tell. Pulling, like, super fan units on the bench as well. Probably, like, Karthus, Disco, Flex if he can. Oh, Keepers. Okay. Wow, a bunch of upgrades. But he wants to roll, so he doesn't even want to make these. I guess two. Looks like we're playing disco. <clears throat> he didn't make the grog. Oh, he, he had items. Yeah, items. He had items. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Did he remake it? You can actually buy this, by the way. That's totally worth, like fine to buy. Yeah, because you could play. You could actually play. Oh, this yeah. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure he should have bought that actually and just stopped rolling. Oh, never mind. Never mind. He's a All beast. Right. He's a beast, That's the I'm LeBron pretty, James. I'm pretty sure when you're 86 HP, you always buy that. <laughs> he could have actually because played he's... that, and Hearthsteel actually lends itself pretty decently into the Disco line because Set actually ties in with the Gragas, and then you can you, actually you, go you Jazz play that and first Dazzler. stage, and you're griefing all the Ezreal players. Yep, 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 100%. <clears throat> hey, I mean, this guy might not have hit if he bought it. Who knows? Yeah, 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 yeah. All yeah. right, uh, we have BT Bard. I mean, it's the AP. Oh, BT Shield activated. Oh, that's a BT diff. BT diff. That's a BT Boy. diff. Actually, I mean, that's a that's pretty good amount of damage as well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Spell Weavers. Is this board good enough to get to nine? You think? Oh, with this much HP, for sure. Okay, okay. That's like that's why I'm saying I would have bought the Ezreal. Right, right, like, right, right. He's right. so healthy. I right, reforged Reforge the to a GG. cloak oh, and a BT. Oh, you know, that's... I was thinking about uh, Nashers, but maybe JG is better here. With the card breaker, I like the JG. Right. JG just isn't particularly good on TF because of one, he doesn't have AP, mm -hmm. and two, it's mm -hmm. bugged with Dazzler, I believe, still. Yeah, it's just that I think Shojin Nashers is particularly good with uh, Twisted Fate's mana reduction these days. I, I think like saving the Nashers for Ziggs is, is going to be yeah. higher yeah, cap I overall. I can see that. No, I, I like I like it the more I think about it. I guess it just, he did it so quickly that I just, I, I just need a second to analyze it. Right. <clears> Those <throat> seem reasonable. Kiyun's in this lobby as well, by the way. It looks like there's dual queuing. Kiyun has five heart steel. When are you gonna do a coaching stream? You mean like a real coaching stream or like a like, like an Emily Wang coaching box box stream? I can do the latter anytime. Wow. He hit Sona. That's huge. Take a look at Keen's position. <clears throat> Oh, he has return on investment. He just hit uh, plus one. Wow, return on investment at four two. He must have had some pretty awkward options. Actually, return on investment is underrated because you get jazz, so you can just like take in more units. I can see it. I can see it. <clears throat> yeah, it seems like it's really good for this line. You, you, there's so many different units you can play, so you're just opening your options up more to what board you can end up with. Oh man, that Ezreal is so bad. Like this game is so bad. <clears throat> like a viewer coaching stream. Um. Oh, like I coach a viewer. You you want me to go re replay on people right now? Just like the thing is, I want my fans to like me. I don't know what it is with re replay, but he just like doesn't want to be liked by uh by his he just want to he just want to be liked by his viewers he just wants to be really mean to them all the time <clears throat> and so like uh i don't know i i i want to, i want people to i i i don't have a i can't really be like a villain I, I need to be liked i'm a caster i like care too much about what people say <clears throat> Hmm. 
please be mean to me. What? You guys have like a like what like a, like like a like a shame kink fetish or something or what? <clears throat> humiliation. Level 10. A humiliation oh, kink. Reach the summit. Cluttered mind reach the summit. Oh whoa. Okay, so uh, he trades. He's probably gonna trade two more. Even just one. This board is actually kind of insane. I haven't actually seen people take reach the summits. I feel like people do that when they're like either not trying or they're playing like a like larger legends. <clears throat> this goes sucks. I mean, I feel like Soju can actually play for like a like a top four here. And that's what you really want from Disco. I feel like expecting Disco to win lobbies is, uh, I don't know. You're, you're, you're asking for too much. I think it can win lobbies. It's just you have to transition out of TF carry. Yeah, yeah, into like the Ziggs. Ziggs or Lucian, depending on what items you end up having as your main items. It just feels bad because for almost every other four cost, you keep it as part of the core to win with uh, with something else. So like you're playing Ezreal or you're playing uh, Akali, Karthus, whatever, Viego. Usually you keep them and you play the five cost. But to like transition out of TF carry feels so unintuitive to win. <clears throat> Six Disco though. Right, he's about to take another, another big time loss. Another Ezreal. Yeah, yet another Ezreal. How many Ezreal players are here? I think there's at least three. Sona 2 over here. He's watching Kiyun's board. If Kiyun can kill this player, and he's huge. dead. Oh, he won. Oh, man. Kiyun beat the level 10. He beat Re the lobby. replay. I don't know. RI, RI. Re real replay. The, the real re replay. <laughs> oh my god, this poppy. Ugh. All right, here we go. Level nine. Doesn't have a lot of money. Oh, one roll, Blitzcrank two. All right, Gragas two. All right. Now we play. I really need a Lowy. Yes. Yorick for now. Okay, so he's just playing around Kiana. What did I miss? Oh, you missed you top seven. four. You got seventh. Riri just went seventh. So. <clears throat> Ian's on a streak. Oh, this Zed's on his Ezreal, though. Ouch. You really need to, like, buy as much time. Wait. Oh, Wait. Let's, let's oh. oh This is not looking good for Soju. Oh, Zig, 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 Zig. That's a big, a big hit, but he still needs that Alawi. He's still not rolling. He's like trying to pace his gold just a little bit. Okay, nice. Okay. Echo two. Interesting. <clears throat> you can kind of tell this is uh Soju trying to like just being a little bit more careful. In solo queue, this dude just sells everything and rolls anyway to like zero, even if you can't. He dropped Tarek for four Dazzler. Oh, he got suffered. <gasps> yeah, I like the Dazzler. I, I think I think the six disco here is not that important. Yeah, usually you drop the Tarek link game. Mm -hmm. Tarek's just too low quality of a unit. Big win, big win. That Ziggs was such a massive hit. What do we got on Carousel? Did he, did he have to still have counter pair? Uh, well, it's gone now. Yeah. Yeah, guard breaker for Ziggs maybe. Yeah, he has counter pair. We got Morello. He's not anti. He has Sunfire, but Morello's still good. Yeah, Morello like Sunfire is just not very reliable anti heal at all. Also, Sunfire is kind of like being down an item on Blitzcrank. It doesn't really do anything for him. Blue too. Yeah, Morello's Ziggs is good. TF every shop. Wow. <clears throat> what is this? This is a game called Teamfight Tactics. 
It's a free-for-all battle royale slot machine casino anime weave digital board fighting game. Yep. <clears throat> that plays itself. Is this a spectator mode? Yeah, we're using spectator mode. <clears throat> Okay, this Z1 is just messing us up. It's just mixing our shit in the back line. Nice. Wait. Wait a second. Chillin'. All right. Man, That's actually a huge win. So able to win one more. Good spot. It seems like Keepers is what enables this comp to actually be able to beat Ezra a lot of the time. Yeah. Actually can live one ult. Gives you just enough stalling. I mean, it's a lot of shield if you kind of think about it. Ezreal 1. Ezreal 1. Ezreal 2. Best friends with Zephyr. Ezreal. Ezreal 2. There are four Ezreal players? It might even be in five. Is he going to get Zephyr? Oh, he's not playing against KO Fanboy. Oh, did he, if he saw Lucian, then Lucian's better than Keanu for sure. Mm -hmm. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. The stats are just good. Oh man, that Ezreal wipe. Ouch. <laughs> oh gosh. There's just too it's many of players. Edge Knight Zed. You can take another loss. Uh oh. Are these guys about to hold hands? Fourth and fifth. Okay, we had a Sona. But is Sona one better than Lulu too? No, especially with no items. Right, hyper pop as well for the Ziggs. And potentially some CC. He's trying to like redistribute his clump. It's just really hard without a Lowy. That, that's the problem. This, this board is so much worse without a Lowy because you can't put the tentacles up front. Yeah, this is a ladder game. The, uh, there's no more in-houses, right? Yeah, people yeah, yeah. all the in-houses are done because everyone's just... Because like, on the East Coast, it's 1030. Like people aren't mm -hmm. scrimming at 1030. Okay, okay, that's pretty good. Items, Sterics probably. <clears throat> Sterics, Kiana. No Allowies though. Mm, not a single Allowie. Not a single Allowie. Like, please. Please. Wait, this guy hit Allowie too. All oh, the Allowies are gone. Oh, he's going oh, against go the ghost. Ghost, but the, that is still a problem for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the <laughs> tentacles are on his side of the board. <laughs> Allowie ghost. <laughs> DC players are so polite. They always use their manners. They always ask nicely. Oh, Please. You got LW, Kiona. Oh, wait. I got two items. Nice. A rod. <laughs> Mr. Rage played. Yoon lives. No one died. Oh. Okay, well, Soju got his good matchmaking. You can't even blame that. Okay, Lucian. I mean, he has another, uh, he has a, like, what is he actually rolling for? Just, just a Lowy at this point? It's just a Lowy over, uh, Bard, I think. Oh, oh. He also has to be careful about the Zephyr. Is he even scouting? He's not scouting. He's just staring at his board. Okay, now he's scouting. Now he's scouting. He sees a Zephyr. <clears throat> What's he going to do? What's he going to do, Michael Zhang? Nothing. Oh, the pocket, okay. the cubby. Wait, that's a uh, that's a little scary. That's over a there. little scary, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he 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 dodges effort though. So he's chilling. Wait, but it's smart because the Akali. Oh wait, I thought the Akali would dash to the corner, but there's no space in the corner. Wait, is this guy a genius? He's he's <laughs> twenty head. What was that? No one Cute. died. No one died. <laughs> <laughs> uh oh. You got a belt for Morello. Kiana every Miss shot, by the way. Oh my. And then Kiyun. Kiyun's going up too. against Kale Fanboy. Wait, he got a Radiant TG. He just got that. Oh my god. That's disgusting. And he, yeah, and he has the Allowy too as well. So he's going up against WWWWGGGGG. 
Oh my god, this board is cracked. Jin 2 with blue buff, IE. Oh, his red buff is not that good though, but. Yeah, it's just a little bit of AD. <laughs> okay. No. Oh. No, Kiana? No, we're just wasting too much time on these tentacles. Wait, Jin got stunned. Ooh. Cast. No. Hey, it's a top four. Top four. Hey, not bad, not bad. All that for a top four. What a struggle, <laughs> man. What a struggle. Oh my god. And Kiyun, can you, can you play for a first tier? Can you get a revenge? Our steel emblem? Probably not. What does Kiyun even want at this point? Redemption. <clears throat> I felt like way too hard to get like a uh, top four, but I also feel like Soju just kind of whipped because everyone else was pulling out all the five costs. Like Kiyun has Alawi two, this person has Alawi two, this person has Alawi. Like that's literally all the Alawis. All of them are gone. All Every nine single of them are Alawi gone. is out of the pool. <laughs> uh, oh, there you go. That makes sense. Wow, look at those Zach items. Oh my. Okay. The thing is, it's mostly AD damage. All it AD. It is, but it's it's still a lot of healing. Okay. It's, all, it's, it's just three hard steel boards. So Ezreal one over here. Yep. Kyun. Okay, this guy clumped a, a lot of his carries next to each other. That made the Ezra ult really, really strong. He yeah, might win that was. Here. Like, win the lobby, I think. Okay. okay. It's a Jin player. Jin player versus Kiyun. Vampirism versus You Have My Bow. That's advantage Kiyun. Both have a Tactician's Crown. Kiyun has Z2, Ezreal 2, Ziggs 1. And this is Jin 2, Z2. That's it. It's four, four big shot, jazz fat. It's, uh, it feels pretty even. Yeah. I feel like this guy's damage might be a little too slow. Okay. But I, I can't, like, confidence like he's going to win this fight. Okay. Oh, Edge of Night on the Lowy. Is that. Uh, that's pretty bad. But it might yeah, actually allow I think her it's to okay. Like, okay. He has technical. other frontliners, so it just means the allow can maybe cast again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, ends up being okay. Usually, you don't want that. Zach got to the back line. And Zach Looking. is. Good. Wait, he won by like so many. Units. He destroyed him. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Kiyun, win trading with Soju. Easy first. Oh, is Pestivan queuing up with all of them as well? That'd be kind of fun. All right. Is there any other scrims going on? Looks like a lot of people are like out of uh, lobbies. If there are any other people watching scrims, we'll watch it. Otherwise, I think I'm going to call it here because I don't want to like uh, be too tired for tomorrow. <clears throat> He's in peak four. I want, trust me, I actually was down to kind of draft Ian, but uh, oh, Preston and Setsuko are in a lobby. Interesting. Or they're trying to queue together rather. Yeah, so I think I think I'm gonna just call it here. There's no mother, there's no more scrims going on, so it's just uh, a bunch of spectating ladder, and so you guys can always watch that if you want through spectate mode. But uh, thanks for everyone tuned in. Thanks for rambling for hopping on by. We're gonna be doing this tomorrow for the Hearthstone Cup. It starts at 1 p.m. Pacific. Uh, here's the announcement graphic. I'll go ahead and widen it. The co-stream starts at 1 p.m. Pacific officially with Ramblin, myself, Goobums, and Bryce. Although I think uh, Bryce and Goobums are going to be like in and out. Uh, and I'll, I'll be streaming online before it just to get some warm up going into it. Also, I'm if sure you guys want to check out my VODs and stuff, you can check out my YouTube VODs channel because people are asking like what happened to your VODs. But uh, we put them all up on YouTube and it's kind of nice. So you can go check it out. And that's where we're going to be putting things like the co-stream VODs and everything like that all right uh let's see who's streaming i am but i'm not going to be supposed to say whoever you're gonna raid i'll raid them too oh okay uh let's see appies 
Appy's still playing in the tournament. If you guys want to watch uh, tournament content, it can raid Appy. He just started. Hey, yeah, he's in a game right now. Oh. Um, we could do he that. Just died. I raided Kerm yesterday. Oh, maybe Ramkev as well. You have any uh, preferences? Uh, I'll just say not Kerm because I raided him yesterday. <laughs> yeah, 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 same, same. Okay, <clears throat> uh, let's. I'm probably going to rain Ram Kev because he's competing okay. tomorrow and he's also kind of a woke player. He refuses to play hard steel and he's also like a reroll lover. So, yeah. What's the best page to spectate? You can uh, use this link here. I like this one the most. Go spectate your favorite players. Add some commentary, but I want to save my voice for tomorrow. Okay, I'm down to rate him. Thanks for the. All right, man. I'll see you tomorrow, man. Have a good night. Peace. <clears throat> Great stay stream last two days. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm glad you enjoyed it. All right. Let me go ahead and play some uh, outro music. Let me see. We'll do a little bit of uh, some sweet shit. Does anyone else think the 8-bit music is underrated for, for this set? It's not like it's not like my favorite, but I think it's pretty solid. Everyone talks about disco. Disco is S tier for sure. Oh, Robin just went uh, seven. Robin's going bot four a lot. Heist a three. In-game music in general is meh. Disagree. But to each their own. Um. I think that does it for me tonight, guys. Thanks, everyone, who tuned in. I'm going to go ahead and raid Ram Kev. Go check him out. He's pretty woke. -sh. See you tomorrow for the heart to feel good. Boom, 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 boom. boom.